we're very excited about this next section of the show because uh, intern Vin has come bearing gifts, listeners. It, so, it was uh, last Thursday, uh, Diwali, the... In, uh, Hindu. Hindu! <laughs> oh, Christmas Day! No, Diwali. Oh! Slam from... TV. And I'm and I'm glad that uh, Vin slammed you there because you slammed me and said, "Didn't you do Year Nine RE?" <laughs> when when I also sort of stuttered over the religious significance of this event. It was the Hindu Festival of Light last Thursday, and uh, intern Vin and also my bass guitar tutor Vin has uh, brought in Ellis and I some traditional Indian sweets. Is that correct? Yeah, they're called burfi. Burfi, um, and it's basically sugar. Well, whenever I've seen <laughs> big fan, <laughs> Vin, whenever I've seen Indian sweets before piled up uh, in the uh, temple near my house, mm. I always think I can kind of see why those sweets haven't caught on to the mass market. <laughs> They're very colourful, but sort of indistinct. Yeah, it's it's sort of different variations on sugar. Some shallow fried, some deep fried. But all <laughs> all fried sugar. sugar. So different amounts of. So uh, I'm going to describe these to the listeners. I've got three blocks of deep fried sugar. Deep fried sugar, <laughs> and then three sort of shapes. One is in a samosa shape. One is in a diamond, and one is in a circle. Are there any differences between the content of these? Oh, sweets? they're all different flavors. That bright green one. Yeah, there's a pistachio flavored one. Ooh, You've um, got a chocolate one. Chocolate. There's a mango. Is that mango? Uh, the orange one is mango. You like mango, don't you? Al? I love it. I used to go to uh, the vegetarian food studio in Cardiff. Um, Can you eat that silver bit on the top? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which was, uh, it's, it's an Indian restaurant but only sells vegetarian food. And it's more authentic than sort of the normal takeaway you get. Uh, and they used to sell these. Um, and I ate one on Saturday and I don't remember anything until the following Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> it was so sweet. Like that so, time I took too much Valium. <laughs> <laughs> this, 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 for your bad back. <laughs> yeah, I was watching, the doctor said don't drink with it. So I went out to watch Liverpool in the Champions League. It must have been 2009. Nine, and uh, you did no remember that. <laughs> but anyway, so uh, try that, L. That's a mango flavoured one. But this could be bad radio because if it's as sweet as the one I remember from a few years ago. Oh, that smells like okay. butter. Down the hatch. That one, Vin. So Ellis is biting into it. Describe, no. <laughs> describe, your, <laughs> describe the sensation. Aha. Did you ever ask to eat straight marzipan as a kid? Yes. And did your mum let you? Yes. You know how that was a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> My teeth are itching. Are they? In a fabulous way. So this is this one I've got. It's a pink circle. What flavour is that one? I don't been? know what that is. Let's have a go. I'm going in blind. I hope it's not bum flavour. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, yeah. To describe the flavour, <laughs> it's like if you mixed butter with icing and marzipan. Yeah, it's, um, I, I, I've got an intensely sweet to tooth, so I like this. Do you like this? I'm going to try one more. I'm going to try the pistachio one. Who it's made, just a solid block. Who made these, Vin? Oh, these are from a. These are just from a shop. Oh, okay. So, if oh, any, that's very buttery. If any of the listeners would like to, where can you buy them? I mean, these are from. Uh, I think these are probably from Tooting in Southwest London. Okay. But most, I think even like lots of supermarkets doing now. Just have a look. No, very. Thank you very much, Vin, thank and you. happy uh, Diwali for all you Diwalians out there. Is that? Uh, can I say that, Vin? You have. So. Yeah, I just read that. <laughs> that's that's a very bad thing to say. I didn't. I'm, I was just sort of using my own sort of idiolect there. Uh, I mean, to any people who celebrate Diwali, to any Hindus, uh, a quite justified timeout signal there from producer. <laughs> <laughs> but happy week to you all. Enjoy your very sweet sweets. Uh, tune in next week. We've been Ellis James and John Robbins. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Calling all Hindus. Uh, happy Diwali uh, to everyone. As per usual, um, intern slash producer Vin has brought in some Diwali sweets uh, for us to have during the studio. If you've not had Diwali sweets before, they're sort of like... I've just had one and it's so sweet my lungs and heart hurt. Yes. It's, it's, <laughs> it's sort of the flavour of marzipan, oh. the texture of lard... And the sweetness of pure sugar plus more sugar. But I have a very sweet tooth, so to me that is heaven. And I'm about to tuck into a lovely diamond-shaped one. Mmm, they're very buttery. Mm. They're very nice. They are amazing, but mm. good grief, they're sweet. So, uh, thank you for that, uh, producer intern Vin.
Alice being told not to tuck into another one because someone needs to have an empty mouth. To... You can't both just be munching on food. It's, the, it's terrible radio. It's what? Ter- it's brilliant radio. It's interactive. It's multicultural. It's I can hear it's in my inclusive headphones. radio. All I can hear is. Anyway, <laughs> not everyone. As Alice goes to shoving another mouthful. Um, Sorry, I just I just really like Diwali sweets, but Ben, what's the name of the sweet? Uh, they're called Mitai or Burfi. Burfi? Yeah, Burfi. Go with that. It's easy, isn't it? Burfi. Love it. Oh. Um, and, but Diwali's finished now. Uh, yeah, well, the main day was on Wednesday. Uh-huh. But, you know, you can celebrate. Do keep, some just keep on rocking. Just keep going, yeah. Keep the lights on. All year round, mate. Think of the electricity bill, though. <laughs> yes. yes has, has Diwali gone uh, energy saving? <laughs> 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 I mean, it's candles anyway, isn't it? Is it? Yeah, yeah. I wonder, are they are they eco-friendly candles? Did you think it was like, sort of, you see some people's houses over Christmas where they really, really go to town and you can sort of see it from half a mile away? Did you think Diwali was like that? Yes, I think I did. Is, is You're like, looking at me as, what? What, <laughs> what, 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 <laughs> what did Diwali tell me who's right? It isn't right. like that. It's not like that. It's not like that. <laughs> there are two of those guys in Bristol and, um... They're on a row of houses, and they, they've obviously spent thousands of pounds. Yeah. And you drive past, and you think, oh, that's lovely. And then you think, but I wouldn't want to live next door to them. There's, uh, there's a row of houses that do it in Carmarthen, and uh, they have uh, a donations box outside the house because their electricity bill is, as you can imagine, sky high. <laughs> and they're like, listen, listen, we're doing this for the community. But yeah, doing their best to keep the coal industry alive. Uh, now, John, is called The End. Yeah, and it's, uh, I should give a plug to the manufacturer. It's from the Upton Chili Company. Uptonchili.co.uk. That's right. Now, jo- uh, I've never liked spicy food, but I've I've really worked on increasing my tolerance over the last sort of six months. I've started putting chili in everything, scrambled egg, risotto. I love it, right? But this is the first real test. This is, you know, this is Ajax in the Champions League. <laughs> <laughs> So John's got a teaspoon. John is going to go first as the uh, as the sort of the, the established chili junkie. Here we go. He's putting the uh, the bottle down very very gingerly. Is he nervous? No, he looks he looks excited. He's smelling it. I'm not going to bother doing that. I'm just going to down it in. Water. Oh, it's vinegary. It's garlicky. It's chilly. It's the end. My mouth is watering. Chili lily. I'm excited. I'm about to get as close as I get in my life. To a drugs high. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, it's quite um, sort of quite watery on the palate. Okay. Garlicky. <clears throat> right. <laughs> sort of catches you in the throat. Yeah. Heat's beginning to build a bit now. Right. I mean. It's a beautiful sauce. Ooh. I'll be honest with you. I've had, I've, I've You've tasted had hotter, hotter things, well, but I've, I've it's very pleasurable. Fall. I've watched you eat a fowl, so on YouTube. Yeah. Oh, it's a lovely level of heat. Right. Okay. <laughs> now, bearing in mind that I didn't like, I, I, I went sent back a, a school curry when I was, <laughs> <laughs> I was in year eleven. So I said, I said, I don't know what you put in this, but it is unacceptable. So here we go. Uh, and she said, there's nothing in it. And I said, yes, that's sort of what I meant in a way. Uh, Are you videoing this, Vin? Uh, right. Okay. Teaspoon. We'll video this. <laughs> Isn't yes. it vinegary? No, it's fine. It just tastes like normal. <laughs> of a normal, it just tastes like a paste of normal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Adrenaline levels medium. It's uh, adrenaline, is the thing. Oh, I can feel it in my eyeballs. <laughs> I'm going to do some more. Oh! Yeah, hello! Wow! Things have really changed in my life. There's a new man in town, and his name is Ellis James. Hey, that was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's fine. It's good. It's electrifying. It's changed my posture. I've never had food that's changed my posture before. <laughs> oh. I could go for a bit more of it, mate. It's yeah, a, yeah. Well, you're it's that very chilled out sauce. I'm going to eat some mango now. I'm going to stop broadcasting. <laughs> okay, folks. There you go, Ellis. For turning over a new leaf. Uh, a, a, a chilli leaf. They have leaves, don't they? Yeah. Yep. yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, as Ellis is now drinking... I feel milk. under my tongue. <laughs> X. Ellis James and John Robbins. Radio X. Woo-hoo! 
Talking about my generation there, you're listening to Radio X, uh, a show on which Ellis has pushed the boundaries of his heat tolerance by trying the end chilli sauce bought from Cardiff Christmas Market. Two teaspoons. Two teaspoons. He's had some mango, he's had two glasses of milk, <laughs> and he's had a bottle of water. <laughs> he, he sort of looked a bit like he was preparing for a marathon, just sort of sipping water. <laughs> Didn't want to take too much on board. And I have uh, vowed next week, <laughs> folks, to up the ante. Hey. I'm going to dip into my personal chilli sauce stores and bring in something that will take his face off. I feel fine. You do feel fine. You don't look bad. Your sort of eyes are a bit watery. What feels different? You look like you've just watched your daughter graduate. Yeah. <laughs> you know the cord that holds, like, your tongue to your mouth? Yeah. That is on fire. Really? But What's the it? rest of my mouth is fine. What are you doing? Why? How did it get there? I don't know. Ah. I think I swilled it to prove a point about something else. <laughs> <laughs> oh. The rest of my tongue is fine, my mouth is fine. My eyes and nostrils and lungs are fine. And we've, my my we've, body is fine, but my, that, that cord is on fire. I've we've, got a fire cord. We've had loads of tweets from chili heads. Hey! Um, this one really made me laugh from, uh, I think it's a, <laughs> a restaurant called The Plantation in Middleton. They've said, try one of our suicide strength medicinal curries made from habaneros. It takes you to a distant <laughs> realm. <laughs> I love the idea of a hot sauce taking me to a distant realm. In fact, I like the idea of anything taking me to a distant realm apart yeah. from illegal drugs. Yeah, because sometimes I sort of think that life is like a, a ride I want to get off. I and then I want to take a chilli and get off it and then get back on again. found a great new way of uh, getting myself to sleep, yeah? which is to imagine a pub. <laughs> and uh, you, you've got to choose th uh, three pump ales, two draft, two bottles, two spirits lovely stuff and you just imagine the pub taking shape before your eyes oh yeah and there's uh, lots of uh, brass on the yeah wall. lots of brass so we're also going to tweet uh, <laughs> deals on them you're right Al I'm <laughs> fine this is the cord is on fire my, my mouth cord team it is time for the second episode of Ellis's hot sauce journey. saga journey it's my journey his naga saga <laughs> oh lovely stuff so uh, team last week Ellis bought me a hot sauce which is a very kind gift and I have to say it was one of the nicest sauces I've ever had. I promised to bring in something that would take his face off. <laughs> uh, and producer Vin is now pouring the milk in uh, preparation. I've got in my hands a bottle of uh, Dr. Bernorium's Extraordinary Psycho Juice. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Bernorium. <laughs> Now, I'm not going to give you as much as you had last week. Please don't. But if you can, Psycho juice. If you can deal with this, then you will you will join the elite. The pantheon. The pantheon of uh, the hot sauce community. I've, I've, I've got poured a, cold, a small so amount. It's about a third of a teaspoon. I want all of it done. If we could have tense music, please, produce I've, I've got a call. Hopefully this will really sort of clear my sinuses. That won't just clear your sinuses. It will remove Clear your, my soul. No. <laughs> It'll clear your soul. <laughs> Okay, right, so ready, producer um, Vin is ready. Are you videoing this, Vin? I'm doing, yeah. We need to go for video on this. So, um... Lovely stuff. I realise because I'm nervous I'm holding my groin. <laughs> <laughs> you're not in a... are not taking a free kick. <laughs> <laughs> so, ready down the hatch? Yeah. Psycho juice. Here we go. Hey! <laughs> hey! Uh, yeah, that's fine. Is it fine? <laughs> yes, yeah, all right, yeah. <laughs> I look scared. <laughs> What's it like? It's all right. It's fine. Yeah. Is it? Uh, it's uh, hurting different bits of my mouth this time, <laughs> but I'm not scared. This pain will will increase. Ooh, is it? The highest ingredients in Naga Jalokia. Oh, look at capsicum. the tears. Look at the tears. Look at the tears there. Yeah. Water, cane vinegar, salt, mustard powder. <laughs> Psychojuice.com. There's lots of skulls on the bottle. It's okay, so it's fine. It's not, it's not a worry. He's actually physically <laughs> crying. <laughs> it's not fine. It's, it's not fine. It is fine. It's, it's not a worry. I mean, it, hey, there's a kick to it, undoubtedly. I can't believe I'm actually watching this. This is a man who sort of would would think black hey. pepper was a bit gauche a year Tell ago. Tell me when I'm allowed to have a glass of milk. Not yet. Oh, you, not, okay, not yet. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. What's up, a day? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've never tear. Is, where's it getting you? Is it in your throat? <laughs> yeah, 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 go for the milk, go <laughs> for the milk. Come on, mate. There's tears rolling down his face. Oh. Oh, he's troubled, and he's got, what, two more links to do before Hi. we leave? I'm yeah. not troubled, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> no regrets. Really? No. Oh, well done. The adrenaline rush you're going to get when this passes is going to be insane. Give me more milk of Vin. <laughs> 
stop it now. <laughs> oh, Ellis, is leave, Ellis is leaving his broadcasting station. Uh, I am now fully in charge. Uh, Ellis has been disabled due to Psycho Juice hot sauce with the, with the catchphrase, Hallowed be thy pain. Ellis James and John Robbins. Radio X. That was Rabbit Hole by Jamie T. You're listening to Radio X, and I'm pleased to say Ellis is back in the studio. I would just... Whereas last week, after he finished the hot sauce, he was sort of elated and sort of had an endorphin rush. I would describe his mood now as... Dark? As when you th have a feeling you said the wrong thing to your partner about 30 <laughs> minutes ago, yeah. and they are That's not very, pleased. That is horribly accurate. Yeah. <laughs> I just feel slightly angry at... You largely, but also myself. <laughs> Feelings, I would say, is 80% anger, 20% regret. Um, <laughs> it's left me... Uh, no adrenaline. No? None. No endorphins. No, no endorphins. It's left me with chapped lips. <laughs> and also, it's the only time I've ever taken a glass of milk into the toilet to drink. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I took it in there. And you know when you're... That's you not know, a time to bump into Mella. Well, I, I bumped into someone, another global employee. <laughs> and you're and crying with a glass of milk. I was crying with a glass of milk and swearing. <laughs> and he said, you were right, mate. And I just said, no. <laughs> but didn't offer any explanation. And it's, um... No endor... I was looking forward to the endorphins, but it's just left me with chapped lips. It feels like I'm sort of on a, sort of on top of a mountain or something, it's mm. very, and the you know, wind chill is a negative factor. So, yeah, I mean, I coped with it. didn't get hiccups, surprisingly. Yeah, I, I was mean, uh, surprised at that. A friend of mine, when they had the same sauce on a stag do, was sick. Yeah, but he I'm, had, in fairness, competed the six previous levels of pain that I had uh, prepared for this I stag mean, do. I'll give it its dues. What's it called? Dr. Barn Burnham's Psycho Juice. Dr. Burnorium's Extraordinary Psycho <laughs> Juice. Right. I'll give it its dues. It deserves its name. I mean, it's got a real kick to it. Yeah. Because it doesn't go. It just doesn't go. And you think, you love a glass of milk, a sip of milk or something, and you think it's going to go, and then it just comes back as bad. But it does um, give some advice on the bottle, Ellis. Oh yeah. Just shut up whining and take your damn medicine. <laughs> 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 but yeah, um but to be honest, um it's made me slightly less professional because you're gonna take the rest of this link now. I'm done. Um, yes, I'm, Ellis is I'm now sort of off the goodbye. clock. We've <laughs> yeah. subbed him off at sixty nine minutes. Oh. That was Mark's Approve It by the Maccabees. You're listening to Alice James and John Robbins on Radio X. This is a pre recorded show because I'm in bed, uh, but John is in Barbados. Oh, we're going to Barbados. Oh, we're going to have some rum. That's it. That's it. We've uh, so we've uh, pre-recorded the show, and John has promised a special treat. So hit me, John. Yeah, because I'm going to be enjoying myself, and all you get is a lion, which will probably be interrupted by a child. Yeah, your your choice. Um, I brought you a couple of treats. The first, Ellis, is a recording of "Under Milk Wood" by Dylan Thomas, which my girlfriend's dad has uh, put. Um, uh, jazz music too. He oh, scored it. What a fabulous oh. gift! Yeah, it's really what good. What an absolutely fabulous gift! Oh, <laughs> it's so fabulous. He hit his microphone. Enjoy. Oh, thank you, John. That so really the music means a lot. Is arranged by Derek Pasco for Super Music Dweebs. My girlfriend's dad was um, in the band Flintlock. Great had, name for a band. Who had hits in the seventies and were the house band on Pauline Quirk's TV show. Wow! Yeah, <laughs> and they're in the same recording studio as Queen. Oh, when they were doing the News of the World album. That's better than Pauline Quirk. And Ellis, I was given a Christmas present. I think on the condition that uh, it played a part in our show. Okay. I have here uh, a test tube of Meliculous Reaper Very Hot Popping Candy. Uh, oh. Okay. So this is popping candy. What's that going to do to me? Made by the Chili Alchemist. Oh, good grief. Um, so you've, you've had popping candy before, Ellis? No, I haven't, actually. You never had popping candy? No, no, no. There's that from Wales. great bit. Um, oh, it's actually on the Alan Davis, as yet untitled, I did, where Reese Shearsmith is describing giving it to his granddad when he was oh, little, yeah. and his granddad thought it was raining. <laughs> <laughs> because he never experienced it. So, Ellis, are you ready for some yeah. Chili Alchemist How Reaper? How spicy is it? Because we haven't got any milk. I've no idea. I've never oh, experienced okay. it before. But it can't be too bad because it's popping no. candy. I've never had popping candy. What's it? So it's just, it's going to explode in my mouth. It sort of crackles and fizzes on your tongue, like Rice Krispies, but sort of on like, steroids. Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. I think that's pretty much how they make them, actually. 
Do you I'm, like popping candy, Dave? Because I've got my glasses I don't mind, on. Actually. It looks like one of those pens that when you turn upside down, there's a naked woman. I thought that was what it was going to be. Yeah, I thought it was going to be one of those as well. Yeah, so put some of these in your hand and just sort of just pop them on knock, your tongue. Knock them back. Okay. So Ellis is doing it. Hold your mouth to the mic so they can hear it crackling. Ha <laughs> Sounds like a fire burning, doesn't it? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> the ingredients are sugar, glucose, lactose, carbon dioxide, cocoa butter, smoking Ed's Carolina Reaper chili, and vegetable oil. It's like he's laughing. Have you never had, well, this is the double because you've never had popping candy before. Hi, when can I, when can I chew? Well, you can chew now if you okay. want. <coughs> oh, boy. <laughs> he's so like I'm, a little Welsh boy. Never experienced yeah. the big city pop. It's like I'm being rained on from the inside. Yeah. Oh, it's a bit spicy. Is it spicy? Just like kick to it, yeah, yeah. Has it? It's all right, only in the front of the tongue. Do you want to try oh. some, Producer Dave? Yeah. Oh, Producer Dave. Producer Dave. Producer Dave now. It's popping away. Does it taste nice? Does it taste sweet? It's not, no. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I love that noise. <laughs> oh, please, can we capture that noise? <laughs> it's not, no. <laughs> oh, then it gets, I think it's the back. Does yeah, it? it's pretty hot. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So there you go, folks. Yeah. Thanks to the Chili Alchemist. Uh, you can, they're in Bristol. Uh, I think there's a <laughs> stall in uh, St. Nick's Market, so if you're in the southwest <laughs> and fancy <laughs> ruining your day, <laughs> but with a, a fun pop, um, then check them out. Yeah. Is it hot, Dave? <laughs> 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 Great noises. We... Guy, Gar- uh, Guy Garvey. <laughs> right now, this is Courting the Squall by Guy Garvey. Now, uh, you'd have heard the chuckling of producer Dave Masterman in the background uh, all morning, and he's been in an excellent mood because he's been tucking in <laughs> to... He's been tucking into a foreign... A foreign cake, which I've never seen the likes of before. So, Dave, you've been eating. I've only ever heard... Uh, these discussed in sort of American films about sleepovers, Twinkies. What, well, is, I, it? what I, is a Twinkie, Dave? I don't know. I, this is the first one I had this morning. It's, it's, you know, um, programs... Oh, sorry, by the way, I've not been tucking into them all morning. I mean, come on, Dave. I'll be bouncing off the walls. Why, why are they in the studio? I'm not sure. <laughs> because well, but are they yours? No. So how so, do you know you've got permission to... Oh, I'll be all right. Oh, okay. oh Dave. So me, neither me and Ellis have ever tried a Twinkie. You see those programmes like Sweet Valley High and where they, they, they'll, be, they'll be going on a date and they'll go to a supermarket in, in America. They'll be like, oh man, we've got to have some Twinkies. And I've always wondered what they were. Isn't I'm there like, a film in which sort of Twinkies play a large role? Someone's obsessed with them. Might be a Coen Brothers film. The Godfather. <laughs> <laughs> That's why Scarfing. his mouth was always... He couldn't speak <laughs> properly. So we're now going to try Twinkies live on air as a digital radio first. Yeah, right then. Ellis is tucking in. That is absolutely... It's fantastic and disgusting at the same time. Yeah. Sounds like my love life. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. It's very processed, isn't it? I mean... Oh, I'm going to eat the whole thing and you, hate every mouthful. Yeah, you know you meant to sort of, what is it, eat clean and train dirt? Is that what they say? Oh, it's clog cloying. Yeah. It's claggy. It is claggy. It's foamy. That's weird. Oh, God, America. I'm going to eat the rest of it. I'm going to eat the rest of it. I'm going to be myself. sad as well. It's, I'm going to feel sad. That's it. It makes me feel sad. Thanks, America. If we're being sponsored by Twinkies, this has gone badly wrong, Dave. <laughs> Um, Twinkies make you feel sad, <laughs> but you'll eat them all. Yeah, it's a, it's a sort of um, oh oh wow! It's the most processed thing I've ever eaten in my life. I think mm. it sort of tastes like a factory. It does taste like a factory, but I'm going to finish it. Yeah, I'm going to finish it as well. Addi- the addictive factory taste of Twinkies. Zombieland was the film, apparently. Yes, I was going to say it. I'd have sounded so cool if I'd known that. You would have sounded. I was going to cool. say Zombieland. People would have thought I was the best, mm, right. and now I'm not the best. No. I'm like top ten now, which is useless. <laughs> <sighs> it was Zombieland. I like Zombieland. It's a funny film, that. Oh, I feel, I've already started to feel sad. It's like, a, I remember when I used to eat McDonald's, <laughs> you'd get that post-McDonald's feeling of slight yeah. sadness. Yeah. But um, anyway, 
Uh, there you go. Uh, a digital radio <laughs> first. Sorry, Two men tr- try a food they haven't tried before. <laughs> it makes uh, them feel sad. Can it be? Can it be a regular feature, Dave? It's less exciting. Well, judging by how this link went, probably not. No, <laughs> it's less. It's less exciting than when I try sort of super hot sauces, isn't it? Because yeah. because there's no the very little jeopardy in tasting a Twinkie. Mm. It's just finally I've been able to put a, a taste to the name. Yeah, tick off a taste. That's what we'll call the feature. <laughs> Can, what can we try for tick off a taste next week? What have you never tried, Ellis? I don't like pears. <laughs> <laughs> do you not like? Why do you not like pears? I don't like them. So maybe I could try a, a, a pear for the first time for five years. No, it's got to be the first time you had it <laughs> I don't ever. Don't like pears. Tick off a taste. Um, all right. I I don't know. Um, what haven't I tried? We'll uh, go to that. There's like that foreign sweet shop. You know where they. It's called. Is it called Hard Candy? No, know. that's a d- disturbing film. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's called like Hard Rock Candy, and they have all the imported sweets. Right. Okay. I'll bring in some Tootsie Rolls for Cyber you. Cyber Candy. Cyber Candy, that's it. Oh, hard Candy. <laughs> golden Grahams. I've never tried Golden have you not? Grahams. No. I'll have a bowl <laughs> of Golden Grahams. <laughs> all right. They're not <laughs> called Golden Grahams anymore. Aren't they? So we'll, we'll, we'll have to get the... them. We'll have to get them online. Henry Widdicombe used to have a big routine about it. Yes, he did. <laughs> And he managed to get hold of their Twitter account, didn't he? Yeah, he did. So, as for for tick off a taste next week, <laughs> I'll try a bowl of Golden <laughs> Graham's live. Okay, tune in next week for tick off a taste. <laughs> and, um, but before then, uh, we're going to tick off a track. Uh, this is Block Party with the good news. <laughs> it is my great pleasure to announce the return of, due to public demand, a new semi-regular feature with jingle. Hit and appearing tonight on Take off a taste, take off a taste Take off a taste, take off a taste Take off a taste, take off a taste Take off a taste Take off a taste There you go folks It's time for take off a taste but Thank you very much to Chris Who emailed in with the su- Suggestion to use the Blankety Blank theme as the jingle for this I yes. think you'll agree it's worked out perfectly Absolutely brilliant, thank you Chris um, So this week on, for those of you not familiar With take off a taste um, It was born uh, last week Was it Ellis? From just a riff Yeah, just from a crazy, we just plucked That riff from up the sky, because as Bob Dylan said Great riffs, uh, you don't create them They already exist And um, we stole and ate what turned out To be Johnny Vaughan's Twinkies Yeah. Um, and someone has emailed in Molly's emailed in, uh, she says Dear John, I enjoyed the great new feature Take off a taste, of course you did Molly However, as a fellow pescatarian, having been sadly unav- unable to tick off the taste of Twinkies myself, I was wailing at the radio when I heard you indulge in the sickly treat. I'm sorry to tell you that you ingested beef fat during last oh, week's show. John, John, John. I know. I've, um, right. I very feel quite bad. I've never, ever cheated on my pescatarianism, but knowingly. This, this week, we are deciding to tick off the taste. Oh, <laughs> Ellis, hold your horses. Oh. Because public... F- outcry at the feature reached such heights that a lady came to me after my gig in New Milton Forest Arts Centre last night, yeah. which has been de- described, not by me, by the Arts Centre itself, as very amusing on Twitter. <laughs> and she she came up with uh, a bag, inside was uh, a postcard, and on the postcard it says, take off a caper berry. And she has brought her, given me a jar of caper berries to tick off. Uh, have you ever had a caper berry, Alice? No, what is a caper? Isn't that what um, a horseradish is made of? Uh, I don't or know. sauce. Oh, unfortunately, Alice, I have already ticked off the caper berry taste at various meze events. Right, okay. So as a starter, before we reach the main, I would invite you, Ellis, to tick off a caper berry. <laughs> Okay, here we go. John's bringing over the caper berries. If you want to describe it to the listeners. Oh, it's got a little thing in the jar. Um, well, it just looks like sticks in a jar. Are they edible? Yeah, of course. Oh, shivnerine chamber. <laughs> shivnerine chamber. Sh- shiver me timbers. No, I said shivnerine chamber. What chamber. is this? Um, <laughs> it's a caper berry. Right, and what's... Oh, I don't eat the whole thing, do I? Sure no, not the stalk, okay. but you eat the main bulb. Oh, dear. <laughs> Tastes like ponds. <laughs> Good grief. I absolutely love caper berries. Ah! Right, okay. Describe it, Ellis. You haven't ticked it off until you've described it. Ticked it it off. It tastes like ponds, but a 
a pond in a sort of urban area and hasn't been looked after because the owner's got other things on his plate. <laughs> OK, folks, to the main <sighs> nub of Tickle for Taste this week. Now, Ellis has ticked off caper berries. Yeah. We're both... We are about to tick off the unusual taste of Curiously Cinnamon. Now, as producer Vin pointed out, um, uh, uh, Curiously is the wrong adjective, really. It should be demonstrably cinnamon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've just Definitely cinnamon. Definitely cinnamon. I've just checked the ingredients. There is no beef in uh, oh, Curiously Lord Cinnamon. They are meat-free. It's a breakfast... Oops, it's a daisy. It's a breakfast cereal. I've never had a bowl of Curiously Cinnamon, cinnamon before. It smells very cinnamony. I do like cinnamon, yeah. Oh, it tastes, it tastes like fireworks night. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, let's take off this taste. <laughs> Play the theme tune. <laughs> oh, wow. Mmm. It's... Oh, good grief. It's, it's very... a tongue-tinglingly different way to start my day. Twelve servings. It is... It's... I do you remember the Cinnamon Challenge? It was all the rage on, on, mm. on uh, YouTube about sort of two, three years ago. They're very Moorish. They are Moorish. Oh, my God. They taste a bit like a scaled-down version of those Danish pastries you get, the swirly ones with cinnamon yes. in, but um, in the size of a, a postage stamp. I've got to be honest, um, uh, the, the fact that I had a caper as well means that <laughs> there's, there's a party going on in my mouth and next door's nasty neighbours have been invited. It's a and... cinnamon pond party. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the police have been called. Um, oh, good grief. It's just a cape. There. I've got capers in the back of my mouth. Curiously cinnamon at the front. <laughs> so my brain doesn't know how to... It doesn't know what time of day it is. <laughs> so there you go, folks. The uh, second ever episode... Of Tick Off a Taste. And appearing tonight on. Tick Off a Taste, Tick Off a Taste. Tick Off a Taste, Tick Off a Taste. Tick Off a Taste, Tick Off a Taste. Tick Off a Taste. Tick Off a Taste. It's 1247 pm, which only means one thing that it's time for. And appearing tonight on. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste. Take off a taste. Exactly. It's the feature that has taken the world of radio by storm. It's so popular. It's pretty simple. Does what it says on the tin. It's John Robbins and Ellis James trying something for the first time and then describing it on the radio, which isn't as bad as it sounds. <laughs> and this week, folks, uh, we have actually been sent in our tick off a taste treats, our TTTs, um, <laughs> from a lovely uh, person called Rasmus. He says, I'm a Danish one from France, so the easiest way to introduce you to some foreign tastes is to send them in. Um, what uh, Rasmus has decided to do is gone for a licorice theme. I love licorice. I'm going off licorice. I love it. I also like aniseed. Well, he, he goes into quite some detail. Okay. Uh, he says that... Um, uh, where is it? Uh, he says that... Uh, oh, yeah. North of the border, we eat fibre-heavy, proper dark bread and eat non-sweetened licorice. Is this um, north of the border in Denmark? No, I think it's sort of uh, northern Europe. Right, so. Uh, on the other side, you eat sugar-covered, deep-fried sugar cubes with cinnamon-flavoured molasses, pure syrup and a sprinkling of other synonyms for sugar. Um, and he says, when I studied at the University of Nottingham, I genuinely phoned the Danish embassy in London to find the nearest vendor of Rulkebrod. Okay. So, uh, Rasmus has sent us in three bags of uh, licorice sweets, and he's given the order for us to start in. Um, the final one is called Super Peritos. Oh, good. Any sweet with the word super in it, I'm excited and about. And they're Haribo, but they say on the packet, not for children, because they contain, quote, uh, too much ammonium chloride. Don't, uh, yeah, <laughs> great, bring it on. Bring it on. But he's told us to I start... I think I've got enough ammonium chloride in my system, so I'm really looking forward to top it up. With Haribo salt bombers. Okay. So, so these are little... A um, salty Haribo sweet. Yes. Okay, now those are things that um, shouldn't really mix so salt. There you go, Ellis, there's a salt bomber. Okay, so uh, let, let's imagine, I'm on the M1. I'm driving... Uh, <laughs> I was on the M1 yesterday. I'm driving to Nottingham, for instance. Oh, Izzy, have you got any sweets in the glove box? I have, Ellis. Oh, my God. <laughs> mm. And it tastes like... You know, you know a cobbler in a small town? It tastes like what the shop tastes like when you go in to have your heels repaired. Oh! I mean, initial, it's not that salty. It hits you, though. It's got a... It's a very deep 
authentic licorice taste. Yeah. Ah. I mean, it sort of <laughs> lingers in the mouth yeah. like a bit of leather. Yeah. Get me another one. Okay. Oh, tastes no. like a key fob. Oh, it's got a bad out of aftertaste. Tastes like a key fob. <laughs> it tastes. It actually tastes like chewing on a scrap of leather. Oh, what's this? No, that's the same one again. Oh, I don't want. A, I don't want another key fob. <laughs> okay. Oh, that is a stark aftertaste. Yeah, it's a key fob that I've dropped on the floor I of a festival. I feel like I've been cured by a medieval herbalist. Okay. okay what's this? What this is, is um, jungle vral. <laughs> and uh on, this but, one's saltier. Is it? Yeah. Ah! <laughs> oh my god, I just spit it straight out. That's insane. Oh wow. Oh Chris! Oh my god, that's the worst thing I can feel my I've ever put in my mouth, and that's saying something. I can feel my skin age. That's absolutely outrageous. Dave, try that. No. Dave. Dave, you just had a turn hot noodle because you're hung over. Have you got one? That is Three. that is the saltiest thing. But it's sort of not like quite salt. It tastes ah. like seawater. <laughs> oh god, we've lost Dave. Oh mate, Rasmus. Give me, an, give that... me another one. Dave, you spat it into the recycling. Think about the environment. <laughs> well, you want another one of those? No, no, God no. The next one. I need something to taste different in my mouth because oh, that tastes that like is double the key farm. Weirdest taste I've ever tasted ever. It's got a picture of a, a monkey on the front laughing, and he's laughing because he's tricked you into eating that. Yeah. Remarkable. It's What's got a sort this? of a... Oh. <laughs> these are the ones full of ammonium chloride, oh, which I'm God hoping you're going to sort of... God for that. These are Haribo Super Puritos. Yeah. Oh, that's strong. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, but more classic. I'm yeah. glad it's not covered in sort of salty death dust. I'm sort of thinking... Um... Oh, oh God! I'm now Michelin gonna... Continental tires. Yeah, I'm now going to spit that out. It's like it's like birch tar, which I do know how to make in the wild. Oh. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, uh, my I think my body's going to give up on me. Yeah, I think we've got a one in three success rating there, Rasmus. Oh. And God knows what <laughs> is happening in Scandinavia to make you guys eat that sort of stuff. Yeah. Is it because because of the lack of sunlight that's made them go all insane? <sighs> Oh, I've got a hangover from that. Right. I wasn't even drink last night. Ah. Anyway, folks, uh, this right now, as we rinse our mouths out, uh, th but do but thank you, Rasmus. It's very yeah, kind thank of you. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, so I don't want to be ungrateful. Uh, more take off a taste next week. Mm. Folks, fun news. It's time for a special edition of... And appearing tonight on... Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste. Take off a taste. That's right, guys. It's time for take off a taste. Uh, this is uh, the Back by Popular Demand, the feature where Ellis and I literally tick off tastes, things we haven't tasted before. Uh, this week, we've actually been sent in um, our tick of a taste by Chili Devil Sources, Unit 2, 23 Arthur Street, Hull. <laughs> I love the sound of that, Unit 2. Yeah. It's just some lock-up in It's a porter cabin hull. full of hot sauce. However, the people at Chili Devil have sent us two hot sauces in the most securely sellotaped package I have ever had the misfortune because to attempt to open. if the bottle had opened, can you imagine you'd be burning a... Posty's hands. So we've got um, Holy Moly Devil Spit oh, and God. we've got Devil Spit Extreme. I'm Devil gonna, Spit Extreme? Yeah, I'm going to go for the Holy Moly because it's got lime in it and I'm going to give you the Devil Spit because it's got beer in it. Devil Spit Extreme? Yeah. Okay. So Devil Spit Extreme for Ellis and Holy Moly for Robin. Because I'm a little bit nervous uh, during that last track I bought a bounty bar for their, sort of, <laughs> for their, for their soothing qualities. I'm going to have this on a, on a, on a crisp. Yeah. So I'm I'm holding out a crisp for John. Um, would you like to describe the sauce? What's it? What does it promise it's going to do to me? It says shake before eating. Heat rating approximately five hundred thousand Scoville units. Oh, dear. suitable for chemical warfare, satanic sex parties, inducing labour, labour, hemorrhoids, chili files, gimps, goats, and vegans. I mean, I was I, I, I was going to go to home base later on. So is it help? Is suitable for that? <laughs> right. It's it's sort of it's hard to get it out of the. It's, there you go. Right. Okay. Um, it, oh, oh, oh God! It's burning my hands. It's got a very angry colour. Ellis has it's entered into him. Oh yes, he yes. Hey, Ellis, Ellis is swearing in Welsh. He's saying yes, he grist. Oh. How is it? It's fine, but it's it's coming up from behind my throat. <laughs> I've got oh. some on my finger. 
which I'm worried I'm now going to... I've got to go to a meeting at a mortgage broker. Oh, it's entered my spine. What if I shake their hand and then they then lick their hand and, and refuse me a mortgage? <laughs> we haven't got any. I've just realised we haven't got any milk. You're right. Oh, huh? yeah, fine. <laughs> Ellis is sort <laughs> right, of... Um, sure? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> he's circling on his seat. He's sort of like, now I'm going to try oh, the holy moly. Can I have the bounty bar so I can continue to broadcast? Of course you can have the bounty bar, El. <laughs> mm. Okay, here I go with the holy moly. Oh, it's sweet, it's limey, and it's now horrifically intense and unpleasant. <laughs> oh, oh, oh God. Oh. It's like a sort of, it's sort of the sudden sort of, it goes through ah. your head in waves. Oh, f figs on a tree branch. <laughs> I, I've got to say, Ellis, I've got a suspicion that I had the easier of the two. Hey, mm. well, I'm fine. That's actually lovely. Oh, scrum machines. The <laughs> the um, the people at Devil Spit. I commend your holy moly, but I think your extreme source is turned perfect for kids' parties. Yes, yeah, turned <laughs> Ellis blue. So there we go, guys. What um, a way to end the show. I'm going yeah. to do the podcast intro now. <laughs> not my problem. Not my problem, mate. <laughs> if you want to hear whether Ellis makes it, do download the podcast. <laughs> um, and folks, ooh, oh, I'm getting lovely now. I just feel relaxed and oh, sort of yeah, yeah. stress free. Yeah. Um, guys, if you want to come and check out some of the last dates on my tour, uh, while <laughs> Ellis writhes, uh, in my teeth. <laughs> tonight I'm at Hemel Hempstead, and next week I am in Glasgow on right, Tuesday. Take this the, yourself. Uh, not an, no, quite a decent <laughs> amount in Glasgow actually. Good. If you want to come to Glasgow on the twenty second to the what stand, are you doing in Hemel? the stand and in Hemel, I don't know. Um, also, how are you going to get there? I'm in Aldershot on the 23rd. That's Yeah. That's um, 25 there. Uh, the, the gig was actually all right. It was playable. And the Birmingham Glee on the 25th. Good room. Are you in the small room or the big room? Uh, I think the small room. Yeah, well, it doesn't... Let that be a lesson to you. So you can check out all those dates on johnrobbins.net forward slash gigs.php. And Stop also... giggling, Dave. I'm doing the uh, Udderbelly at the South Bank How on 8... Oh, because... He doesn't ask me to do the end of Ali. <laughs> That's in, on April the... It's a big room for you to fill, isn't it? But I mind you to turn nice to the song. I want to try and get yeah, it's to your head. It's too big. Yeah. Uh, so do all come. Everyone listening has to come to the ah. Underbelly on the South Bank on the 30th of April. Take care. And yeah. next week, fingers crossed, it'll be me and Ellis again. Keep it Radio X. It's time now for Tick Off a Taste. And appearing tonight on... Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste. Take off a taste. I love that Roy Kinnear is in that jingle. Um Far a Hurt. Team Henry Cooper. It's time for Take Off a Taste, where Ellis and I taste things we've never tasted before before taking them off. Uh we've had an email. Written, printed out, and then sent to us Super. by Rebecca. She said, um, as requested in your previous podcast intro, I will keep this brief. I'm a retro one podcast devotee and promoter of the term maximum shunting. Oh, yes, <laughs> well done. I recently attended a comedy night in Leeds, Kill for a Seat, hosted by the one and only Silky. Oh, I've done that gig loads of times. Good friend of ours. And at the end of the evening, we got given the enclosed gummy bears. Now, these are no ordinary gummy bears. These are chilli gummy bears. As part of Tick Off a Taste, and because of your love of hot sauce, I immediately thought of you two legends. Please enjoy, the, enjoy these, marketed as Satan's Spawn. Wow, OK. Well, I should say that tonight, I've got the night off, and I'm going to eat definitely a dras, a madras, or po potentially a vindaloo as part of the ongoing Project Spice. <laughs> Amazing. The turnaround in Ellis' Turnaround palette. as part of Project Spice. It's taken about a year where I've been trying to increase my tolerance for spicy food because I found it so embarrassing that I couldn't eat a coma. I used to think that a coma was a bit, a bit rich for me about 12 months ago, but things are changing. These gummy bears are available from the Chili Shop in Leeds or online at chili-shop.co.uk. So, Vin and Ellis... Select your bear. We've got three gummy bears there. On the, uh, okay. They, they're yellow. They're normal. I don't know, interestingly, whether the gummy bear size sort of shape is copyrighted. If so, it's an infringement. Um, but now we will uh, consume the gummy bears. Pop them in as part of Project Spice. Hmm. I'll oh, bring Orange Beasy. Hey. Sweet. Oh, no, no, there's heat inside. Once you get in there. Hmm. Yep. They are sweet. They're sort of orange and lemon. Can't taste anything. It's quite pleasant. Sweet or spicy. I think, I think that's the nicest trouble. thing we've had on. 
That is delicious. Oh, I'm getting the... Oh, it's a lovely heat on the yeah. palate. It's basically... It's not dissimilar to those bars of chocolate where you have chilli in them, where you sort of get that chocolatey taste and then the chilli heat. Um, I, I would say, uh, Leeds Chilli Shop, that Satan's spawn is quite a strong term yeah. for what is a sweet that, whilst you may not let your three-year-old have them, I think you would let your five-year-old have strange them. Doing this, <laughs> strange doing this feature without Ellis in tears, isn't it? Mm. Because of Project Spice. Mm. Project I, Spice is in its final uh, I can't phase. taste anything. I can't taste anything sweet or spicy. I think I've, I, I've, I think I've ruined my palate. <laughs> mm. I uh, had... What did I have the other day? I'd eat a whole packet of those and then go for a run. Oh, I had some Bajan hot sauce I bought from the uh, shop near me, and for breakfast I made a fried cheese and caper sandwich. Oh, my God. And uh, sort of dipped <laughs> it in this thing. big bowl of... Yeah, Bajan sauce, and uh, all, all hell broke loose. <laughs> And I nearly missed my gig. Keep for breakfast. <laughs> yeah, I just, yeah. Very, I'm a very well, savoury, acidic man. But you will not play by society's rules. Each time they make a new one, I break it down. <laughs> unless it's, unless it's traffic-related. But before then, Mount Vindaloo must be scaled. <laughs> In order to complete Project Spice. I could do voiceovers. Uh, so... Ellis has been hiking for some two years from the foothills at base camp where even a microwave lasagna was too much. Well, I didn't like kettle chips, the cracked black pepper ones, because they had a bit of a kick to them. In the, in the preceding two years, we have seen his palate progress from that of a, 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 a frail child to a full-blown chilli head. Vin uh, opening a bottle of milk preemptively. I ate an American hottest pizza in Pizza Express, which is new, and it is the hottest thing I've had on the high street. Uh, <laughs> apart from... It's the hottest high street food I've eaten, uh, apart from, obviously, Indian restaurant food. Um, and, yeah, you know, so that's the training I've done this week. So, Vin de Loser at the ready. I've gone it prawn. Pulsing. It is so spicy. I think I might put shades on. Yes! <laughs> shades on. Right, okay, so, what are we saying, um, a big bit Get of chicken... Get a spoon, not a fork. All right, all right, okay, do it neat, yeah? Yeah. All right, then, oh. down the hatch. Three, two, one. There he goes, he's chewing. Oh, that's not a good sound. <laughs> do you want to maybe turn his mic down for a bit, Dave? There we go. Oh, it's nice. It is nice, isn't it? It smells yeah. nice. I mean, um, my neck hurts. <laughs> but it's all right, actually. I'm going deep into the prawns. Oh, oh. I think I'm okay. I think I'm okay. <laughs> I think I'm okay. Really? Yeah. That is that is fine. That is fine. I think Project Spice... <coughs> oh, John's coughing and oh. I didn't cough. <laughs> I'm all right. Prawn's always hotter than chicken. Oh, is it? I'm going to have another bit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to have another bit of chicken. Will someone call my parents? <laughs> it's, it's not right. very... Um, this is the thing with the Vindaloo. It's not the most flavoursome of curries. Uh, no. I like it. I think I'm okay. I think I'm. I think I'm a different man now. Oh, an anti climax. No. All right then. How? <laughs> <laughs> no. That is the that is the great um, end to Project Spice. That's true. Yeah. Ellis can now eat a vindaloo without, without creating good radio content, <laughs> <laughs> and that is what the dream's already been. Always been. Sorry. I'm. <sighs> I'm sort of. No, I'm not struggling. It's just. That's nice. That's pleasant. No. Yeah. I'm gonna eat some of your prawn, and maybe there's been a mix-up. This is all right. Hmm. Am I am I the hardest man in radio? <laughs> yeah, you're, you're wearing Ray Bans. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> someone should try and break my arm like an escape to victory. I should just like whimper a bit and then oh, I'm the best. That is fine. Uh, right. There you go. Oh, John, I didn't see this one no, coming. John's caught, struggling. Just caught the back of the throat. It's fine. It's a nice warmth to the mouth. But I'm about to go to the pub for six hours, so mm. I mean, it could all kick off. Sorry, I'm it? chewing into the mic. That's gross. Um, I feel. Like th big things have happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, I think, I think, I think I can hold my head up high now. I think absolutely you can. My oh. mouth is warm. Uh, <laughs> yeah. After sort of like a passionate kiss <laughs> with a prawn. <laughs> Ellis James and John Robbins, Radio X. Just eating a master plan. No, I haven't eaten a master plan. <laughs> that, that was my master plan. That was the master plan by Oasis, but my master plan two years ago at the very beginning of Project Spice was to eat a vindaloo for fun. Listeners, I've done it and I feel magic. I just... My lips are tingling. Sure, my belly is asking me to consider things. <laughs> but ultimately, I've conquered 
I've seen it all, and I feel great. Will you be exiled from Carmarthen for getting involved in exotic flavours? Um, no, I think I might be exi exiled from my parents' house. Um, but I think I, when I go back to Carmarthen, uh, which which has the fact that it has a McDonald's on the brown sign as you go <laughs> in, it's got like a brown cultural sign that says it's got McDonald's. Um, I, I will be bringing forth new flavours, exotic spices from the east, literally, because London is to the east. And you'll walk down the high street and people will be whispering, going, he didn't even need milk. Yeah, there he is, there he goes. No, 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 I know, I know his parents. Your mum's texted in. Yeah. Your mum's tweeted in. <laughs> what did she say? It's okay, we're listening. Oh. We're listening to a Vindaloo live on radio. I've never eaten a Vindaloo. Hashtag proud parents. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Lovely stuff. Uh, so, folks, uh, coming up, uh, we've got Email of the Species. And, Have um, we? Yeah. <laughs> What's that? No, sorry. It's, it's a cumulative thing, isn't it? Are Sounds you on a Vindaloo come down? Yeah. I need another one. Oh, God, what's happened to me? Uh, Dave, I need a thrill. Kiss me and then tell me that you hate me. <laughs> <laughs> Again. Anyway. So it's time for Tick Off a Taste. And appearing tonight on... Tick off a taste, tick off a taste. Tick off a taste, tick off a taste. Tick off a taste, tick off a taste. Tick off a taste. Tick off a taste. <laughs> That's right, teams. <laughs> Team, if you've got a taste, we'll tick it off. Uh, this week's taste was sent in by... John Doolan. John Doolan, the doodlum. Dool dude. Uh, and he has sent us in uh, an email. It says, hi, Esther John. I've sent you a gift pack of some sweets called Mega Sours. Okay. They should arrive from the online shop this week. I tried them in Cornwall a couple of years, couple of years ago, and the first 30, 30 seconds or so are like having some sort of chemical warfare attack in your mouth. Bring it on. After that, it gets better, and at the end of the experience, they're actually quite nice. Oh. I was the only member of my family who managed not to spit it out. Highly rec recommended, John Doolan, the dude man. Bring it on, yeah. So I'll Dave's right. got the package. So I have them There's here. nothing I won't try. Well, Dave's actually been tucking into these all throughout the show. No, I've not. Yeah, you have, and I've been getting quite gels. Because I want that sweet, sour explosion. Right, okay. I'm looking forward to this. Hit me with some sours, Dave. What colour are you pink? going for? Go for blue. Blue. Yeah, I bet you picked that because it's the same colour as Man City's kit. Yes. <laughs> uh, two blues. What? You double... I'm you gonna, double balling. I'm going to double sour. <laughs> oh, he's double balling. <laughs> Oh, Ellis has gone straight in. Oh, there's like a blue and a pink one there. Oh, just like bins. <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> it's like I've taken the bins out in my mouth. <laughs> I'm going to go for a single, oh, oh. single... Keep them in. Ah. Oh! Oh, it's too strong. It oh. tastes like you're buying your cakes. Ah. Ah. Mm. Oh, I, I, I prefer curry. I thought sour was like spicy, but it's not. Oh, oh, it's oh, Dave. John, new. I was, John's crying. If you're you're gonna have to eat, I was holding it. If you hold it still, it doesn't make this taste, but you can't. <laughs> oh. It's you're acrid. Gonna, you're going to have to eat stuff like this on your bushcraft course, John. I, it's Grubs. giving me mouth ulcers, Dave. I've overcome my mouth ulcers by switching to a toothpaste that doesn't have sodium lauryl sulfate in it, but I think this is oh. I'm doing my good work. Oh, my lungs are filling with an odd fluid. Oh, hang on, hang on. I'm starting to get a strawberry hit. Here we go. Oh. oh. Yeah? Oh, it is like warm rain after a blistering hot summer. Hello! <laughs> oh, it's... Oh, good. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. Oh, well, that is such a double-sided coin knife. John Doolan, will you marry me? Mmm. <laughs> that sour taste, you just usually expect to go quicker but it really fizzes on the tongue. It's intense as well, especially if you've double balled. Sort of, yeah, I can't believe you double balled. Because I don't care anymore. <laughs> I just want thrills in my life. I know, I know what that feels like. I'm a thrill seeker. I've just completely lost any sense of responsibility to myself. I just, my body is there at Pewley's a Thrill Palace. The more balls, the better. Absolutely. Oh, Dave, you've been really backing that sort of uh, innuendo. <laughs> but throughout this link, I think it's time that we move on. It's now time for Take Off a Taste. And appearing tonight on... Take Off a Taste, Take Off a Taste. Take Off a Taste, Take Off a Taste. Take Off a Taste, Take Off a Taste. Take Off a Taste. Take Off a Taste. Today's taste we're going to tick off um, is uh, we're present from my friend Ben, who uh, was in America, because he is a music person. And uh, he brought me back 
Original ass kicking habanero popcorn. I apologise for the language, uh, but our American cousins obviously have much looser reign uh, on the language. And the trademarked um, uh, sort of uh, s- phrase is kick yo ass hot. Uh, so we've had uh, intern Michael has uh, microwaved these, um, these habanero popcorn. Uh, Dave, do you want to go first? Yeah, all fist, right. Fistful of corns. All right. There you go. I'm in. Dave's in. I'm in. I don't know how hot popcorn can be. No, I don't think Spicy. it's very hot. Hmm. Right. Hmm. Oh, very flavoursome. Quite buttery. And a bit of heat there. Now it's got a bit of a kick. Hmm. Oh. Do you know what? It's actually a thoroughly nice popcorn. It's delightful. It's delightful, one of the, John. One of the greats. So, thanks. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> five out of five. Yeah. This popcorn is buttery. It's it's not hot. It's not ass kicking. No. It was not. It's not kick your ass hot. But it's certainly sort of uh, tickle the taste buds hot. Join us again next week. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't the most groundbreaking, was it this week? Well, it's still ticked up a taste, mate. True. It does what it says on the tin. Yeah. It was a taste. I ticked it off. <laughs> Put it in the award folder. <laughs> this is Red Hot Chili Peppers, with which are, who were actually red hotter than this popcorn with dark necessities. Uh, you're listening to Radio X, and it's time for... And appearing tonight on... Tick off a taste, tick off a taste. Tick off a taste, tick off a taste. Tick off a taste, tick off a taste. Tick off a taste. Tick off a taste. That's right. <laughs> Folks, we're still doing it. Uh, it's Tick Off a Taste, uh, where we tick off the tastes uh, you've sent in. Um, this week is a letter from Samir, and they say, Dear Ellis, John, Dave, Vin, and Michael. Michael getting a bit of a shout out there. He's one of the only people of the production team who's turned up, so fair play. <laughs> Although I usually prefer the much more widely used medium of communication that is email, for some bizarre reason I'm not yet able to attach physical objects. Trust me, Samir, it's the next step. I thus begrudgingly send you the remains of a poor tree company to accompany a treat I have for all of you to tick off the taste of. I had thought this hammer of a feature was cut, but it was pleased to see it return, though somewhat disappointingly, with a habanero popcorn. I have for you a treat from India that my monster of an uncle somehow enjoys. I believe it is seasoned dried mango pulp. Perhaps Ellis can take some back with him to Carmarthen to cement his place as the mango god of Wales. Love the show, Samir. Well, Samir, thank you very much for sending in um, what, and I do quote, you believe to be dried mango pulp. It's always nice when even the listeners aren't sure what they're sending in. Just to describe it to you... um, it's sort of condom shaped in a condom type wrapper. Would you agree with that, Studio Simon? Yes, yes. You'd agree with that. Uh, it's got a lady on the front making the sort of sign. What do you call that sign? The sort of A OK yeah, sign. Yeah, the A OK when you're diving. Scuba yeah, diving. Yeah. It's the sign that um, Brian Clough used to make to players if they'd done well, <laughs> and that's sort of the only uh, praise they got from him. Uh, anyway, so it's it's it basically looks like I'm about to open a condom. The lady on the front saying, well done for getting this condom. Uh, it says, ingredients, mango pulp, salt. Well, that's not what I was expecting. Dried mango, black salt, citric acid, navasda, dry ginger, pepper. This, hmm. Right, okay, I'm now opening the packet. There's more, uh, uh, there's more salt in it than... Studio Simon, are you thinking this isn't great radio by any chance? <laughs> it's all right. I've got me in. Here we go. Here we go. Well, we've all been there, right, guys? <laughs> um, okay. So, ooh, they're little tablets. Yeah, they look like uh, sort of dried rabbit droppings. I'm going to now attempt the what we believe to be dried mango pulp. Oh, 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 that's the worst. <laughs> oh, good. I'm actually going to... Ho- oh, oh, God. No. Oh, that's the worst. That's the worst thing that's ever happened to anyone. Um, Studio Simon, do you want to try the dried mango pulp? I'll be all right. I'll be all right. Uh, Michael, you have to try it. Okay. Can you put Michael's microphone up, please? Oh. What do you... You, uh, you discuss... You would eat it, Michael. No, I'm nervous. Yeah, you should I'm be. Nervous. It's absolutely rancid. Okay, here we go. What oh. are you thinking? It's sort of salty. 
It tastes like, it does taste like oh. a salted rabbit dropping. Oh, that is horrendously bad. Yeah, it really does. And it's, dropping is, yeah. Samir, I don't know why you sent that oh. in. I mean, it is, oh. a, it is a unique flavour, given that oh. it shouldn't exist. It's like a salty oh, rabbit poo. Oh, my mouth poo. is terrible. It's awful. Yeah. yeah. So, if you want to let us know why on earth anyone would eat that, uh, do let us know. Oh. Perhaps another tick of, oh, you know, second wave. <laughs> Uh, perhaps another tick off the taste next week if I'm still alive. Anyway, you're listening to Alice James and John Robbins on Radio X, and now it's time for Tick Off a Taste. And appearing tonight on... Tick Off a Taste, Tick Off a Taste. Tick Off a Taste, Tick Off a Taste. Tick Off a Taste, Tick Off a Taste. Tick Off a Taste. Tick Off a Taste. That's right, team. Uh, you keep sending them, we keep ticking them off. It's Tick Off a Taste. Uh, we had two Tick Off a Tastes uh, sent in for us to tick off this week. Um, one from uh, Judy. Uh, she says, Guys, uh, I saw this and thought of you. Seeing as Ellis has conquered his dislike of spicy food, I thought it was about time we would do something about his fear of bananas. I don't know you had a fear of bananas. Uh, I don't... I have a fear of them. I just find them grotesque. Okay. Uh, and would um, and and I've, I've actually thought a little bit, but for a long time wouldn't wouldn't eat anyone eat wouldn't let anyone eat a banana in a car I was driving. Right. Um, okay. This absolutely horrifying fruit. Say what you like about Ellis. He's got principles. <laughs> that budge. Um, so uh, Judy sent us a jar of banana habanero sauce. Unfortunately, Judy, the uh, the jar security was breached during transit, uh, which meant that we we sort of received a some newspaper wrapping a, a sort of a, a lot of mess. It looked like someone had really taken against the show <laughs> and had sent in some form of protest. But I did have a sniff, and it sat, smelt quite nice. Oh, so to be honest, we get fewer of those protests than you'd think. Yes. But I have sniffed off a taste. Uh, but I wasn't able to tick it off. Uh, but we do appreciate the gesture. Luckily, we had a backup tick off a taste. It's from Alex, and she emails, Greetings from Russia. As a gay girl from Moscow, I feel the need to clarify right away that I hold none of the views Russian society at large is sadly infamous for holding. Good. Yes, Glad well to done. hear that. Um, I'm a retro one and completely adore the show, so I wanted to express my love by sending you a small token of my affections. We have a Russian retro one -er. Mate, we've got people downloading from Mozambique. Um, since it would take a while for a package from Russia to reach you, I opted by sending you some of my favourite Swedish candy, Salmiaki, for tick of a taste via a UK-based company. Hope that's not too weird. Anyway, thank you for your awesome show. I can't count how many times it's cheered me up and brightened my day. I wish you the absolute best and best of luck to Wales in the upcoming Belgium game. I'm sure it'll be fantastic and I'm really rooting for you and hope Alice gets to see Wales in the semi-finals. Thanks, Alice. Uh, Alex, sorry. That's very kind of you. Um, now... Alex, unfortunately, one of the very first tick off a tastes. In fact, I think perhaps the first was uh, Salmiaki, the sort of bizarre um, uh, licorice based Swedish pastel. However, um, she has also included. Oh, was that the one that tasted of key fobs? Yes, it was the one that tasted of key fobs. How. However, um, she has also sent in a pack of Turkish pebers. Hot and sour. Okay. Um, which I'm now going to. Bear in mind that I've got a hangover, which means I can't <laughs> put jumpers on because when my head touches the hole, I feel sick. Well, but these. What are... is this going to do? Is this. Is this. Oh, kill or, is Chris, this kill or cure? They've gone everywhere. No, um, I think they're going to be fine. There are only two flames out of three. Oh, all right then. So, Either I watched the England Iceland game with the Madras the other night, like it was just the most natural thing in the world, and I really took time to reflect on how I've developed as a person. So, Ellis, uh, they're sort of boiled sweets. The colours are brown, red, or blue. Um, brown for Wales. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, mate. Okay. Pop it in, tick it off, taste it. <laughs> He's ticking it off. He's tasting it. Um. Initial reactions? Uh, it, it tastes like um, Bassett's licorice all sorts with attitude. Really? Yeah. Um, okay, I, actually, um, I knew it was going to be aniseed sort of licorice based. I am... Um, I, it's not doing my hangover any good, but I don't think it's going to be a tipping point that could make the last half an hour of this programme very, very difficult to okay, finish. Okay, I'm going to pop in a red one. 
Actually, I don't like it. <laughs> it tastes like dog mess. <laughs> How would you know? Uh, well, uh, the 90s. Um, I'm actually going to spit this out. What does that mean? <laughs> uh, you know, my sister was young. <laughs> oh, oh my God. What went wrong? Because it was a promising start. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's very gloopy, so... <laughs> So my my entire my cheeks are lined with it now, and I am not I enjoying my mouth. <laughs> ah, that is horrible. Well, I've got a red one, uh, Alex, and I have to say it's an absolute treat. It just tastes like a red boiled sweet. It's neither hot nor sour. It's oh, just pleasant. But I guess God. you can't put that on the front of the packets, can you? No. Pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> well, this has gone into his mad mind space. Oh, it's made me, um, it's made me question things. Okay, folks. Oh, God. There you go. You sent them in. It's we like take a them off. counselling session has gone wrong, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> so, right now, uh, this is Red Hot Chili Peppers with Dark Necessities. <laughs> Dark Necessities. Pass it on by the coral. You're listening to Ellis James and John Robinson Radio X is coming up to 2.49pm, which means it's time for... Why are you doing time <laughs> checks all of a sudden? <laughs> I, I like it. I just think it makes you sound professional. It's, come, it's now 2.49pm and it's time for Tick Off a Taste. And appearing tonight on... Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste. Take off a taste. Makes you laugh every time. Folks, you send them in, we tick them off. This week's taste comes to you from Ollie and Will. They have, as many of our listeners do, sent us a letter, but it's actually an email printed out. They say, Dear Ellis John, producer Dave and intern Vin, Please excuse the non-email message as we know just how crucial electronic mail is for an efficient modern office. We are two workmates who are both PCDs and retro oneers. We thought we would put forward these sweets for the nation's favourite feature took of a taste. Our boss from San Francisco arrived with these ginseng sweets as a present, but everyone in the office seems to hate them except the two resident PCDs. They taste disgusting for the first minute, then slowly become acceptable before <laughs> being quite tasty at the end. Is it a coincidence that the two podcast devotees in the office are the only ones who like them? Keep up the great vibes, Ollie and Will. Thanks, Ollie and Will. Um, so they come in little sort of uh, little individual wrappers. There's... Um, on well, the front shows a jings, ginseng root, but from a distance it looks like a big willy. Um, <laughs> and it's being sliced at one end, uh, which is sort of a horrifying thought. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so okay. we're going to now take off this taste. Uh, ginseng, eh? I don't really know what ginseng is as a thing. Uh, it's... It, I know it's in a lot of my girlfriend's fruit teas, yeah, which like all taste like awful. Yoga people... Like, like it. So just to describe it, it like to you, it's it the size of a fruit gum, and it's uh, sort of, it looks like a bit of amber. Yeah, it's what it looks like. It looks like the resin that sort of um, f flies from dinosaur times get trapped like in. Like in Jurassic Park. Like in Jurassic Park. Okay, it's I'm taking it off. Oh, it's tastes like I've put the wrong oh thing in my mouth. Oh, my. <laughs> you know when you reach for something and you think it's food? Yeah. You're like, oh, God, and, that's been on the carpet actually, for ages. You're, you're six and you, you've eaten flowers. Mm, it tastes like sort of cleaning fluid. Wait, it's absolutely... Crossed with traditional, something traditional from the war. Yeah. I, I'm not sure. It tastes I'm, like metal. I don't like it. This... I'm, well, they say it starts off horrible and after a minute it becomes acceptable. Oh, my God. It is like something you'd eat at a, sort of at a festival to imply that you're fun and spontaneous and you put it in your mouth you think, actually, I want to go home and watch Glastonbury on telly because I hate this. All my shoes are suede. <laughs> They've been ruined. It tastes a bit like a sort of a, a cough sweet from the past. Yeah. Like a sort of... Oh, like a Sherlock Holmes cough sweet. I bet he's, he'd be addicted to these. Dr. Haversham's throat revitalizers. <laughs> Yeah, he'd bring himself off the opium and the laudanum and onto one of these. This is horrible. It tastes like shoes. I don't like it at all, actually. <laughs> it does taste like shoes. Yeah. Metal shoes. Mm. Imagine some clogs made of like, copper. Yeah, like an orthopaedic <laughs> shoe from sort of pre-World War One. That had just been cleaned with Brasso and they haven't quite got the Brasso on. Yeah, but and turned into a sweet and I'm eating it. And it's quite rough. Yeah. So it's got oh. sand in it. <laughs> Oh, God, this is a bad feature. <laughs> <laughs> but a great jingle. Thanks, Ollie and Will. Uh, we enjoyed ticking off that taste. Ow. Um, uh, Dave and Vin, uh, there's... Uh, oh, Vin's, Vin's popped one in, and he's crunching it. You're a cruncher. 
Not yet. I've crunched yeah. it now. Have you crunched it? Yeah, it tastes like flowers. It's horrible. <laughs> uh, so, more of that, maybe. What did you call stinging nettles as a kid? Stinging nettles? Oh, I called them stingies. <laughs> Why did you say that? Because it tastes <laughs> a bit like stinging nettles. How do you know that? Bad summer, about <laughs> 20 years ago. Right now, it's bumper pack today because we're double rolling features. It's Tick Off a Taste. And appearing tonight on. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste. Take off a taste. That's right, team. It's the feature no one asked us to do or continue with. It's take off a taste. We have had a wonderful taste sent in by Jamie for us to tick off. He says, Dear Ellis, John, Dave, and Vin, I have sent you some jelly beans for tick off a taste. These beans are bean boozled. Some beans taste great, some awful, but the good beans and bad beans look the same. Please take a look at the flavours. None are denim flavoured. Sorry, Vin. <laughs> um, I need to cut in at this point, Jamie, because this is an idea stolen wholesale from uh, Bertie Bott's Every Flavoured Beans in Harry Potter that uh, the the corporate overlords at Jelly Beans have uh, made their own version of. But I just wanted to point that out. Just wanted to point that out. They've put a twist on it. They've put a little, they're, they're the same colour. Anyway, he says, As I am a laugh, I get these out at parties. They're put in a bowl and we ask quiz questions to one another. If you get the answer wrong... I like the to... sound of Jamie. Yeah, yeah, he's a legend. If you get the answer wrong, you have to pick a bean. It could be <laughs> lime or lawn clippings, popcorn or rotten egg. It's all a gamble. If you get the answer right, you can nominate another person to pick a bean. This could be incorporated in Tick of a Taste. Your call. Baby wipes are particularly vile. Oh, now, I'm guessing that's a flavour oh and he's God. not just an opinion he yeah. has. And to be honest, though, you could argue that revels are like that. Um, so anyway, thanks for all the positive darkness, guys. You're all legends of the hammer, capital letters, and provide us with pockets of vibe lozenges. <laughs> OK, thanks, man. That's uh, from Jamie Walker, age 37 and three quarters. <laughs> P.S. May you always have plenty of coleslaw. What a lovely legend. So, Ellis, your first taste <laughs> yeah. is you have to pick a white one. OK. So this will either be coconut or baby wipes. Oh. What flavour is it, Ellis? <laughs> I hope it's baby wipes. Oh, my giddy aunt, it's baby wipes. <laughs> yeah, it's baby wipes! Hey, hey, Jamie, oh. Ellis has got the ah. worst one straight away because he's a fool. And also, obviously, I have baby. I have thousands of baby wipes in my house because I have a baby. Good. And that is how they smell. And that is how I imagine they tasted, and that is absolutely disgusting. Okay, my turn. It tastes like nappy vibe. Just to point out, these were also sent in by a different listener to the Chris Moyles show. Yeah, huge coincidence, but we thought we'd do it anyway. Well, we've got to do it. Jamie Jamie sent them in to us. It tastes like a bath bomb. Okay, I've spun a a dark one, and mine is either chocolate pudding or canned dog food. Oh, God, I'll be sick, though. Oh, come on. Oh, please. What if there are no chocolate pudding ones in there? Please eat dog food. I don't, you're not allowed no, to sniff it, mate. It. Mate, you've got to straight in. Oh, dog food, disgusting. Oh, he spat it out his nose in your oh, hands. I was going to be sick. I, was, I would have been sick. That's yeah, my worst so nightmare. Good radio. Oh, it's I not need, actual dog food. I need another one to get the taste out of my mouth. Oh, God, I hope this God, is, is tutti fruity and not socks. <laughs> Please say it socks. Oh. Hard, to, hard to tell. Yeah, I mean that's the real nightmare, isn't it? Uh, if if it's that's too too, if that's tutti frutti, they really need to work on their tutti frutti. And if it's if socks, socks not... if the socks are clean. Mm. Okay, I need another one to take that out of my mouth. Oh, I wish you'd eaten dog food and been sick on the radio. Yeah. That would have got us oh. award. Oh, that's lawn clippings. <laughs> They're all bad. Remember to let Al play, John. Oh yeah. Sorry, I'm just no, get... I'm not sure I want to play because they all seem to be bad, and it's quite fun watching John spit right, sweets into yeah. his hand. You got this one. Okay. Is it peach or vomit? <laughs> You're joking. <laughs> oh, peach? my sweet gizzards. That is... Is that peach? I cut it off, peach, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Anyway, thanks so much, Jamie. What a lot of fun we had with those tastes we ticked off. The dog food one was the worst because it's one of my worst nightmares. What, eating dog food? Yeah. Uh, what, did you never do that at parties to impress girls? Uh, no. No, no, me, me. <laughs> Bizarrely, I did weirder things to impress girls. <laughs> Ellis James and John Robbins. Radio X. John is this real sucker for punishment. He's still, he's still eating those tick off a taste sweets, hoping to get, was it chocolate pudding? Well, no, because one of the flavours, it's either berry blue, so yeah. like raspberry, or toothpaste. Ah. Well, toothpaste is mint. Yeah. So I figured that's your way in. 
Yes. You can sort of guarantee a nice flavour. Have you ever tried a toothpaste that isn't mint? Like a strawberry flavoured one. It is so disorientating. Mm. There's that um, one that looks like it's called Eurythmol or something from the past. And it's all Victorian. And it's actually a sort of, um, it's not aniseed flavoured, but it's very medical tasting. Oh, I wouldn't want to wash my... It's red as well, so it's oh like your gums God. are bleeding. I wouldn't want to brush my teeth with blackjacks. No. Yeah, which is, uh, although aniseed, great flavour. No, oh, no, not no. for me. Oh, no. come on. No, 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 no. Get involved, Dave and John. <laughs> Sambuca's fennel. I can all sod off. <laughs> <laughs> it grows all sorts. Yeah, the push. Lovely Bertie Bassett. I'm John Robbins, sitting in for Ricky Wilson, and it's time for us to do a feature that me and Ellis do on our Saturday afternoon show. It's called Take Off a Taste. And appearing tonight on... Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste. Take off a taste. That's right, team. It is the most original and complex feature ever devised in the history of commercial radio. Ellis and I tick off tastes, uh, things we haven't tasted before, we consume and then give direct feedback to you, the listener. Uh, Now, this week... I've been sent in three taste tickers uh, by uh, Bruno, uh, regular contributor to the show, Bruno Vincent. And um, Bruno has written us a lovely letter. He says, all three items are best eaten with crumpets. So I've supplied you with a pack brought today, Friday. Aside from the crumpets, all items are non-perishable and would probably outlast a nuclear winter. So um, we have microwaved the crumpets due to not being able to toast them here at uh, Radio X Towers. Um, Now... The first taste that Bruno has sent us to tick off, uh, producer Vin, I have already ticked off in my life. Which one is that? Uh, It's the Gentleman's Relish. Oh, I'm excited by it because I don't think I've ever had it before. So we're going to kick off with producer Vin tasting some Gentleman's Relish. Now, sniggering aside, uh, Gentleman's Relish is actually actually a form of anchovy paste. Um, uh, Producer Vin is now accessing the Gentleman's Relish. Well, am I? That's the thing. He can't get the lid off. Don't know what to do, Jim. You sort of just twist or turn it or pop it off. Here we go. I'm now accessing the gentleman's relish. How do you get into this? Oh, we should have done this beforehand. What if you have to get it off with some kind of hammer? Oh, I think it's for, it's completely sealed. Yeah, I'm very confused by that. How do you get... Well, that's not working. Um, okay, uh, maybe the gentleman's relish will have to wait until we can work out how to get into the... <laughs> Blumen packet. It says, once opened, keep refrigerated. That's not what I need to know, mate. I need to know how to get in it. Uh, if anyone knows on short notice how to access <laughs> <laughs> a little tub of gentleman's relish, do text in with urgency. Uh, you might just have to slam a knife into the lid, mate. Should we go for the others first? Yeah, let's do the others then. So, oh dear, I've just seen what they are. Fermented bean curd and Szechuan pickled chilli. Okay, load me up. Uh, so the the, the uh, oh dear that doesn't oh the, that's not a nice colour it's not a nice anything I don't want to really have to prepare that um, <laughs> this is the uh, fermented bean curd Vin will you smell it because if it's going to make me be sick uh, I don't want to eat it it's great radio John though thanks well what being sick live on air <laughs> Travis is now sort of retching a bit can I just have some pickled chili please to start us off. Oh, no, I want you to eat. This smells good. <laughs> what is this, like the fermented bean curd? Yeah. I don't want to smell it. I've got a very sensitive gag reflex. Um, just, oh, no, I, <laughs> no, I'm going to be, no, I can't go anywhere. I'd want that. Just that pickled chilli, please. I don't want to retch live on air again. Ooh, it's go, it gets in the back of your throat, that. Um, yeah, that's much more up my alleyway. Could I'm just going to have the Szechuan pickled chilli on some microwaved gone-off crumpet <laughs> to stop me being ill. Oh, it's in the studio. Can you close that lid and throw that the jar into the sea? Because that's the worst smell. It's like a bin. It's like a, a milk bin. You know when you pass a bin on the busy high street in a summer's day and it's full of milk and you just want to die? Mmm. Oh, the pickled chilli is an absolute treat. Mmm, mmm, very pleasing. 
it's a bit like the sort of uh, pickle you get in some Indian restaurants with poppadoms, if you're lucky. Sometimes it's lime pickle, sometimes they do those sort of jars of pickle chilies. I'm going to finish the rest of this jar today. I'm not, however, eating that fermented bean curd. Is this the bean curd? Is this what I've been handed? Yeah. Oh, Vin's got it. It looks like, um, it looks like hummus. It looks all right. It does look like hummus. It smells like unthinkable death. Oh. What's, oh. The, what's the taste, Vin? Oh. How are you not being sick? <laughs> mm. He's sort of smiling. No. No, I'm not. What does it taste of? No. Um, metal. <laughs> metal. <laughs> horrible, horrible metal. Horrible metal. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, well, I think you're a, you're uh, you're a braver man than I. Because uh, mm. yeah, the lid's back on that now, and it should be put in some kind of lead-lined coffin. Oh, I don't like it, John. I don't like it either, mate. But that's what the people need on tick off a taste. They need us. Oh, I'm still in the air. Oh my god, it's in my head. <laughs> <laughs> is it? It's not spicy, is it? No, it's not spicy. I don't. Know, I don't know what that feeling is. What's the flavour of the ferment? The it's metal, John. It's bad just, metal. Just bad metal. Okay. Um, so, team, if you want to send us a taste to be ticked off, oh, I've got pickle chilli on my trousers. Um, if you want to send us a taste to be ticked off, you're more than welcome, but we may well... I've had to turn that down due to decency issues. Thanks, Bruno. You've certainly stunk up the studio an absolute treat. John Robbins. Radio. Radio X. Radio X. That was the verb with Lucky Man. Um, apologies. We are still recovering from today's tick off a taste. We're airing the studio. We finally gained access to the gentleman's relish, thanks to Gentleman James. Um, what you have to do is peel off the label, and then you just sort of twist and open, but the, the, the join is behind the label, which is confusing, but clearly a Victorian opening tactic they've decided to keep. Um, uh, uh, intern Travis had some of the fermented bean curd and was um, unable to swallow it due to his state. Uh, we've now placed it in the fridge and may leave it as a prank for producer Dave uh, when he gets in on Monday. I mean, that horrible... You know you've had something you don't like and you know you're going to be fine, but your whole body is tense. Well, the gentleman's relish is actually nice, but well, it, it hasn't taken the edge off. But who would have thought Victorian anchovies would be yeah. used to cleanse the palate? That's how strong that that <laughs> awful bean Jesus. curd was. That was FF, Franz Ferdinand with Take Me Out. And were you to be taken out, folks, maybe to a restaurant, might you select something from the menu that was new to you and <laughs> therefore be able to join us in Tick Off A Taste? And appearing tonight on... Tick Off A Taste, Tick Off A Taste. Tick Off A Taste, Tick Off A Taste. Tick Off A Taste, Tick Off A Taste. Tick Off A Taste. Tick off a taste. <laughs> That's right, folks. It's your favourite feature and ours. Um, I didn't know that you did that final tick off the taste live. <laughs> <laughs> um, we take off tastes. That's what we do. That's what we're here to do. It's what we're paid to do. It's in our contract. If you send in a taste, we've got to tick it off. Oh, I've got a taste for you to tick off, John. Oh! I brought you a taste. You brought me a taste? Yeah. From what realm does your taste originate? So, um, I know, I know. as we've discussed, you're a fan of Gloucester Services. Big fan, big supporter of Gloucester yeah. Services. So I mentioned that I was a fan of Gloucester Services on mm -hmm. a, a different radio channel, mm -hmm. um, and I received a hamper. What? I received a hamper. From Gloucester Gate Services. Received a hamper from <laughs> Gloucester Gate Services for mentioning them. For, I, I would. I, it, it wasn't. It wasn't. A, it was. It wasn't a kickback. What? What did you say? I just. I was talking about being on tour. Yeah. And they said, "What do you like about being on tour?" And I said, "I like Gloucester Services." Uh, Before I know, I've got my own tea towel. I am feeling a lot of feelings. <laughs> <laughs> I made a special trip to visit Gloucester Gate Services. Oh, we've all done that, mate. But then posted my video reactions online, which got me into the Gloucester local news. Did it? I've been contacted by Gloucester Services on many occasions. Have you? I was tweeting about T-Bay while Twitter was in its infancy, owned by Westmoreland Farm Shop. And let me ask you this. How do you dry your cups? <laughs> With a dehumidifier. <laughs> <laughs> but how, why... 
Foster Gate Services. Why haven't you sent me a hamper? Well, do you want to try something from the no, hamper? No, you're then? tainted with deceit. There's some curveballs within the hamper. So. Well, I hope there's some tweets to at Gloucester Services. Is that what there is? I don't know. I hope there's some tweets asking for hamper justice for Robins. Hamper justice for Robins. I got in the local... That sounds I like people are trying to so stop justice for Robins. <laughs> <laughs> Could you please hamper justice for Robins? <laughs> Okay, then. No, and... Mm, <laughs> I'm really annoyed, actually. Okay, so you don't want to try some BBQ jam? Yeah, I want to try some... Habanero B- and pineapple. Yeah, I want to try some BBQ jam. Three chilies on the hot scale. Oh, yes, please. Yeah? I've, uh... Did they send you any crackers to taste it? No, with? I brought your slice of bread from home. <laughs> really? <laughs> No, it's all right. I put it in a sandwich bag. How have you got a sandwich bag? <laughs> Are you a mother what? from the past? <laughs> Okay, I'm going to try it. Thanks. So there just to confirm, folks. Oh, Josh, you you shop for very high-end independent bread. I love it. I love a nice bread. Yeah. Where did you get this? Are from? you going to tick off two tastes at once? I've had bread before. <laughs> I got that from a new uh, a new bakery on um, Columbia Road. Okay, so this is barbecue jam from the celebrity loving Gloucester Gate services who don't value the hard earned time and energy of a small digital indie DJ broadcaster. Don't, don't bite the hand that is about to literally feed you, John. <laughs> okay, so it says three chilies hot. My experience of this sort of three chilies hot is it just tastes like sort of normal. What I'd say is don't take your anger at the makers out on the taste. No, I won't. Mmm. I'm ticking off the toast. Mmm. <laughs> is that good? It's lovely. Is it? Do you know what's good about uh, this BBQ jam? Yeah. It tastes of chilies, but it doesn't... It's not got... It's got a bit of heat, but it actually has got the wonderful flavour of chilies, which is often oh, nice. overlooked in hot sauces. Oh, that's very nice. Mm. And you've got, your, you've got your ale. That came from the same hamper. Yeah, it came the same... Did that come from the hamper as well? Gloucester Gate, please send me a hamper <laughs> full of ales, no meat. Please. Why why you got in the local paper? <laughs> I was not I was nice to you. I don't, they, they haven't I mean they haven't the ship hasn't sailed yet. I mean they've not been they've not done anything bad to me. They've no. not sent me a hamper. Well, you continue eating. <laughs> Should we play a song or something? It's really nice. Yeah? Oh I know this one. Stone Roses, isn't it? It's all for one, mate. Strap in, because it's time for... And appearing tonight on... Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste. Tick off a taste. That's right, everyone. It's time for Tick Off a Taste, uh, where we tick off tastes that you send to us here at Radio X. Uh, now, um, what was the taste last week? Oh, Josh brought in tastes that he got in his Gloucester Services hamper. Don't ask, Ellis. Um, <laughs> however, this week we've been sent in a taste by Ian. Ian says, I am a police officer in Daffod Powys Police. Oh, lovely. Yes, please. Uh, geographically, the biggest constabulary in the country. You're not wrong. Uh, also, the stars of Traffic Cops, Motorway Cops, and other such programmes. Yes. Um, while in the station a few weeks back, a member of staff asked me if I would like to try a wild black ant as a nutritious snack. I thought she had lost her mind, but no, you can actually buy these. Obviously, I politely declined trying these ants as I'm not a madman, but I thought, <laughs> I know some men who love to tickle their taste buds. I have attached the t- tasty treat for you to sample in a possible tick of a taste feature. I get the feeling Ellis will be less forthcoming to try this than John. Well, Ian, that's where you're wrong, because as a card-carrying pescatarian, I'm afraid, luckily, ants are off the menu. Free pass. <laughs> I have got a free hall pass this due to my strongly held pro-ant beliefs. So, so, so basically, I'm describe it, Ellis. They look, it looks like... Ants. It looks like ants. Uh, crossed with caviar. Now, mm. do you know? Do we know which sort of countries or continents that people eat ants? Where, where, where is he buying? Where did he buy these ants from? Does what does it say? say on the packet? Oh yes, uh, crunchy critters, wild black ants, acidic in taste. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> and hailed for their health benefits, wild black ants are an ancient and classic Chinese favourite. Ah. Ingredients: dehydrated wild black ants. 
uh, 100%. <laughs> it's just, it's exactly what it says there's on no, the tin There's of no ants. preservatives, there's no E numbers. Um, for allergens, the ingredient's in bold, and the only ingredient is wild black ants, which is, which is in bold. <laughs> if you're allergic to ants, you shouldn't be ordering a bag of ants on no. the internet. But it smells like bad pet shops. Yeah. It's a horrible smell. Yeah. Yeah, it does, does smell like bad pet shops. Uh, it smells like a pet shop in a market. Yeah. Uh, that said, um, I don't know if I'm allergic to black ants, because uh, Mum and Dad kept it really simple. So I Ellis mean. has got a spoon and um, a jar. of. We've tweeted also the image of the ants on a Twitter. Here we go, then. Ooh. Oh. I'm not sure I'm oh, fully comfortable with this. Oh. What do they taste of? It's crunchy. Yeah, like... they crunchy? Yeah, like bad gravel. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, jeez. What do they Louise. taste of? <laughs> Jesus, Louise. <laughs> <laughs> They're all over your tongue. Uh, Wait, are they acidic? Yeah. Like what? Like, uh, like vitamin C? It tastes exactly like how you imagine an ant would taste. <laughs> really? So earthy? Ah, <sighs> oh, that, did you hear that? Yeah. I, I think, I, I think I've lost a feeling. Um, oh, they're crunchy. They taste like if you li if you licked a sort of a rabbit hutch or something in a, <laughs> in, a in a pet shop in a covered market. Oh, mm. I'm sure, some pet shops in covered markets are fine. <laughs> that said, uh, I can feel myself strengthen. I can feel <laughs> my my ex. I mean, it's an alternative therapy, so my my eczema seems to be clearing up. Um, oh, don't need to wear glasses anymore. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No, <laughs> is, is the in, con in conclusion, no. Do you want me to console you with yeah. a, a line from the Oxford Book of 20th Century Verse? Yeah, and Vin, can you Google health benefits of ants? This is from a, this poem caught my ants. eye, Ellis, that Georgie sent in this book. Oh, you don't get this in absolute, do you? It's a poem about Stanley Matthews, <laughs> <laughs> Ellis. Yeah? It's a poem about Stanley Matthews. God, I've got ants in my mouth. You love Stanley oh, Matthews. Yes, I do. Listen yeah. to this. Expressionless <sighs> enchanter, yeah. weaving as on strings, conceptual patterns to a private music. <sighs> Heard only by him to those slowly emerging theme, he rehearses steps, soloist in compulsions of a dream. Ah, oh, he was a vegetarian. Was he? <laughs> I think so. He, he, I know he didn't eat anything on a Monday. <laughs> well, that's not a vegetarian. That's... <laughs> I could be getting my Stanley Matthews facts mixed up. Can I have a cup, can I have a strong cup of, of cup of tea? <laughs> This is disgusting. <laughs> is it? Absolutely vile. Well, there you go, folks. If you <sighs> want to send us a, t a taste to tick off, or some Fred Perry merchandise, or some lovely bottled ales and T-shirts, as we've had <sighs> one text, you're welcome to send them to Radio X at Global Radio, Leicester Square, WC2H7LA. Is that it? Did I just remember it? Oh. WC2H7LA. FAO Robbins and James. <laughs> Radio X. Ellis James and John Robbins. Radio X. Taste, tick of the taste. Tick of the taste, tick of the taste. Tick of the taste. Tick of the taste. Tick of the taste. Come on, Cast. If Cast had, had been taken part in Tick of the Taste, I think they'd have been more chilled. Yeah, I think so. Great song, though. Just would have been upbeat stuff if they'd been eating live ants and spicy sauces. And Well, folks, guess what... Uh, guess what our taste is called this week, Ellis? I don't know. Uh, bum sauce? <laughs> no, oh. it's not called bum sauce. Good Lord. <laughs> the fact that that was the first place your brain went to. Well, given, first and only place. <laughs> given that we were talking about uh, the gift of shame for oh, yeah. too long earlier, uh, quite fittingly, the taste we've been sent in this week is called Instant Regret. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Now, uh, oh. this has been sent in. I love... Are it, you going to eat this? We're both going to eat it. Instant regret and the gift of shame. What a... What a show. What a double act. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, this has been sent in by... Do bear in mind my fragile state and that my body is disintegrating and that I'm not the man I used to be and that I'm feeling profound shame. I mean... Uh, is this is this wise? Yeah, oh, it's oh, I tell you what, be would, would be wise, Ellis. Are you turning your phone off? My girlfriend texted me to say that I shouldn't eat some any instant regret. Uh, you need to eat some instant regret, mate. All right. Um, so I um, think that I'd jump off a cliff if you told me to. I think you have that power over me, John. Oh, <laughs> you better make sure you never cross me. <laughs> um, so uh, I've got the email, but for some reason the 
blooming name isn't on the blooming email. I think it's because the, just the text, the email has been s sent out, but I would like to thank the listener who sent this in. Um, he or she says, um, hopefully at some point soon a delivery will arrive at Radio X Towers, addressed to your fine selves with a product I think would fit perfectly into Tick of a Taste. I realise that hashtag Project Spice was pretty much completed, but I truly think that it can't be fully completed until you both try the chilli chocolate I have sent oh. to you, called Instant Regret. How spicy is it? 6.4 million Scovilles, mate. Oh, my I can God. confirm that it is indeed instant regret that everyone in my office felt after trying it. As a person who enjoys hot sauce as much as the next man, I thought some chilli chocolate would be a nice afternoon treat. Oh. How wrong I was! Okay. I'm interested to see just how strong Ellis's palate has become and whether he'll be able to manage to well, eat any without regressing to a child. Unfortunately, um, Project Spice was going so well. I ate Vindaloo and it was fine. I had a couple of takeaway madrasses and it was great. But I haven't eaten anything spicy for a couple couple of months now, so I, I, I think I might have regressed to my sort of West Whalian palate, where it was all ham and parsley sauce and pensioner food. Thanks, um, man. The back of the packet <laughs> says, this bar contains absurdly high amounts of chilli and is likely to cause a horrendous burning sensation. <laughs> Do not put in direct contact with eyes or sensitive organs. <laughs> okay. Why, how, where would you put... New, you wouldn't get nude with, <laughs> with something called instant regret. <laughs> yeah, it's like chill out naked in a hammock in your back garden. Right, so we're going to have half a half a square each. Uh, mm -hmm. How are you with hot sauce, Devers? Hit me. Ooh. This I could. reckon I can take it on. Uh, this... And Michael, intern Michael. Not so good. Not so good. Because <laughs> he's Irish. It's the Celt. It's the Celt. See, we all. We, I bet you. Did you eat a lot of hoops as a kid? Potatoes. Potatoes. Yeah, of course you did. Right. Okay. So the instant regret has been apportioned between the three regretters. This could sort my hangover out once and for all. Michael, as a non-regretist, <laughs> if we all die, you will have to broadcast alone for the next twenty-one minutes. That's a scary thought. Hey, you'd be great. Oh, be excellent. Thanks for the compliments. You'd be saying. brilliant. Okay. Have you seen uh, Wayne's World when Garth has to present on his own? You'll be yeah. better than that. <laughs> let one. Okay, let's regret. One, two, three. Let's regret. Oh! oh God. It's immediate. <laughs> oh, tastes like chocolate. Mm. Oh. oh, my. Good, good grief. Oh, there's the regret kicking in. <laughs> wow, it's oh. a lovely chocolate. <laughs> Concentrate on the chocolate. Concentrate on the chocolate. Seem out a bit. Oh, weird. yeah. It's all on my gums. It's clearing. I can see the colour in your face is changing. Oh, <laughs> I can just see Queen's back castle oh. flashing before my eyes. Good on my Queen nose. one, Queen two. <sighs> ah. Sheer heart attack. A night at the opera. Day of the races. Jazz. <laughs> oh, it's nice though, in a mad way. <laughs> Oh, no, I don't like it. It is instant regret. I regret I, it now. I don't like the past. Let's I don't like play the past a now. track. <laughs> my, I'm filling up with water. Am I fluid? This is Boys That Sing by Viola Beach. Oh! That was Viola Beach with Boys That Sing. You are listening to Radio X, and we are in a post-regret world. Um, Ellis has drunk a pint of milk. Uh, Devers has been sort of punching his fists on the desk. And I, Robbins, have dealt with it with a quiet dignity. Um, I rinse my mouth out with hot water, which is the best-known cure... Um, Ellis has also tried to counteract the instant regret with more chocolate, but normal chocolate, and is now eating... What are you eating, Ellis? Oh, hey! A bit of a sandwich. <laughs> He's, Ellis is sort of getting flashbacks. I can honestly say that is some of the hottest... That's some of the hottest produce I, I've ever tasted. Um, it would be very... Um, intern uh, Michael made a very good point. If you needed to make sure you woke up ever and say you set your alarm... But next to your alarm, there was a cube of instant regret. You could just eat it, and it would force you out of bed. Anyway, I need now to tell you <laughs> about that you have the chance to win a thousand nicker. And it's thanks to the Infinity Q30, the car that gives you a different kind of luxury. You can find out more at radiox.co.uk and take the challenge of our music quiz to win yourself that £100,000. I'm pretty sure the wonderful people at Infinity, born to challenge, don't usually want their 
promotions to be read out by someone who's just taken a dose of instant regret. <laughs> but let you tell me. Oh. Let me tell you. Let you tell me. <laughs> let me tell you, Infinity, I think you guys are the best. And I want everyone oh. to head to radiox.co.uk uh. to find out how to win 1,000 sweet knicker. Ah! No need to apologise, Nirvana. You've given us some really great tunes. Uh, however, I think we are owed apologies from the person who sent us in instant regret That's chocolate. the worst one. It, it was, wasn't it? That's the worst one. And I'm angry. <laughs> yeah, Alice was angry. Absolutely horrible. We, we've tweeted a picture of him recovering. It's, it, it's made his hangover worse because he made the rookie error of applying cold milk, whereas he should have used the expert uh, solution, which is uh, rinsing hot water around your mouth, which I did, and I am now capable of broadcasting. Uh, so check out the Radio X Twitter feed for photos of Ellis uh, displaying instant regret. Um, I've also tweeted a photo of how messy Ellis is when he's hung over as a broadcaster. <laughs> um, there's there's rappers everywhere, not the musicians. I was sad and I'm angry now. Yeah. I've moved on. I've moved up a gear from sad to angry. Well, this is that's that what was absolutely horrible, that chocolate. That's what happened when I gave you 100% pain in my oh, flat yeah. years ago. You have to be off your head to eat that, as if... <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's a, it's a thing. No one eats it as pleasure. No one sits on the bus eating half a bar of things. <laughs> <to regret. laughs> yeah. Can we pop off for these oh, services in front for of some sex instant in the city. regret? <laughs> what are you getting, Jan, for Christmas? Some instant regret. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a it's a sort of a um, it's a challenge food, isn't it? Yeah. Or a prank food, and you could really oh, ruin cruel, someone's that day. Would be so cruel it to would do be. that. Uh, we're, we're, give it some to your daughter and film it and put it on YouTube. I often, uh, I often, uh, that's one of my nightmares actually, is that she eats spicy food by mistake. Because obviously she wouldn't know, it would be awful. Oh, can you imagine? I mean, that must have happened to someone, someone's poor child, but... <laughs> someone's poor child. Have you seen those videos of uh, people giving lemons to their babies? On YouTube. I'm not really sure uh, about that. Is that cool? I don't think that is cool. I don't think that's cool. I think it's cruel. <laughs> Though I do like the videos of babies going through tunnels. <laughs> um, anyway, team, uh, the podcast going to be up soon, and we're going to read out much more correspondence on the podcast. And also, there's the Keep It Session sessions at the end of the podcast, where we introduce you to exciting and uh, obscure sounds that are tickling our earbuds uh, on our iPods. So, thank you very much for listening. We'll be with you next week. Completely lost interest in the radio. Who, who was? I'm so annoyed at <laughs> All right. my mouth. Try and step up a gear. Oh. Um, so anyway, Ow. we've given you the gift of shame and instant regret. So goodbye from I, Robbins, and he, James. It's time to take off a taste. And appearing tonight on... Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste. Take off a taste. Um, They'll never stop making me laugh, I don't think. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, uh, so, our tastes today, uh, team, uh, come from the Italian Riviera, courtesy of Mr. Producer Dave Masterman. Now, Mr. Producer Dave Masterman, yeah. he, he's not a fan of foreign travel. It's all different. Yeah. It's scary. Yeah. He went to Pompeii, he was telling us earlier, and there weren't enough bodies there. <laughs> there weren't enough oh, bodies. Yeah, well, no. I wouldn't expect he loads of dead bodies. There were only two. I thought they'd be like, all like families. <laughs> Just two bodies. <laughs> Didn't say it like that. No, I was it like, Anna, this is a waste. <laughs> Let's go back to the swimming pool. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a dis... Like a dis How many dead bodies did it say in the guidebook? <laughs> <laughs> um, so they don't have cereal for their breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> they, have, they, have, they have their own Italian food. It's horrible. Oh, no. uh, so, Dave, you brought us back some taste. Where did you go in? We haven't really talked about your trip. No, well, I started off in Rome, but then I went to the Amalfi Coast. It's hard Coast. to buy a cup of tea there, isn't it, in Rome? It is. Didn't get a single cup of tea. And then <laughs> then moved on to the Amalfi Coast. Right. What's the Amalfi Coast? Uh, it's like a hot stock part. <laughs> 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 it's, it's it was like bread, but not like bread. <laughs> it's near Naples, near Naples, which is like a lovely, hot, sweaty Manchester. And it's a lovely uh, cliffed area of Italy, which is uh, very flashy. Very so nice. a coast. It's a coast, 
but in the cliffs. Right. So we, all the hotels are built into the rock and stuff, so it's very pretty, very picturesque. How long do you reckon it took them to do that? <laughs> I don't know. We did actually just, ask just that question. You know that. <laughs> um, so, what right. did you, what have you brought for us? So, Dave? the Amalfi Coast is famous for its uh, limoncello. Oh, right. yes, please. So we'll Ice a, cold. Yes, exactly. So yeah. we had a lot of that whilst we're out there as you finish your meal. You're around but, at your friend's house, they've got some limoncello, they give you some for a treat. Oh, thanks for the limoncello. They go to bed, you know where the limoncello <laughs> is. <laughs> yes. But I've brought back some limoncello chocolate. Ooh, has it got booze in it? I don't know. Am I gonna be, are we going to be able to broadcast for the last? Yeah, I don't minutes? think it's, it's going to be. It's not. Yeah, it's not going to stop me broadcasting. But bear in mind that my t- tolerance for alcohol is that of a new dad. But I'm going to slab don't. of this and pass out. I don't think it should really be turned into chocolate. So I'm hoping it'd be quite an interesting taste. So John, there we go. It's yellow. It's bright looks yellow. Like, yeah. Looks like um, um, a Milky Bar. Yeah, it's sort of yellow like the sun mm. on a warm egg yolk. Finn, do you want one? Yeah, go on. Go, so, are we ready to tick? Lemon chocolate. Lemon chocolate. Here we go okay, then. We're ticking. Down the hatch. We're ticking. Oh. Mmm. It tastes like a French fancy. Mm. Does it, babe? It does yeah. taste like a French fancy, Dave. I want to say it's 16 of them in front of uh, How Do They Do That? Mmm. <laughs> 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 I ate 16 French fancies and found out how air traffic control works. <laughs> A remarkably, he wasn't him. down. <laughs> <laughs> he was, he was having, was a, good that, night, having yeah. a good night. <laughs> I really like that, Dave. It's the sort of thing. Mm. Tastes a bit like a milky bar made of lemon, yeah. citrusy milky bar. But it's the sort of thing you would eat too much of it and then never be able to go anywhere yeah. near lemon again. My, I use lemon kitchen spray, right. and it tastes a yeah. bit like my kitchen when I've cleaned it. Um, you t- you lick your kitchen. <laughs> no, no, but sort of. The lemon, you know, I, I imbue lemon when I've got a clean kitchen. Um, well, that was nice. It tastes a bit like French fancies, which, again, I'm a past master at them. Oh, I can't eat them anymore because I uh, I overindulged in the mid-90s. <coughs> All of the Brit poppers were taking amphetamines, but back in Kamal then, during my GCSE years, it was mainly Mr. Kipling-based <laughs> hedonism. X. Ellis James and John Robbins. Radio X. Recovering from what was actually quite a mild tick off a taste. This time last week, we'd tried, what was it called? Insanity chocolate. Or <laughs> In- instant regret. Instant regret. I was actually unable to do this link because <laughs> yeah. it was so spicy. And I quite like my spicy food, but that was. If the maker is listening, have a word with yourself. Yeah, it was genuinely unpleasant. Yeah. And folks, it's time for. And appearing tonight on. Tick off a taste, 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 tick off a taste. That's right, folks. It's time for tick off a taste, where Ellis and I sample morsels from far and wide that are a little outre. Spices from the east. Outre entrees. Um, out oh, yeah. there, starters, uh, is the translation. Uh, and this week is a bit of a smoulders bold, uh, because we've got, uh, <laughs> some, some snacks that Vin's brother brought back from the Orient. You're listening to Ellis James and Greg Wallace on Radio X. <laughs> so you're telling me, <laughs> if you don't arrive at this factory on time, the UK doesn't have any cool flakes. <laughs> I love him. I love him. I love the man. Don't tell me they time your toilet breaks. Unbelievable. Uh, Vin, what is uh, your brother's name? Because we would like to thank him. His name is Rajiv. Rajiv Joshi. I would like to thank you for the smorgasbord of treats. Cheers, Rajo. Anyone call him Rajo? No, I never do that. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Sorry. <laughs> Um, uh, so, uh, Vin has taken a photo because we opened, so the first snack is Japanese rice crackers, but they, cont- they contain within them little fish, um, which look quite disturbing, uh, our crazy Japanese cousins, um, <laughs> but no different to, uh, a, a sort of a dried anchovy, I would wager. So, Ellis, uh, you take yours and I'll take mine. Okay. Danny Hatch, wallop. I've, uh, I've positioned mine between two rice crackers. Oh, no, you should just eat it on its own. Oh, eat it on your own if you're not careful. Oh, ca- right. careful. <laughs> if you're not from Corfu. Yeah. Oh, Ellis has gone straight in. What's oh, the vibe? What was that? <laughs> it's a dried fish. Oh, that... It tastes like space food. 
It does taste like space. When I when I'm on space station Mia because of a horrendous administrative mix-up. Mia, that is a very dated reference. It is. Or one of the more modern space stations. Bet you haven't been interested in space since year eight. Absolutely bang on. It's like you can read my mind, John. Um, St- space station Mia. Are there are there better ones? I mean, the International Space Station that my the, dad worked on. Wow. I mean, Apollo ended in tears, didn't it? One of them did. Maybe yeah. two. Uh, you, can't keep, you can't keep track these days. Um, next one is one that I suspected might be made of poo, um, but that turned out to be an internet hoax <laughs> about the Japanese, which I, I, I think is racist. So it's sort of like, um, it looks a bit like a, a sort of a moister biscotti that you get, you know, those slices of hard biscuits you get in coffee shops. Which I'm just going to dive right in. Mm. Oh, Oh, it's got a not a pleasant texture. Imagine bread that melts in the mouth. <laughs> mm. There was a science exam, a science test we did at school where we had to keep bread in our mouths for ages until it turned into sugar. Did anyone else do this? No. Yeah, oh, yeah. I remember that. Good. Yes, thank you, Finn. I was about to doubt my Does education. Does bread turn then. into sugar in your mouth? Yes, if you if you if you suck on bread for long enough. Right. Basically, a double lesson. Oh, come on, Ellis, you eat that. What oh, do you think of the texture? Wow. What is that? We'll get on to that. Ellis, what do you think of the sort of biscotti? Yeah, space sweets. Space sweets. Now, next... I'm, 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 I'm at Space Station's Mia's t- tuck shop. <laughs> <laughs> um, so next uh, is one Dave's looking forward to. It's a sort of an individually wrapped Kit Kat from Japan, but you open it and it's green, the colour of, um, uh, of mushy peas. So I'm, <laughs> I'm diving straight in. Hmm. It tastes like a bad Kit Kat that's melted and reformed about eight times. Okay. Give me a bit of this, I can... Oh, that's genuinely unpleasant. <laughs> Just tastes like the sort of chocolate base before they add any flavours. We would also like to say thank you for Robin, who sent us in some chilli sweets. Uh, they say, I brought you back some chilli sweets from Keswick. They're not terribly spicy, but they are a bit addictive. You're right, Robin, they are addictive, and unfortunately we couldn't resist tucking into them for tick of a taste. Um, um, so apologies for that, but they are very lovely and nice and spicy. You know when, as a kid, when you go to your friend's house to play... PC but, games because you haven't got a PC? Uh, yeah, yep. but but their parents shop at a different supermarket to yours and oh, their foods are yeah. slightly different. Blue ribboned. Yes, that is what that Kit Kat, t- Kit Kat tastes like. Different, difficult sentences we're, to say. It tastes like a, a sort of a little version, a Kit Kit. <laughs> a Cat Kit. Yeah, so you know, it's odd, isn't it, like when you go to your friend's house to play, those tiny little differences because they'll do things slightly differently to how your parents do it but you assume that your parents are right for instance my friend Reen used to double waffle used to what? used to double he used to get two bird's eye potato waffles with his tea and you only had one? yeah that's why I'm so thin and nice because my mum was single waffling <laughs> uh, a cause oh, of bunions is waffle deficiency causes bunions. Yes, yeah, my mum's got a bunion. She just tweeted me to apologise. She really? She's, yeah, she tweeted giving me. you bad genes. Yeah, she says it's genetic. That's what the podiatrist says. Sorry, mm. but you know, I mean, it's not my mum's fault, is it? No, it's 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 a James going back into the you know generations. Yeah, I have the same thing with emotional intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> Ellis James and John Robbins, Radio X, and appearing tonight on. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste. Take off a taste. You join us here in the Radio X studio in Leicester Square, and I am eyeing this thing with real suspicion because we've had this chocolate sent to us from what's the company called? Chocolate Smiths. Chocolate Smiths, and they make bizarre chocolate, proudly made, handmade. Uh, in Northumbria. Uh, we've got one each to try. Now, I will be trying, um, oh my giddy aunt, crackers, cheddar cheese, and milk chocolate. So, if you like chocolate and cheese, and you're mad, and you think <laughs> and you think they'll taste nice together, then the good people at uh, the chocolate makers have, they, 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 the chocolate smiths, they've combined them. We so. say good people. We may well not be thinking that after we've tried it, because yeah. I've been sent... 
uh, bacon flavour, but it's veggie bacon and milk chocolate. Oh. How and why? Yeah, <laughs> right. They, they said they've sent us a little flyer. It says, hand making everything from bubblegum sundae to savoury bacon, peanut butter and pretzel to cheese and cracker. Our, ag a our agenda is to ruin your day. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, should we just go for it, John, down the hatch? You, you go cheese and crackers first right. and I'll go bacon. So, just to recap, it's cheddar cheese, crackers and milk chocolate. Here we go. He's chewing away. Has that actually got bits of cheddar in it, or is the flavoured? Because you've got little bits in yours. Mm. Oh, he's popped the whole thing in. It's, yeah, it's a that's cracker, isn't it? Four bars. Four bars. Four little cubes. I'll I'll try my bacon one. Uh, to be honest, talking with your mouthful on radio is probably bad practice, but it's actually not too bad. It's giving you high shoulders. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's his right. personal trainer. <laughs> it's affected my it's affected my uh, posture. It's all right actually. I oh here comes the cheese. <laughs> mm, here it comes. I mean, my bacon one, the bacon flavour is quite low in the mix. Yeah. And the chocolate is a very pleasant chocolate. It's like the base on be here now. <laughs> mm. But um, I mean, I'm actually going to have another piece. But it sort of makes you think, if the selling point is it tastes of bacon. You might as well really riff up the bacon. Yeah, if you're gonna if you're gonna turn chocolate into a challenge, make it a challenge. Because I just think that this tastes like normal chocolate, but made with a different brand. To what I mean, you know how Nestle chocolate tastes different to Cadbury's, for instance. Like mm. a Yorkie tastes different to Dairy Milk, but they mm. should be the same. It's like a new competitor to the Yorkie or Dairy Milk. That's a bit cheesy if you eat <laughs> enough of it. <laughs> and the bacon one is sort of. Um quite similar to those... Uh, are you having more? Yeah. Just, I love chocolate. I'm yeah, this has got a real sweet tooth. tooth. Yeah. I've got... You know <laughs> you know how children at parties would eat if their parents weren't there? Welcome to my life. <laughs> <laughs> I um, absolutely love it. Yeah, I would say the bacon one is... I'll like, die early, <laughs> but still, what a life I'll have. Um, the bacon one is sort of... It's, a, it's on that salted caramel scale. Yeah. So, yeah, very pleasant. Didn't exist, really, until a few years ago. Salted caramel. Didn't believe in it. I think I, it's been in America for a while. Oh, the Americans. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> you're more than welcome cars. to send in any taste for us to tick off uh, to Radio X here, care of Ellis and John. Howl by Biffy Clyro. You're listening to Radio X. Now, folks, if you're hearing a howl, it's <laughs> probably because of um, Halloween. Um a festival that I increasingly find just an excuse for lawlessness and aggression. Yeah. If you ask me, the only Halloween costume that is acceptable it is is one that is done last minute with sort of bad makeup and sort of looks ineffective. A dressing gown covered in tomato sauce. Yes. Because it's not scary. Though. Yeah. You're a ju you're just a person who hasn't got dressed yet who's cut himself on a knife. Yeah, I don't want any Halloween costume with more work going into it than Alan Partridge's z zombie. Yeah. Where he has uh, oh, tungsten and tip oh, screws what? for nails, claws. Oh, what are cats to do? Why, do why, why are people dressing like cats? What's that to do with Halloween? Well, Witches. bad luck cats. Black bad cats. Luck, bad luck cats. <laughs> anyway, the... what it's tedious. I believe to be the less... Get on with it. ...the <laughs> less aggressive equi uh, replacement for Halloween is Diwali, because Diwali kicks off tomorrow. And um, as far as I'm aware, Vin, no one dresses up in a scary costume or goes on a tedious zombie walk, do they? No, no nothing that I'm aware of, no. <laughs> Vin, talk us through the main Diwali vibes. Well, it's the festival of light for Hindus. See, that's a nice that's thing. That's a nice yeah? one. So you have a lot of nice candles and a lot of um, yes. Yes. colours and poster paints. Why can't we replace Halloween with that? Well, that, I'm going to start a campaign to replace Halloween with Change. Diwali. Change.org. Yeah, what else, Vin? <laughs> so you've got lights, po poster paints. Post, yeah, nice sort of um, poster paint bits, but bits of artwork. People make little paintings on the floor. Yes. That's oh. nice. In your doorways, yeah. It's really nice. Oh. And, um, and sweets, food, food and sweets. Yes. This well, I can... Buy into Vin. Thank you, mate. <laughs> You're it's welcome. Vin help. didn't start it. <laughs> no, oh, um, did he? So Vin, as always, for the third year running, has brought in uh, Diwali sweets for us to consume, which is traditional. Um, and the Diwali sweets, I don't know if you've had them. Um, I'll sort of show them there. So they're called Burfi or called, mid Mitai? They're called Burfi. Burfi, yeah. Um, 
And it, the last two years, Vin, I've always been incredibly polite about your Diwali <laughs> sweets, but I think I know you well enough now to say they are too sweet. Oh, no, I'd agree with you. They are too sweet. They taste like... Well, Ellis, what do you call them? Space marzipan. He calls them space marzipan. Yeah. They're like sort of slabs of butter with sugar in them. Yeah. Sometimes um, fried. Sometimes <laughs> fried. They are very stodgy. I would say. But I'm going to say this, you've brought a slightly more upmarket one this so year. so sweet. When I tried them last year, they made my eyeballs tingle. <laughs> so I'm <laughs> going never to... never before. I'm going to try this one. It's got nuts in it. Okay. Which I'm hoping will sort of um, de-sweeten them. Hmm. Ah! Oh, now that's fig-based. That is fig-based, I've yeah. not got a problem because nature is able to regulate the sweetness through the fig. It's got chunks in it, that one. Hmm. Big fan of that. Ellis, have one of the other mar space marzipans. Oh. You have to turn my mic off, Vin. I'm going to chew now. <laughs> what's the uh, what's the pink one, Vin? What's the pink one? I don't know, mate. It looks, um, like, a, looks like a French fancy. I, might, I reckon it's going to be coconut. A religious French fancy. Oh, I'm at a birthday party. I've had too many cakes. I'm <laughs> kicking off. Yep, yeah, I've now hit a sugar crash. My yeah. mum's taken me home. I've been shouting at the host. And that's from one bite. Yeah. That's the thing with Diwali uh, cakes, oh. is <laughs> they make you, f the first mouthful makes you feel like you've had your 20th mouthful of another cake. Yeah. And you get that sort of face sadness. Is it like Lent or something? What do you mean? I, in the set, because they're so sweet, is it to signify, are you using up the, the year's worth of sugar in one cake to make a point. No, I think it's just a, biz <laughs> a bizarre sort of taste. <laughs> what point would you be making? I don't know. <laughs> Vin, can I make a broad generalisation? You're gonna. These are always my favourites. I'm gonna say that the subcontinent in general has never quite nailed the dessert. Um, Discuss. I would agree with that. Starters, sides, yep. mains, absolutely off the scale. Yeah. However, and this is from the east to the further east, I would include <laughs> Thailand and um, Japan and China in this, alongside uh, India and the surrounds. The dessert is not their strong point. Discuss. No, I think, I think I'm on board with that. Why I mean, there is are, that? There are things that I enjoy. There's food called um, called gulab jamun, which I'm a big fan of. I love the name. Say that again. Gulab jamun. They're like little donuts. Right. Little donuts in rose water syrup. They're really good. Okay. In the same way that continental Europe, they haven't mustard crisps. Uh, very good They're observation. so boring. Everything is paprika flavoured. <laughs> yes. Go to France in a supermarket. I guarantee you will see 90 different brands of crisp but all the same two flavours, paprika and salt. You could go into any newsagent in the UK and the crisp selection will put all of continental Europe to shame. You ask... Not for, making a point about Brexit. You ask for pickled a onions in, a, in Spain and they will throw you off a tower like a donkey. <laughs> Not sure if that's <laughs> fine to say. <laughs> it's time for Tick Off a Taste. And appearing tonight on... Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste. Take off a taste. That's right, teams. You bring the tastes, we bring the ticks. It's take off a taste. This week's take off a taste is brought to you by Pizza Express. I was told. Sounds like an infomercial now. I was told on arrival at Radio X HQ that there was a package from Pizza Express for Mr. John Robbins, and I. It was the hallowed special Soho 69 card, which I know exists. And what is a, a Soho 69 card? It's their version of the Nando's Black card, but right. they deny its existence. So that's free Pizza Express. It's the Area country. 51 of the loyalty world. <laughs> right. Anyway, uh, Pizza Express are running their mystical free snowball doble day. So in order to uh, let us in on the action, Pizza Express have sent us some free snowball dough balls. Um, they're normal dough balls. They look like normal dough balls. Uh, they're covered in a sort of dust. Which and is cinnamon, is it? That dust? Well, it smells cinnamony, mate. Maybe it's from Mars. It is. So, And they, you have an accompanying pot of sort of um, sauce, which is quite thick. I've scooped some off. What's that gloopy sauce, John? That's the snort sauce that comes with the free snowball dough balls. Right, I'm, I'm tasting. John's going in. Oh! Oh, it's sweet. Right. It's very, very, very sweet. I'm a big fan of cinnamon. Let's see what this has got to offer. Are you a fan of things with 120% sugar? 
Oh, wow. Holy it's really moly. sweet, eh? Yeah. Uh, like Ellis sweet. has got a sweet tooth. I, I don't. Like, I like sweet gloop. Um, Pizza Express. Um, far be it from me to ever, ever disparage brand Pizza Express, of which I believe I am the world's greatest ambassador. Uh, however, I've got a few tweaks to make. Um, I think that the dough ball needs to have a little bit of sugar infused into the mix and the sauce uh, dial down the sugar a bit. It's very sweet, but a lovely Christmassy treat. Pizza Express, cinnamon. if you're listening, tell me your recipe for sweet gloop. <laughs> Whatever that stuff is, I need more of it in my life. Um, thank you very much, uh, Team P.E. It's time to dust off those buds, because it's Tick Off a Taste. And appearing tonight on... Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste. Take off a taste. That's right, guys. Uh, this is the part of the show where Ellis and I <laughs> taste things we haven't tasted before. It's that simple. Um, the t- This week's tastes were provided by uh, Elle Murphy, a uh, fan of the show. Uh, she sent us a Christmas card, which is very nice, oh, with uh, lots of nice. Robins is on the front. Oh, lovely. A rockin' Robin. Yeah, and it says, Dear a- EJJR, Prod D and Prod V, thanks for being a beam of light in 2016's gloom. Pleasure. Oh, bloody 2016. <laughs> Merry Christmas and a joyful 2017. Much love. Elle, P.S., I've included some taste to tick off. Um, these tastes... Uh, quite uh, quite the prospect because they remind me of um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Yeah, the ta- matchboxes with a meal inside the matchbox, but in sweet form. Yeah, and the uh, the font used on the matchbox is quite old fashioned, so it's it's a bit like how I imagine the Victorians thought we'd all be eating by 1985. Yes, it's sort of uh, an um, what was his name. Who wrote uh, the Buzz time, Aldrin? No, who wrote the Time Machine? Oh, Jules Verne. It was. Did he write Time Machine? H. G. Wells. H. G. Wells. Yeah. Ah! It's a Wellsian view of twenty um, first century dining, um, in which you get three capsules, well, three sweets, each different flavour, like the chewing gum in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Yes. Um, so I've got school dinner flavour. Ellis has got curry flavour. So what's your first flavour, Ellis? My first flavour is, uh, it's the start, it's an onion bhaji sweet. Then the main course is a chicken curry sweet. And then the sundries is a mango chutney sweet. Lovely stuff. Uh, mine is chicken, mashed potatoes, then custard. So um, shall I start off with the chicken one? Uh, yeah, of your main, you mean? Well, ma- well, chicken and mashed potato. No one has mashed potato as a starter. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Apart from my daughter. Yeah. <laughs> She's two, that's fine. Um, uh, so I'm going to go for the chicken one. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah. All right, yeah, I'm going to have, like. have an onion bhaji sweet. But- Absolutely vile, because it tastes exactly like an onion bhaji, but it's a sweet, so my brain does not know what's going on. By the way, this sweet is suitable for vegetarians, thank the Lord. I'm not entirely sure the taste is suitable for anyone. I'm not sure about that. It's like a sugared chicken. Mm. Yeah. Actually, not that unpleasant. So I'm popping that one out. Now I'm going for the mashed potato. Right. I'm going to go for my chicken curry sweet. Mmm. In fairness, the mashed potato one tastes a bit more like a normal sweet. But Do you know, definitely an essence of mash in there. The weird thing with this is that the tastes are actually unnerdingly accurate. Mmm. Um, but you know when you have banana flavoured chewing gum and it doesn't taste anything like banana. Banana flavoured chewing gum. Yeah. Where are you getting that from? You can get it. No, you can't. Online. You cannot get banana flavoured chewing gum. All right, online. juicy fruit. Yeah, fair it doesn't enough. taste anything like. But you know, or, or an orange chew, it doesn't taste like an actual orange. This actually tastes like curry, so it's quite disconcerting. Okay, I'm now going for my pudding, which is uh, pink custard. Yeah, we're on safe ground now. We are absolutely in normal sweet territory. Right, mango chutney. Mm. Oh, it's too accurate. It's too accurate. It's too accurate. I Mine just like tastes it. like sort of strawberries and cream flavour, oh, this one. No, that tastes like mango chutney, but hard. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, more of those tastes... It's unsettling. I don't like it. More of those tastes coming up if you have a taste to send in. The address uh, to send in your tastes, or indeed... Uh, any type of treat, cash, Pizza Express black card, if you're listening, Pizza Express, is coming up <laughs> right now. Do you know what, John? We live 
in a changing world, the ever-shifting sands of the present, I find unsettling. But I really hope we don't start eating meals out of matchboxes. Absolute more. <laughs> what? Why does our radio show not have its address on the website, Vin? I'm you, just, know, you know it. Do you want a, do you want a hint? Mail. It's Leicester Square. It's 30 Leicester Square. 30 Leicester Square. London. London. Go on, you can do UK, this. WC2H. Spot on. 1LA. Very close. How what do you is know it? that? Close enough. What is it? It's 7LA, isn't it? Oh, God. We're it's finding out now. Yeah? WC2H7LA. Yes. Okay. So if you want to send in a taste, cash, Pizza Express, black card, it's 30 Leicester Square, London, WC2H7LA. Uh, and also, we are not famous enough for you just to put Ellis and John on the envelope and for it to reach us. That won't happen. Not even in our own office. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, team, thanks for all your tastes. We love ticking them off. <laughs> I hope you like listening to this feature. That's right, folks. It's time for Ticker for Taste. Uh, this is the part of the show where Ellis and I taste things we haven't tasted before. Um, in a way, I've already ticked off a taste today because it's the first time I've ever had blue cheese anchovies and gherkins on toast. Um, but that's more of a taste combo. A tick off a taste machine, John. And we had a package of gifts sent in to us from Jay at BA Ons, PCD, 109er, Retro, 1er and Liver. Uh, vibe taster um, and Jay sent a t-shirt to me which was very uh, kind an Alan Partridge crest t-shirt and um, to El- oh is this yes and to Ellis flashcards for my daughter flashcards for your daughter <laughs> yeah 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 I haven't given, obviously I haven't given them to her yet but um, uh, yeah they're beautifully um, illustrated very nicely illustrated lovely lovely say. gift so, but also, uh, Jay sent in a taste. Uh, Jay says, Dear Ellis John, producer Dave and producer Vin, please kind find enclosed a can of futuristic-sounding grape soda for the gents to try in the groundbreaking Tick of a Taste segment. Uh, it should be noted that grape soda is very often mixed with rum by middle-class American teens in a rudimentary cocktail referred to as purple drink. Um, <laughs> al- although... That is actually made from a mix of prescription cough syrup and Sprite. Purple Lovely stuff. drink. So, whilst I expect John will be more on board trying grape soda with rum, even though it is teeth decayingly sweet, I wasn't sure if Radio X would allow the consumption of alcohol on air. Not up to them, mate. <laughs> uh, you can stock up before you get in the building. Who's to know? They don't breathalyse you. Uh, though, thus far... I've yet to imbibe before broadcasting. Um, anyway, uh, so uh, Jay has sent us in a can of grape soda. Okay. It's a good sound, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, oh, wow, it is purple. The colour of that is disgusting. Look at that. That would send an under-12 mental. Yeah, it's... Um, it looks like alien juice. Yeah, it does yeah. Like alien, alien juice. juice. There you yeah. go. So we're I've, now going to take off this taste. The colour of it, it looks like um It looks like, like a superhero's cape or something. Yeah, it's a bit like shower gel colour. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I drink it Redox. Oh it tastes like alien juice. Do you know what though? It just tastes like sugar and water. Yeah. It doesn't actually taste of grape. Would it work with rum then? Everything works with rum, mate. <laughs> Weetabix. Apart from an early start or a <laughs> relationship. <laughs> Mm. Uh, do what it tastes like. It tastes like very. Che- would work. It would work with rum, mate. It tastes like very ch- the very cheap squash you'd get in youth clubs and things from a tuck mm. shop. It's like an. Eight- I haven't tasted squash like that since the eighties. It's it's incredibly Moorish, but it's just it's, pretty much downed it. Yeah, well. it's sweet. It, there's a there's a, a slight medicinal element to it as well. Mm. Oh, it's made my stomach feel a bit weird though. Yeah, I could get used to that in a worrying way, but <laughs> I'm a, I'm usually by trade a diet drinker. After I s- forced myself to switch to diet when I first started doing stand up because the coke was making my teeth ache, um, and this has a worrying amount of sugar in it. Yeah, and anyway, uh, I'm still going to finish it. It would be an incredible pick me up though, if you were if you were feeling um, if you were tired or hungover or something. It's it's essentially Lucas Aid, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's sort of no. Hasn't Luke say got stuff in it? Good stuff. Yeah. I mean, people used to give it to you in hospitals in the sixties, but the sixties, they thought smoking was good for you in the sixties. So not in the sixties, <laughs> no. they didn't. But, but they did. The they 40s. did in the thirties. There are yeah. um, 
I've seen adverts. I went to the Wimbledon Museum, as in tennis. Yeah. And uh, there are adverts of tennis players of sort of, you know, Rothmans, the cigarettes that strengthen your lungs. You've just given them advertising. You've just... You're going to get sacked by Ofcom. <laughs> oh, God. Does, are, they, do they, are they still a brand? Rothmans, does he, does yeah. My mum's friend used to smoke Rothmans. Oh, right, OK. Too oh, well. creamy for me. <laughs> <laughs> Ellis James and John Robbins. Radio X. Sorry for talking about cigarettes earlier. They're not very cool these days. It's very rare that you actually see someone um, smoking. <laughs> Fags, sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> these days. These days? Are you finished? Yeah, yeah. Well, that was a public health announcement there from Radio X. Yes. We've had some presents sent in. A remarkably extensive German festive gift bag. Yeah. Um, uh, with a letter attached. It says, Dear Ellis John, producer Dave, producer Vin... I'm a 98er, retro one and second-time writer here. To thank you for the many, many... Well, you've hours... written twice in, in that person's life. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, saying that, the, the uh, handwriting is remarkably good. To thank you for the many, many hours of great content of the whole terrible year, I look, took the liberty of bringing you some hopefully unknown German Christmas treats. I'm sure you all heard of Lebkudenchen, yep. so I intentionally didn't get you those. How common the others <laughs> over here are, I don't know. I also included two Christmas beers. Beware, only one of them is session. I haven't tasted either of them, so good luck. I hope you'll find some treats among them to tick off a new taste. Lots of love, and may 2017 be a better year. From Ellen. Thanks, Ellen. Ellen written on a mathematical grid paper. Yes, like school. a genius. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, Ellen, we have, I'm afraid we've already started tucking into the Pfeffernus, which is like a sort of iced gingerbread, because I was already familiar with them, and they're very tasty. Very sweet. So we've decided that we are going to be tasting Blatterkrokantkuglen for Tick Off a Taste. And appearing tonight on... Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste. Take off a taste. I have four tastes in my hand. They're now being distributed amongst the team. D, E, V, and J, R. So they are. It's like a German quality street. Yeah, they're sort of wrapped. We had a bit of an argument last night about quality streets, didn't we? You favour the. The orange cream ones. Oh, no, that wasn't yesterday. No, Let's that's... forget we mentioned that. <laughs> you'll, you'll hear it in coming weeks. <laughs> yeah, you'll hear, you'll hear a little teaser there. <laughs> <laughs> For uh, some more great content. Because Alice and John often plan their chats weeks ahead. Yes. Yeah, you... I'm often wake up and think, and I'll text <laughs> Ellis and say, Ellis, I want to argue with you about quality street <laughs> flavours in two weeks' time. Yeah. So, uh, so is everyone ready to take off this taste? Yeah. They are little sort of um, chocolate-covered domes. German quality street. Quality quality and street. And. Oh. Mm. Oh, that is dense and sugary. Mm. Oh, my good yeah. It's, like, it's like space dust. No, it's like dry, hard fudge. It's not toffee. It's like dry, crumbly fudge. Like um, the sort of shale you get on a cliff face when looking for fossils. Yeah. It's a festive shale. Oh. I could become addicted to that. It's very sweet, but I love it. I love what it's doing to my teeth. I love the damage. <laughs> it, oh. I can feel, I can sense the damage. It's lovely. It's too sweet for me. Oh, yeah. Yeah? Not sweet enough. Bring I can it on. Imagine Come the, on, Germany. I can take it. I can imagine <laughs> the, um, the, uh, the, the sugar crystallising and bubbling away in a pan for long hours whilst mm. uh, Lady... In Ladyhosen, um, <laughs> does other German things. <laughs> measuring... Uh, Plays a tuba. Measuring a suspension ring for design. Um, maybe starts a footwear company after arguing with her brother. And being excellent Such at... Such a niche reference to Adidas. Yeah, I got it. Humor there. I was there. Thanks, guys. Being excellent at international football. <laughs> <laughs> Which of Adidas and Puma is the uh, bad one? I, d I don't know, but they were both brothers, and I think Adidas was the first one, and then they argued, and Puma started, and they're both still based in the same town, and I think BMW and Mercedes are the same. No, Aldi and Little are brothers. Are they? They are two brothers, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. A lot of, lot of sibling rivalry in uh, Germany. I was actually talking about this with Johnny Fulton in the pub last night. <laughs> were you? <laughs> yeah. 
sibling rivalries in Germany. I'm good fun in a pub situation. Mm. <laughs> Versatile. Oh, I can feel the teeth damage, Dave. Mm. <laughs> right, team. Um, more tick of a tastes coming up over the uh, festive period. A lot of new tastes out there. This <laughs> is Find Me by Kings of Leon. It's time for Tick Off a Taste. And appearing tonight on... Tick Off a Taste, Tick Off a Taste. Tick Off a Taste, Tick Off a Taste. Tick Off a Taste, Tick Off a Taste. Tick Off a Taste. Tick Off a Taste. Have you heard that Commode and Mayo have started a feature you to are. that tune? <gasps> oh. They only sort of, they say it, it's not, they've not done a jingle or anything. But I can't remember what it was I was listening to the they're other night. They're not tasting things, are they? No, they're not, they're not because they've got, <laughs> they've got broadcast pedigree. Yeah. Um, hey, Mark! But they, it's it's Simon! Popcorn. It's yeah. something like... Um, <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's salty and it's sweet. It's something like, these are the things, these are the things, these are the things. Anyway, a little bit of cross-pollination Kermode. there. Why had Kermod was tasting things on his radio <laughs> show? Uh, folks, it's time for Tick of a Taste, and we've been sent in a package all the way from Iceland by Victoria Hrobsa Dottir, um, and which I'm assuming means daughter of Hrob... I wonder if she knows Gulfi Sigurdsson, my hero. Well, there's only two people who live in Iceland. So well, 300,000. It's smaller than Cardiff. There was a, it wasn't there a one in some amazing statistic during the Euros that there was a one in 20 chance of you being in the squad if you were a, a man age between 17 and 35 or something? I don't know. Small country, but well done to them. So, um, Victoria Hrobjats Dottir, says, uh, I just wanted to send off a tick of a taste for you guys. In Iceland, so-called pepper rage is occurring, and almost every candy is being coated or filled with pepper. As in black pepper? Well, no. She sort of explains it. Um, we even have it covering dates. It's not really pepper, but a mix of licorice root and salmiak, but it's not spicy or hot. In Iceland, almost everyone loves anything involving licorice and chocolate, and now pepper. The Nura crop is my favourite candy, so I'll try not to take it to, to heart if you guys hate it, but then you might well send it back so I can have it. I'd recommend starting with the Nura crap, and then the Dirge Pur, and then the Ray Mare. <laughs> I uh, love that we have an Icelandic PCD. That yeah. is music to my ears. She says, I think the licorice strings have the most intense flavour, so you can work your way up. Well, unfortunately, we've eaten the licorice strings because we already have tasted licorice, so thought we'd get that one, that one out of the way during yes, the song. Yes, it's nice to feel licorice in your spine. However, I have in my hands the Nur Krub. Oh, let's get Her cracking. Crowd, like so many we crab have an Icelandic PCD. I am so excited about that. Right, so I'm... Oh, I'm going to have a few Nur Krabs. Thank you. And uh, I am now going to tick off that taste. Oh. 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 Oh, they're Moorish. Oh. What is that? They taste like little bits of biscuit with um, licorice on the outside. And though I'm not a massive licorice fan, once you get to that they're like, beautiful um, biscuit base, they're like <laughs> they're like uh, oh yes please they're like dusty Maltesers. Mm. Yes, Maltesers found in a an abandoned house. Mm. Oh, antique shop Maltesers. Yes, that's it. Thank you, Victoria Hudson. Must be great. Iceland is great, mate. I've been belting place, uh, folks. There we go. Another taste ticked off. Um, hopefully, the country will survive. Another week because of that. And um, it's time now for us to uh, wish you goodbye. Thank you very much for listening. Joe, good up next. Goodbye. Bye -bye. Ellis James and John Robbins. Radio X. Oh. Welcome to the Keep It Session Sessions. We've made a terrible error and <laughs> tasted the other tick of a taste that oh. um, Victoria sent in. The Stair George Pears. And they're like, oh, it's so intense. It's... You're not expecting it. They look like the, the shape of Maltesers or bonbons. You bite into them, it cracks. And then inside is the most intense licorice atom bomb. And it gets in your teeth and keeps dispensing an incredibly acidic licorice flavour. Ellis has had to go and get a glass of water. Oh, I don't like them at all, mate. How do you like licorice that much? Um, oh, Ellis has returned with his water. I was just talking people through the stir car dirge birds. <laughs> oh, that was a strong taste. It's too licorice, isn't it? Yeah. You'll I find like, it in I your like teeth. Like, yeah. A bit later on. I oh. like licorice all sorts. I like licorice, but that was too licorice. You do not like all sorts of licorice, though. Ellis. Do you know what? Um, oh, there's a birthday the... cake from last week left in the office, and I ate birthday cake scrapings to try and get the taste out of my <laughs> mouth. Which is a low moment. Oh, mate. That's oh. horrible. 
Can I, uh, have we got any of the dusty antique shop? <laughs> yeah. Maltese has left. Mm. Well, That's a bit more palatable, isn't it? I've gone over to go over your calorie count for the day for that oh. day. Anyway. And appearing tonight on. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste. Take off a taste. That's right. Uh, John Robbins and I, we're two men who are paid by a commercial digital indie radio station to taste things. And uh, <laughs> we're going to do that right now. We've had a taste sent in for us. It's but two a, tastes. Two tastes by the same person. Yes, uh, and a lovely card with uh, an amusing joke on the front. Alice says, how do, you, how do you approach an angry Welsh cheese? I don't know. Carefully. Carefully. Caref- yeah, carefully cheese. Very good. Um, nice cheese. Uh, to Ellis John, Prod D and Prod V, here are some gifts for Tick of a Taste and Keeping Up with Project Spice. I'm a retro one PCD and 97er. I had the great pleasure of seeing you two Hammer Legends in Colchester and loved every minute. It was great to meet you both after, and as a big fan, I tried my best not to say or do anything to end up in my shame well. <laughs> anything, I hope this finds you well and keep up the amazing show as it never fails to make me spi- smile. Yours sincerely, Claire. Do you have any good tales from Care Leon, Ellis? She says in Care Leon? She went to university there. Uh, it's a, 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 a very near Newport, and um, it's a, it, there's a Roman fort there. So Lovely. it's quite an important... Uh, part of Roman Britain. But so anyway, I had uh, a Madras last night. So she sent two tastes. Um, uh, the first are Reaper peanuts. Okay, how spicy are we talking here, John? Well, it's got skulls on, which means Usually they. Usually a bad sign. Yeah, so we're having a, a peanut each in two halves on a spoon, and we're going now. <laughs> I'm the second one. Yep, fine. Hey. Oh, I'm oh, getting yeah. peanut. Oh, and now I'm getting a lot of pain. I don't like it. Oh, it's building, but still quite small. I'd say it's tolerable. Ellis has hunched his shoulders. Ah, yeah, it's fine. I can cope with that. Yeah. I wouldn't want too many of them in a pub situation. Do you know what? Last night, because we met last night, and I'd had such a good time with you, John, that as I walked past my favourite pub, I thought, I'm going to have to have a half. Oh, did you? I'm going to have to have a half. But I timed it. There was no one at the bar. I was in there, half a pound of ghost ship, two minutes, 40 seconds. <laughs> Amazing. Just an injection of adulthood. I've been looking after a toddler. I didn't want to spend the night in the pub. I just thought I'm going to have a half because I've been with John and I find him enthralling and thrilling. Right, we're now going to try something. The chili wizard's fudge. That's got a second wind. That reaper peanut. I think it's fine. I think I think I, my Madras training last night has stood Did me in good stead. You have a Madras stead. last night. Yeah. Oh, well done, mate. A Madras coconut rice in front of a BBC Four documentary about cults. There you go. <laughs> Right, what's this? This is it's fudge. Chili fudge. It's got a picture of... This is a fun... That's not a skull. He's a fun wizard. Yeah, but it's got ghost peppers in it. I reckon it's probably child-friendly with that front cover. Mmm. Oh, it's very nice fudge. Thus far, no discernible heat. No, it's fine. Mmm. Just tastes like nice fudge. Disappointed. No, there's something there. Oh, hello. Yeah. He's got a... That wizard's got a... Oh, the trick back, of yeah, sleeve. the back of my tongue. Oh, ruin a wedding. I can feel that now. <laughs> yeah, that's got um, that's got just chilli powder in it that builds to the inevitable crescendo. Anyway, yeah, hey. it's good to feel alive for a couple of minutes at least. Thanks very much for sending those in, Claire. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a lovely mixture of the sweet and the spice. Um, it's like uh, a hot shower in my mouth. Are you um, going to have your milk that you've pre-prepared? No, I'm fucked I'm fine with it. Um, folks, um, we've decided very cynically uh, to steal a feature from Mr. Chris Moyles <laughs> and uh, start tasting hot food uh, live on the radio. What do you think of that, Ellis? I don't think it'll catch on. <laughs> and we've had um, uh, a letter, a taste sent to us. Oh, it's time for Tick of a Taste. And appearing tonight on... Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste. Take off a taste. That's right, team. It's time to take off a taste. Maybe Miles can make it work, but I don't think we've got it in this. Well, joking aside, you you ate something and you had to wear glasses. I ate the hottest chili this week what in was the it? world. Which one was it? The, uh, the, the Carolina, Carolina Reaper. Reaper. I knew it! I knew what the hottest Have you eaten that? No. I had two mouthfuls of it. But you... I... Uh, 
I, I watched the video, the sound was down because I was on public transport and I'm a good human being. Yes, that's but exactly how I watched it. I've seen people eat that and you can't speak for ten minutes. I was all right. Were you all right? Yeah. It, it was all right. It burnt. Have, you must have had a weak one. You must have done. No, I'm, I'm just a strong one. <laughs> okay, we'll find out because um, Matt Ovens, great name, great name. Wow. has sent us in a bag of death drops. Oh. Lovely name. Uh, right. Extreme heat, raspberry, lemon and licorice flavoured sweets. Uh, Matt says, I'm a PCD 23er live vibe taster. Me and my girlfriend Sarah are big fans of the show um, and we found these tastes on a stall in Bristol. Thought they might challenge you orally and digestively. Mum made me some butternut squash soup last night and I put chilli flakes in it and she looked at me like I was Captain Cook. <laughs> 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 Discovering the new world. Yeah. Right. You know the death... How... What are we talking about here, oh, John? They smell nice. It just says death drops. Okay. So, um, Dave, what flavour would you like? Any. Okay. Uh, you can have a yellow one. Uh, Ellis? Uh, what, raspberry, please. Raspberry for you. I'm going to have raspberry as well. And then, um, here you go. They come in a sort of a black sealed pack. How is it, Dave? Oh, there's something there. Is there? Well, this is this is from the man who enjoys a Carolina Reaper. I can't Reaper believe you chili. didn't. You weren't sort of immobilised by Carolina Reaper. Mm. Oh, that is spicy. Good grief! Front of tongue. Ooh. Front of tongue. Yeah. Gums. <laughs> Front Gums. of tongue. Now we're going back of tongue. Oh, it's um, it, but it tastes. It's very nice and raspberryish, but it does taste of um chili extract. Yeah. It doesn't taste of natural chili. Oh. Oy. Oh. Yeah. Back of the throat. Now tonsils. <laughs> yeah. Front of tongue, front of tongue, gum and tonsil. <laughs> front of tongue, front of tongue, gums and tonsils. Front of tongue, front of tongue, guns and gums and tonsils. Guns and tonsils <laughs> would be a good name for a hot sauce. Oh. Well, thank, good though. Thank you very much, Matt Ovens. Love your name. What a great name. Yeah. I wonder if that predates the oven, the the appliance. <laughs> <laughs> because we haven't had... How long have we had ovens for? Oh, About years. 700 years, haven't we? <laughs> they just weren't electric. Go away, John. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Okay, folks, uh, it's time to say goodbye with um, these death drops in our mouths. Apologise if it's affecting my um, enunciation. And your banter. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I think that's better than your blooming... What was that story you read of the most boring news story ever about how an increase in rates is threatening a pub in Ludlow? Have you criticised my banter? It's time for Tick Off a Taste. And appearing tonight on... Tick Off a Taste, Tick Off a Taste. Tick Off a Taste, Tick Off a Taste. Tick Off a Taste, Tick Off a Taste. Tick Off a Taste. Tick Off a Taste. That's right, team. Uh, we got tastes. We're going to tick. Um, today's tastes come from... <laughs> Two men paid to taste things on the radio. Uh, these come from Ed. He says, hope you're all well. My better half always goes back home for Chinese New Year. Enclosed some goodies she bought back from Singapore. Nothing very hot or interesting, so no need to, to air it for Tick of a Taste, but thought you might be intrigued to try a few bits anyway. Of course we're going to air it on Tick of a Taste, mate. Do you think we've got so many tastes that so we don't need to tick them all off? Chill out, John. Um, <laughs> however, um, the, the green... So, basically, Ed has sent us some green tea Kit Kats, which we have previously ticked off. Yeah. They are ineligible for tick of a taste. Although I just ate one anyway. Yes. Because I like them. Uh, however, Ed also sent in some Bi Cheng Hyang Baka BBQ meat. Um, now, this is... I am guessing this is like jerky. I can't... Um, I cannot tick this off due to me being murder. Um, I'll joke enough. <laughs> oh my god! I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll jerk. I'll eat, eat, eat it. I'll eat jerky. I will do that for the for the for the program show radio. Give give me some jerky. <laughs> Oh dear, this 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 feature's taken a rapidly different turn. Uh, come on, let's 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 get it let's get it involved. This taste, Ellis, has to be I thought you need a you, I never thought I'd say this, Ellis, but you need a cold shower, young man. Um this taste needs to be submerged in boiling water for a minute, which I am now done. So I've got three uh, mugs and once it's been in the boiling water for a minute, you can then um, do what you want with it, mate. But, um, remember, there are webcams, actually. <laughs> yeah, this is a Facebook video for next week. 
Uh, so, oh yeah, do check out our most recent Facebook video. It's very funny. It's yeah. um, it's the uh, dad sat nav. Oh, these are too hot. So you've all got your now leave your jerky in your <laughs> leave every <laughs> leave your jerky in your pockets. Um, it's in the plastic coating. Yeah. So what you need to do in twenty seconds, you need to remove it from the mug, unwrap it, and take that taste off. I will be. Um, uh, I'm obviously. Uh, what's the word? I'm just not doing it. You're adjudicating. Yes, I shall remain uh, Pontius Robin. Shall I take it out? Uh, no, no, take it out just in three, out. two, one. Take it out, Dave. Take out that taste. So, how, what do I do with this? You open the wrapping. And then dunk it back in there. I think you tear it along the perforated edge. Ah, yes. Do it with your teeth if needs be. <laughs> talking a man through how to open things. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's wet. I've got scissors, mate. I've got yes. scissors. Oh, scissors, God. please. Another go at me. <laughs> yeah, I was having a tough time of it. Okay. There we go. Ellis is in. Intern Joe is in. Dave, are you in? Yeah. Dave right. is in. And I just eat it as well. Just to describe them to you, listeners, Did they are like mouth? yeah, they're like little slabs of jerky, sort of in almost condom like wrap like wrappers. If I can, if I can be so yeah? bold, yeah, go for it. Oh, everyone's chewing. Oh, I like it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is it like jerky? I don't like it's jerky, thicker. but I like this. Okay. What do, what, so describe it to me. It's thicker. Bacony. It is, is it bacony? bacony? Yeah. It's hot. Well, as in spicy or warm? No, warm. Because yeah. of the boiling water? <laughs> yeah. I think um, that just encourages maybe the fat to melt a bit. It's like bacon. Is it like bacon, Dave? A bit like gammon. Between is it? Yeah. yeah. It's... I wouldn't have called that. It's that interesting middle ground between gammon and bacon. <laughs> 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 Scientists for years have been trying yeah. to find that middle ground. Because there's that new there's that new taste. Is it umami? Is that what it's called? Yeah, that's been around for a while, I think. I heard about it last night on the train. Right. Because <laughs> um, there's always been bitter, sweet, sour... Um, is that it? Lager. And lager. <laughs> but now there's, there's umami. There's salt, sweet, bitter, and umami, and lager, and pepper army. So they've got a new taste, and now boffins in Singapore have found the middle ground between gammon and bacon, and you can get it in a packet. Amazing. I like it. Thanks so much for that taste, Ed. And on that note, we bid you Radio adieu Earth. until yes. next week. Into the music. And John Robbins. Radio X. That was Heart of Glass by Blondie. You're listening to Ellis James and John Robbins on Radio X. We're covering for Johnny Vaughan, 4 till 7pm today. We've done it all week. Ellis? Yes. Are you hungry? Yeah, always. Do you want to take off a taste? And appearing tonight on... Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste. Take off a taste. That's right, guys. I'm just riffing. I'm radio riffing. We're going to take off a taste. Right. For any listeners uh, who haven't heard this feature before, it's uh, a regular feature on our Saturday 1 until 4 p.m. show where two men are paid, we're, we're paid to do this, to taste things. But I would say more that we're paid and no one has yet worked out high enough up in the corporation that we taste things. Yes, yes. But we're, we're it's more than just tasting. We're... How can I put this? We're flavour explorers. <laughs> we're, t- <laughs> we're ticking off tastes. Yes, because the, the, the key to this feature is that they're tastes that we haven't tried before. So it might be food from a different country or it might be old-fashioned food. But either way, we're breaking new ground. It's food from the future and food from the past. Yeah, food from the East. And uh, folks, this week, usually people send us in tastes to tick off. Uh, for example, super hot things. So we always like those if you want to send them in for our Saturday show. Yes, because I used to have the um, I used to have the palate of a toddler, but because of a year long project, Project Spice, uh, I'm now a Vindaloo guy. He actually is. I actually, am. Um, the, today's taste is delivered gratis via the Global Radio Cafe. Okay. I purchased a double espresso, like all top execs, <laughs> and was given free um, what I can only describe as a deliciously Ella energy ball. Right, okay. Now, I've long been sceptical of the energy ball market because people will tell you they're really into energy balls and that it'll change your life and yeah. then you 
Realize, you have one and you feel exactly the same. No, you have one and you realise it has changed your life because your life is now one where it feels like you've got dung in your mouth. Yes, which has a laxative effect. Yeah, however, <laughs> I'm, I'm a fan of Deliciously Ella. I've got her cookbook. She's pretty, guys, <laughs> but she's also pretty good at cooking vegan food. Right, so, okay. Um, so, Ellis, we, I've separated the energy ball into four quadrants. <laughs> I've never had a, a deliciously Ella energy ball. Uh, what is it? What's it going to do to me? Okay. Uh, what is in it? Uh, fruit, nuts, cacao, and spice. Oh, cacao. That's the big one, isn't it? And the spice. South Americans swear by it. And spice, as in spices. Uh, I don't think Ella's slipped in a legal high. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. So, so gonna... Ellis is now chowing on the ball. Mmm. Chewy. What are your thoughts? Oh, uh, hang on, I'll uh, cover while Ellis chews. I'm now going to enter into the uh, ball zone. You know that way that healthy food has all of the elements of fun taken from it? Yep. There's not very much fun in this. It, yeah, it does taste a bit like all energy balls I've ever had. However... In terms of energy, though, I'm raring to go. I like from, a, from a distance, though, it looks like chocolate. Did none yeah. of that... That's it all... Fun. Then the amount of vegan stuff that looks like chocolate, oh, and then you get it in your mouth, and it's so not chocolate. Um, Vin, would you like to try it a bit tastes, of a ball? I'm it, all right, I think. It tastes like a treat from the Blitz. Like if, yes! Like if, <laughs> <laughs> you haven't got access to chocolate, yeah. sugar, or butter. However... If the Luftwaffe had flattened my street, I'd be quite pleased with this. But as they haven't, I'm actually very disappointed. If you were hunkered down in Edgware Road tube station at one in the morning, mm. you'd be happy with that. I, I'd be thrilled with it. Absolutely thrilled. Um, that said, that was 70 years ago, and I think treat-wise we've moved on. Yes. Also, veganism back then, you'd have oh, been in prison. <laughs> You'd have been court-martialed for veganism uh, in the, the 40s. Anyway, there you go. One Another taste ticked off. Another step further down the road to total taste domination. It's James and John Robbins. Radio X. And appearing tonight on... Tick off a taste, tick off a taste. Tick off a taste, tick off a taste. Tick off a taste, tick off a taste. Tick off a taste. Tick off a taste. That's right, folks. Every week we seek to tick off all the tastes remaining on planet Earth. Um, I'm looking this... forward to finishing taste. Yeah, imagine once we've solved taste. <laughs> we'll have to uh, start inventing new ones, mm. like... Um, like umami. Ice cream chips. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this week's taste comes from Michael von Etzdorf. Okay, great. Oh, a foreign taste. Uh, it, the taste is foreign. I don't know whether Michael is. He's from Deptford. Oh, okay. Dear John, Ellis, producer Dave and producer Vin, hopefully I've used email correctly. He's uh, printed out his email and sent it through the post. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, th that's fine. B Bill Gates did that until a couple of years ago. About a year ago, I started my own Project Spice. After years of suffering at the mildest spice, under normal circumstances, I would have ignored this snack whilst I was exploring the pubs of Ramsgate. Mmm. <laughs> I'd love to be doing that right now. But I thought of Ellis and dived in. Now, I won't ruin the experience for you by describing the intensity of this taste, but I do have a couple of suggestions. Make sure you have a beverage of some kind readily available. Ellis has already ordered some safety milk. Yep. Um, Insurance milk. Be sure to eat two to three at once to get maximum spice. Mm. Despite what I felt that night in Ramsgate, I'm still carrying on with my own Project Spice. Enjoy the snacks, and thanks for all the laughs. So what are they, John? They are Karkley. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. Fiery ghost naga chilies, uh, savoury snacks. So they're like um, a sort of. They're made from uh, le it's those like lentil crisps um, that I am very fond of. They're they're sealed. I'm now going to open the uh, the sealed sort. Of, it's like a see-through envelope that you get them in. Oh. They don't smell too hot. Okay. Are you going to go for two or three as advice? I'm going to go two, not three. Because we you have to broadcast. I mean, so do I. Ah, nearly <laughs> fell over there a All bit. Right. So I'm now going to... Two at once. Two at once. Shall I go for it? Yeah, Three, take two, them off, mate. Very crunchy. Oh, I'm getting lovely Bombay mix flavours. It's, um... It's like a deep-fried frazzle. It is like a deep-fried frazzle. Because it's, it's crun crunchier than a frazzle, which is difficult to imagine. It's sort of like Chipsticks 2.0. <laughs> Um, I have to say, Michael... There's a pork scratching quality to it. Yeah, it's a pleasant level of heat. 
it's not, you know, it's not going to... I'm still broadcasting. You're st we're still broadcasting. Oh, there's a kick to it. Here it comes. There's a lovely kick. But mm. I tell you what, mate, apart from the fact I seem to get indigestion from everything I eat these days, which is now happening, um, I think I'm going to finish the rest of this snack. I'm going to actually chomp on these during... They're lovely. <coughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but thank you for these snacks. Consider Me. them tasted off. You're right, Al. So, yes, I'm fine. Um, I'm having another one. There's, there's a burp kickback. Yes, there is, mate. Um... Also, the thing I'm really intrigued by is the crunchiness. John is now eating them like they're ready salted crisps. What a man. I really like them. Oh, oh. lovely. Well, thanks, mate. Uh, we will tick off all the tastes you send in. Um, and We need, we need a, like a leaderboard of tastes that we can tick Damn. off. Well, well, we need a, a heat board. Oh, absolutely, yeah. The instant regret chocolate was the hottest thing I think I've ever tasted. Yeah, that wasn't fun. It's time to tick off that taste. <laughs> And appearing tonight on... Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste. Take off a taste. I listened to that jingle on the flight to try and pep myself up. Did you? Yeah. And Queen, I listened to Queen on the flight Oh, what Queen did you listen to? Um, One Vision. Did you? Because it reminded me of the tour we did. And the thing with One Vision is, if you're feeling slightly fragile, it makes you feel superhuman. Does he? Of course it does. felt incredible and then felt bad again. <laughs> okay, folks, so this week's tastes come in from Carrie and Dave and they've sent us a, a, a card with a selection of tastes saying, whilst Ellis considers moving to Mexico to join an ultra-running tribe, we thought it might be helpful to start endurance training for his palate. Please find enclosed a selection of children's sweets from our recent trip to Mexico. Enjoy, Carrie and Dave. Thanks so much, folks. They've sent us a selection of treats... I bumped into a PCD, someone who listens to the podcast of this show, um, in Dublin this morning at about, at about 8 a.m., and uh, she was reading that book about Mexican ultramarathon runners because of me singing its praises a couple of weeks ago, Born to Run by Christopher McDougall. Um, so this, the sweets, I'm just trying to deal with Ellis's. It's the strangest looking sweet we've ever had. It's basically a ball of, it's li limon, Ellis, yours is limon... Bon vaso. It, and it comes in the wrappers that, you know when you get, um... Uh, oh, hang on, no, that's... Not, that, are you eating that one? I think I might eat it later, yeah. But you know when you get wipes in an Indian restaurant? Yes. That's what the wrappers <laughs> look like. <laughs> so you're having this one now? Yeah, yeah. This oh. is, um... What is that? It looks like the thing out of Alien. Yeah, it's it, like a little sort of anise ball soaked in uh, red glue. It does look like the thing out of alien. We should probably it, take the alien. A, we should probably take a yeah. We should probably take a picture of this. Not enough time, mate. You got to take off yeah? that taste. I mean, it look it it looks bad. It looks it looks like it's been banned. Okay. He's popping it in there. Oh, what, my talk us through it. God. What is it? I cannot imagine what it'd be like. I'm going to taste some of the red um, glue. Oh. Ah, it's so sweet. Oh, it's troublingly sweet, Vin. So sweet. But also salty. And salty, and it tastes like the sea. <laughs> <laughs> oh. What's the ball taste like? The ball hey. <laughs> can you crunch the ball? You can, I'm crunching the ball right now, but it... I'm going to taste the Pelon Pelonetta. I'm just it's hoping it's not cheap, meat. It is a very cheap bubble gum. Oh, look, it's a lollipop that you would never have a meat Made lollipop. of ham. <laughs> it's, no, this, so this is tamarind... Oh. It smells like uh, curry paste. Oh. Mm. So sweet. Oh. It's a very strange sensation, Vin. Ah. It's quite hard. It's actually... Ah. Like a boiled sweet. Do you know what it tastes like? It's like lime pickle with a sweet strawberry interior. I'll give it here, mate. Have a go on it, mate. 100% up for that. It's very aubergine pickly. It's like hubba Brilliant. bubba that's been dipped in sugar. Yeah. What an odd... And I'm not sure if it's gum or sweets, because I'm chewing it and it's not going down. We've never had that flavour sensation before. We've had... The... It's like overcooked cake, but a sweet. Yeah. But also a pickle. Yeah. Very <laughs> odd. I think that would go down well at an Indian restaurant yeah. as, a, as, yeah. a, as a as a finisher. Mexican Strange dessert. Be a bit of finisher. <laughs> <laughs> Start in a finisher. Like Josh Butler. 
Yeah. <laughs> um, oh. Who all, would also go down well in an Indian restaurant. Nice. Uh, folks, thanks very much for your tastes, uh, Carrie and Dave. What oh. a bizarre combo of tamarind and sort of sugar. Um, oh. Keep those tastes coming in to uh, Radio X Towers. The web, uh, address is available online. And right now, this is... Oh, is this brand new? It's brand new from Gorillaz, John. Uh, it features Doom and Alban. Ah. <laughs> Jenny from Savages. Oh, and Noel Gallagher on backing vocals. Hang on. Gallagher, Alban, together. Ah. I think Graham's also playing guitar on it. The G-Man. Graham's G-Man. on it as well. Cheese in the dressing room provided by the other one. That, yeah, by Alex. Yeah. Alex, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, there you go. I mean, we never thought this would happen in 1995, to be honest. It's brand new from Gorillaz. It's We Got the Power. You listen to Ellis and John on Radio X. Radio X. Ellis James and John Robbins. In a studio first, it's time for a second reprise of Tick Off a Taste. Uh, I'm in a situation here, Ellis. John's (laughs) just tasted something, and the look on his face is absolutely... Well, Howl. I've just so I opened up another one of the bags of sweets and it's got sort of laces in, but underneath the laces are little, um, little sachets of what it says is dolce liquido enchilado, which is flavored hot liquid candy. Okay. And I opened it and it all fell on my f- hands and legs. <laughs> I'm now covered in flavored hot liquid candy. <laughs> oh. And I think you just suck it out of the packet. I didn't let me get a flavor of this. It is a new taste. <laughs> it does not exist on Earth. It's a new... What? It's, it's, a, it's a follow-up to umami. It's like if you took salt water... Right. I'm already with you. And added the... It's chlorine. Added the dusting of sour fruit. <laughs> sour fruit sort of sweets. Yeah, like tongue fast sticks or something like that. And then put in some Tabasco. Oh, right. And then just sort of general sugar and a bit of gravy. Okay. <laughs> And it's in a little sachet when you called taste, Lucas Costano. When you tasted it during the Gorilla song, <laughs> you said, oh, 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 that is stupid. It is and I've stupid. never seen anyone refer to a taste as stupid before. It's the stupidest taste <laughs> that's <laughs> ever existed. <laughs> stupid. Well, like, kids in Mexico don't know what they're missing out on. You don't know, shouldn't have to eat this have nonsense. Have a, du- have a double decker. Have a double decker, Have a fudge. Have a fudge. Have a no chomp. need to dip it in cayenne pepper. <laughs> <laughs> right, folks, this is Run DMC with Walk This Way. And some Freddos to Mexico. <laughs> that was Ziggy Stardust there, there's Mr. Zavid Bowie. You're listening to Ellis James and John Robbins on Radio X. And now, it's the sexiest time of the show. It's time for Tick Off a Taste. And appearing tonight on... Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste. Take off a taste. That's right, folks. It's a complex feature where Ellis and I tick off tastes. Tastes are sent in from around the globe by listeners with eagle eyes in the supermarkets. So we get to discover new flavour realms and texture frontiers. It's the... It's the most diverse taste-based feature on global radio, I think. It's correct. Um, today's tastes come from Tom Stegall. Old Stegzy. Stego. <laughs> he says, Dearest Hammers, long-time listener, first-time electronic mailer, I'm bearing edible gifts from the Far East. During a recent trip to South Korea and Japan, I was quite truly mystified by the sheer amount of items that would tick off a taste-worthy. <laughs> Um, now, there's an awful lot of items which we may, we're going to try some in future weeks, um, but the ones we're going to try today are hot and spicy seaweed crisps and fire strength dried squid. Fire strength, big, big claim. Big claim. As much as, and he uh, goes on, as much as I would like to think these two items would push the boundaries of Project Spice, I fear they will be mostly likely taste as disgustingly sweet as most Korean snacks do. Therefore, I include more treats for you to try from Japan. Well, we'll get on to Japan uh, maybe next week, uh, Tom. But uh, today, one country at a time. Well, yeah, one country at a time, mate. So I'm opening the seaweed crisps, Ellis. Thank you very much. And these are hot and spicy. Um, oh, oh, they're crispy. I can hear that crisp. Let's have a go on those bad boys. How do they taste? Like Doritos. Do they- <laughs> oh, I like them. I like them. I do like seaweed. Ooh. Anything seaweed-based. Although someone told me once that... Um, Actually, it's this... a weird aftertaste. 
The seaweed you get in Chinese restaurants is actually fried cabbage. Yeah, and it's so expensive. But it's nice, though, because oh, they mate. put so much sugar in it. Who'd have thought sugar and cabbage would be nice? But everything's <laughs> nice with sugar. <laughs> I'm going to say... Thank you, sugar. <laughs> those seaweed crisps, they're like little cubes, cube discs... <laughs> little squares is the word. <laughs> That's the word I'm looking for. A square, not a two. They're basically a two D cube. They're a crisp, <laughs> but they've got the flop of seaweed. Yeah, but they, they they're, they're crunchy with flop. Mm. I wouldn't have thought you could do that. Um, and uh, now we move on to the uh, the fire strength dried squid. Fire strength, big claim. Big claim. Is and this never fire? What's strength? this squid? Yeah. Can you eat this? Yeah. Oh yeah, got pescatarian. But I'm going to eat it dependent on your reaction. Oh, that's fine. Is it really? I've certainly got a fire in my mouth. I've got a bit of floppy squid. Oh, oh it's like jerky, but made of squid. On the front cover? Yes, is that's, that, that's that, a good description. Is that a cat saying hot? <laughs> um, no, it's a tortoise holding a flag <laughs> and an islander. Oh, just... it's on the back. Oh, on the back. It's like a little t- turtle and it's saying hot. Yeah, a turtle with a, a turtle with a flower coming out of its head. It reminds me a little bit of Block Sinks. What this? The t- taste and smell. It's very usually s- when our sink smells like this, I call Izzy and get her to sort it out. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to be tucking in. I think we'll give those to people not we vibing. don't like in the office. I'm not vibing on this at all, actually. No, I'm going to have. I'm going to have a seaweed crisp to take the flavour away. Uh, but thanks, uh, Tom, for those tastes you sent in for I us mean, to tick off. I mean, they're not always going to be nice, that's the thing. Uh, it's not tick off a nice taste. <laughs> it's not like a taste, or, it's yeah. tick off a taste. And it's it's not preemptively tick off a taste so that you know it's nice and then taste taste it on the show taste. This, I is, mean, that wouldn't make any sense at all. This is as live as it gets. <laughs> And as good a feature as you could possibly imagine. <laughs> Folks, uh, you can send in any of your tastes uh, to Radio X at Global Radio, Leicester Square. Ellis James and John Robbins. Radio X. That was Outside by Catfish and the Bottom End. You're listening to Ellis James and John Robbins on Radio X, standing in for Johnny Vaughan all this week, 4 till 7pm. Not very long left of today's show. My face is straining because I didn't like... Whatever it was, we had to taste there. What, what was the second one? It was uh, it was fire fire dried squid. Fire dried squid. It's probably it's slightly sweet at the same time as being savoury. Yeah, and rub, not rubbery, but sort I, of. I can stringy. I, I can string. feel it in the back of my neck. But anyway, we've got music <laughs> coming up from um, Stephonics, also a single of the week from Biffy Clyro. So stay tuned. To Record always... of the week, Grandad. Sorry. <laughs> oh, you out getting some of your. 78s from <laughs> Woolworths. My gramophone records. Yeah. Uh, yeah, our record of the week from Biffy Clyro. So stay tuned to Alice James and John Robbins on Radio X. And appearing tonight on... Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste. Tick off a taste. It's that simple, folks. You send us in tastes, we tick them off. Uh, tastes previously unsampled by Ellis and I. And this this week's tastes come uh, courtesy of an incredibly generous taste gift box set from uh, German listener, Ellen. Yeah. Uh, uh, Ellis, uh, you got the letter Ellen wrote us there. Yes, she uh, gave us both gifts, um, apart from the tests. So I got a, uh, a German version of Betabit. Yeah, to, to pract- help you practice. For me to practice at home, because I'm so bad at Betabit. Uh, and also I got um, a very interesting book on football from the 60s, because I like football and I like the past. What did you get, John? I got a book called Berlin Blues. Yeah. And um, listen to the How on brand is this? It's 1989, and whatever he isn't hanging out in the local bars, Herr Lehmann lives entirely free of responsibility in the bohemian Berlin district of Kreuzberg. Through years of judicious sidestepping and heroic indolence, this barman has successfully avoided the demands of parents, landlords, neighbours and women. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, so, uh, I'm really looking uh, forward to reading it. should that. be called German John. German John. German John, the responsibility of Ida. But anyway, uh, thank you very much uh, for your letter and for the gifts, Ellen. And um, she goes on to say, I hope my English is good enough. Your English is absolutely spot on. The email is flawless. Your, well, the yeah, letter, rather. The letter and the, the handwriting, very neat. Yes. Uh, now, the, the, the tastes for Vin, because Vin, we once discussed ages ago how in Europe all um, crisps are paprika flavoured. And Ellen took it on herself to prove us wrong. So she sent you in two different types of crisps, Vin. Danke. Oh, hello. 
Didn't someone's know had a linguist in the room. Someone's been to D. Jurgen Centrum <laughs> or school. Uh, so the first flavor crisps are mayonnaise flavor crisps. Right. Then. Yay. Or get this. Mustard and honey. Oh, worse. Which no. do you fancy, mate? M mayonnaise? Oh, you've got to go hey. mustard and honey. I love mustard and I love honey. Oh, oh, all right, all right, for real, let's do that. Let's Hernig, do and that. Hernig and Senf. Hernig and Senf. Hernig and Senf. Hernig and Senf. Crunch chips. <laughs> <laughs> Hernig and Senf crunch chips. Let's put a nice little label on the front. That's and also, they are a massive bag. I mean, yeah. it's too big. Massive they are. Massive it is. Um, so, eat, so, first taste for Vin. I'm digging in. Hernigan Senf Crunch Chips. Whoa. What do they taste of? Hernigan um, Senf? I thought there wasn't going to be any mustard in it, but that's a lot of, it's a lot of mustard. So looks good. There's more Senf than Hernig. Yes, there's more Senf than Hernig. I can't wait for that. Love a bit of Senf. How much Hernig is there of interest? What percentage? Oh, go on then. Trenta Percenta Hernig. Uh, seven Trenta Percenta <laughs> Senf. Oh, Ellis is diving right in. It's got a kick, hasn't it? it has to, yeah, it's nothing like the honey I tried in South Pembrokeshire last week. Chuck us some of those scents, mate. Crunch oh. chips. <laughs> I'm having one. I'd eat more, though. Not a bag that big, but I, I'd, I could imagine. John looks confused. I think I like the scent more than the hernig, and it reminds me of half of the greatest crisp of all time, uh, <laughs> the Brannigan's uh, Roast Beef and Mustard Crisp. Oh, yes. Texture, 10 out of 10. Taste, 10 out of 10. Roast Beef and Mustard, is that a thing? Yeah. No, they do it. Is, isn't it ham and mustard? I think it's ham and No, it's ham and mustard. pickle, roast beef and mustard. Ooh. Yes. One nil Robbins. Um, <laughs> You're so. the best at crisps. <laughs> I am the best at crisps. I, in my week of um, recovering from food poisoning, made the error of thinking I was ready to move away from bland food. So I went to Tesco and bought 10 bags of pickled onion space raiders. They what? Hey, come on, John. <laughs> What's happened? What's really happening? <laughs> <laughs> what? Why? Why? Well, because I've not been drinking, you can't, you know, emotions come to the fore. So it's you like a different reality. So you just swapped devices. You went from rum to pickled onion monster munch, was no, it? No, Space Raiders. Space Raiders. And uh, started watching Poirot, even though I don't like it. Yeah. Tell... What? Anyway, Ellis. What's the real problem? <laughs> I don't know. Did you actually have food poisoning, John? Yeah, I did. Though it, I think it might have been a broader thing. Um, <laughs> so, El, we are going <laughs> to... Anxiety spew. <laughs> we, are going to, we are going to taste more tastes later because we talked too long about Chris. what's really going on. <laughs> uh, folks, right now, uh, this is Find Me by Kings of Leon and we've got more tastes coming up very soon. Radio X. Ellis James and John Robbins. These are German tastes, courtesy of a German PCD, Ellen, who uh, is a big fan of ours. And we've already done crisps, honey and mustard. But now... Hernig and Senf. Hernig and Senf. Um, and now we've got some... They're, they're dissolvable sachets of uh, sort of a fruity kid's drink. But the German for sachet is Portionbüttel. <laughs> So, Ellis, we've got eight Persian bootles, and um, you, I'm going to give you the names of the flavours, and you have to select which one you want. Okay. And you then dissolve it in your glass of water. You can have Citroën. Citroën. Citrus. Yeah. Orange. Oh. Himbeer. What's that? We just don't know. Or Waldmeister. Oh. I'm going to go with Waldmeister. Waldmeister for Ellis. That Sounds one's like green. Who plays in midfield for Bayer Leverkusen. So bear in mind, I've I've had food poisoning. I'm going to go for him beer. Oh, if you were like that, um, so news oh, reader who was sick doing the shipping forecast because he was hungover. I'd love for you to. I'd love to tick off a taste to push you to your very limits. <laughs> now I'm now opening the portion bootles. And pouring Portion them... are a better word than sachet, isn't it? Into the glasses. Oh, and it looks murky. <laughs> it looks fizzy. It's fizzy, Ellis, and murky. So, have you fizz? Do you want a it's spoon? It's a bit like lemon and barley. Do you want to stir off your taste? Yeah. Yeah, it does look a bit... It looks a bit like a sort of uh, a powdered um, energy tablet. It also... It's fizzing Baraka. so much... Um, <laughs> It looks like the kind of thing that people take for hangovers in films. Yes, uh, Alka-Seltzer. Yeah. Antacid. Oh, it's mine still fizzing. Oh, my God. What does yours taste of? 
all the sweets. Does it? <laughs> Every sweet ever in a drink. Oh, I don't mind it, mate. I'm going to taste mine I now. I love sweets, but I don't want all of them at the same time in my mouth. Oh, yeah, that's like uh, when you eat at one of all the Skittles. When you go for yes, it. and it, oh, you always Germans it. have turned it into a drink. You uh, you always regret it. And apparently, German kids sometimes they just um, what's the word? They mainline it and just uh, just what, d- they just pour the sachet into their mouths. Oh, like I used to do with when you used to get go extra. On then. I'll do that. Will you? Yeah. Oh man, that's fighting. I'm talk. a German kid. Uh, what do you want? A different flavour then? Uh, orange, please. Orange. Uh, I'm just passing you the portion, Bootle. Oh, sorry. So, just straight into the mouth. Straight into the mouth. I can't believe you're mainlining a brauspulver. A hodge browser brauspulver. It's only a little portion, Bootle. He's a wonderkind. <laughs> oh, he's gone mad. Oh. Oh. Is it intense? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Oh, my God. Is it good? Yeah. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> I, just, I just saw all that portion bootle in your mouth. Ah. Is it intense? I'm being attacked from the inside. <laughs> My immune system is shutting down. <laughs> oh. Well. No wonder German kids are so disciplined. <laughs> they need some way to... <laughs> they need to let their, hair, let their hair down sometimes. Folks, that was <laughs> Elish... Ellis, mainlining a portion <laughs> of, of Brouse Pulver. Uh, you are more than welcome to send in any tastes oh, you want to... Shuck up the world! <laughs> <laughs> He's turned into Muhammad Ali. Shuck up the world! Uh, folks, coming up, we've got music I'm from pretty. Muse and the Amazons, so stay tuned to Radio X. <laughs> folks, it's almost time uh, for Tick Off a Taste. However, just a bit of Tick Off a Taste correspondence from the mysteriously named MR. Um... He or she says, last week's tick of a taste, as well as being informative and entertaining, has also given me something I've sought for many years, or so I hope. I think crisps is a good topic of conversation. <laughs> and last week's TOAT did not disappoint. Starting strong with Hernig and Senf, there was also a Space Raiders multi-pack anecdote. And then who can forget John declaring himself the 1-0 winner at crisps for correctly <laughs> confirming the arrangement of Brannigan's flavours. Then... During the dissolvable sachet tasting, when we thought crisp chat was over, John made a claim which I think, no, I hope, was about to turn us back to Savory Town. In the podcast, <laughs> in the podcast at forty-eight minutes, he referred to German kids mainlining the sachets by just pouring them into his mouth, like he used to do with, with, with what? Um, so apparently, I didn't finish my great anecdote, and I just left it trailing in the air. Right. Now, I'm hoping that you read this and will remember what you're about to do. I do, mate, I do. Tell me it was the bonus flavour sachets you used to get in salt or vinegar discos. I hope it was. Well, MR, you're bang right. I was about to mention mainlining sachets of salt and vinegar flavouring from discos that you used to get in the past. I've, um... Uh, I've never received a positive response when I've referred to this seemingly mythical sachet. People look at me, and it seems as though they are thinking, that didn't exist. It did exist. Please, John, tell them. I'm happy to tell me. It did I, exist. I tell you what I remember, which sounds like an anecdote from 100 years ago. Do you remember Smith's crisps? Salt and shake. Salt and shake. They didn't have salt on the crisps. You had to... You've got to apply your own salt. Yeah, I didn't like them because they're no. salt-flavoured, and anyone who has salt-flavoured crisps is an idiot. And I'm looking at you, Ellis James, because you often order salt-flavoured crisps. Are you salted? Yeah, lovely. Just a classic crisp. Um, what, what, are you prawn cocktail? Yeah, all the crazy flavours. That's not 1979. <laughs> um, but, yeah, they used to have a sachet of... And it wasn't just, like, salt and shake. They were already salt and vinegar-flavoured discos, but you had a sachet of, like, nuclear juice... Uh, and you could put it straight in your mouth and you wouldn't be able to taste anything for another hour because it was too intense. Anyway, now, time for Tick of a Taste. And appearing tonight on... Tick of a Taste, Tick of a Taste. Tick of a Taste, Tick of a Taste. Tick of a Taste, Tick of a Taste. Tick of a Taste. Tick of a Taste. Now, folks, uh, this week's taste for us to tick off has been sent... There's no accompanying letter, but it's been sent uh, from Chili Food. Um, I'm just looking at the invoice here. <laughs> From Michael, and it's been sent to Herr, as in German for Mr, Sir John Robbins, <laughs> uh, which I appreciate very much. And Ellis, are they, or are they not, Pepper King Habanero Kartoffel Chips? Yes, they are Habanero Kessel Chips, Hasta la Vista, baby. Uh, what does it say? What's the little explanation on it? Extreme Scharf. Extreme Scharf. 
No, I d- um, we like our crisps sharp, but this week they're extreme sharp. Pepper King, sharp. There's a lot of exclamation marks on the sharp, so I imagine that, um, well, it's They're not joking when they say extreme. <laughs> These are extreme sharps. Can I see the packaging, Ellis? It's a big old pack of 125 grams. Also, the packet's full. It doesn't do that thing you often get with crisps in the UK, where it's a big packet, but it's only a third full. Oh, John. hummus chips. Oh, big sinner on that Don't front. get me started! Make the Sorry, waste of long. packaging. <laughs> Pepper King, life at in and de Sharon product, uh, de shice venture. I'm not sure I can cope with extreme sharp. I mean, t- you'd have to have five friends with you to finish this bag of crisps. Yeah, or they you look- haven't got five friends. <laughs> no, they, they look sharp, mate. Okay. I'm ticking. Oh, 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 it's sharp. Oh, wow, once the, once, it's once, it's extreme sharp. Once it sharps you, it really sharps you. Oh, I've been shafted. <laughs> oh, hi there. Hi oh. there, pain. Is Hello, okay? pain, my old friend. Stay in my mouth for now, if you don't mind. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't mind it. What a lovely level of heat. Yeah. It's unpleasant, but pleasant at the same time. Way hotter than your high street um, spicy crisp in oh, the UK. Don't get me started on flaming yes. hot, S- flaming like, hot Doritos. What you just mean is it tastes of sugar and barbecue sauce. This, that's a great heat of a crisp. There's sharp in this. There's sharp. And if I was, if I was chilling out, maybe at a at a, 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 a trendy house party in London's fashionable West End, mm. I'd be shafted enough. Certainly for me to keep conversing with, I don't know, the film producers I was talking to. <laughs> but I would be able to maintain that conversation because I'm not so sharp that it's rendered me um, illegible. Do you know what? how I would perfectly describe the heat of those crisps? Sharp. Too hot for my mum, not too hot for my stepdad. Lovely stuff. And you don't have to know your mum or stepdad to get that. Works with every mum and stepdad. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, listeners, believe it or not, we are paid to try new foods on the radio. In this, it's Britain's favourite feature, it's Tick Off a Taste. And appearing tonight on... Tick Off a Taste, Tick Off a Taste. Tick Off a Taste, Tick Off a Taste. Tick Off a Taste, Tick Off a Taste. Tick Off a Taste. Tick Off a Taste. Uh, yes, that's right. It's tick of a taste. Uh, these are tastes that have been sent in from David Milner uh, in Durham, and I love his letter because, for a kickoff, he's given it a title like it's a piece of homework. Two items for tick of a taste. Morning, guys. Please try and enclose a couple of items for tick of a taste. The first items are caramel and apple pie tea bags, which I picked up this week in Germany. John, they're fine for vegans and they're life changingly delicious. However, we're not going to try those because, as John pointed out, um, also it- irrelevant if they're fine for vegans. Don't care anymore, mate. <laughs> I am a uh, I am a, a pescatarian. Even though today, in a nightmare scenario, I've got to mention this. I bit meat. How? I got the wrong... Is that wrong... why you don't want any, fo- any physical contact? <laughs> I got the wrong uh, cheese and tomato croissant from a popular high street store, Pret. So, so what was it? A cheese and... What it was croissant? ham, oh. and I bit into it, and I immediately screamed and spat it out, and the taste was disgusting. I threw it in the bin, and I felt sad. Where did you scream? It, out of my mouth. No, no, I mean, were you still in the shop? No, I was in the you? office here. <laughs> I'd have loved to have walked in on that. <laughs> Joe Good was there. She said, are you all right? And I said, I've just eaten meat. I hadn't eaten it. I spat it out. Anyway. That's all right. Well, anyway, um, however, David, he's given us a lot of tips on radio. Yeah, um, a lot of broadcasting pointers. A lot pointers. of broadcasting. It's a great letter. A lot of broadcasting pointers. We'll take a few of them on board. Uh, the second item I've packed separately and thought it might be more impactful <laughs> if you were to hand it to the other one on air without prior notice. He's really stage managing is. his own taste. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, we're taking David's advice on board uh, in order to make some impactful radio. So, John, I'm handing you the taste. I don't know what's in it. Okay, it's in an envelope. Oh, and it rattles. I, I guess it's some sort of tic tac. Yeah. It's in a sealed envelope. It- oh, I can't. What well, are they? That we should have thought about this before because it's a rude it. word name. It's got a rude word. Oh, okay. Um, which oh, I'm going that- to pronounce in a way that stops it being rude. Ch- I, be careful, mate. We have been sent a box of spunk. Okay, okay. Uh, that's the last time I'll say that. Um, 
Um, oh, they're little sort of. Um, so they, so they, they fun tic tacs are they? They're fun tic tacs, but I've got a feeling it's gonna. Be, we're back to our old friend salty licorice. <laughs> so I've taken out three spunks. Okay, thank you very much. And oh. I'm now going to. They're sort of hard little. What's they look like? They look like fruit gums. Yeah, they've got. They're sort of bird shaped. They're, they're like little, little chickens, I think. They're oh. Little, um, oh, it's intense in aniseed licorice. It's intense licorice. I don't like intense licorice. I like intense licorice, but this is intense. This is licorice 2.0. Mm. I like aniseed because it reminds me of uh, the war. I don't know. I feel like this is sort of what it tastes like an old science teacher's breath. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you've just lit your Bunsen burner and he's leaning over you to make sure you don't make the flame go blue and yeah. light spills over the sink. <sighs> and um, My friend, um, he burnt the tap with a Bunsen burner and he had to write out the rules of the lab a hundred times. Oh. Yeah. Naughty boy. Works for Tesco's now. Oh, uh, thanks. Oh, my God. Is it Martin? Um, it is. David Milner from Durham. David, thank you very much for sending in these tastes. Thanks for all your taste tips. And I'm left with a science teacher's mouth in my mouth. <laughs> this is Dan Albach's Shine On Me, which I think is an absolute hammer. Ellis James and John Robbins. Radio X. And appearing tonight on... Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste. Take off a taste. It's one of those. It's one of those features that's easy to work out what it is from the title. We're ticking off tastes now. We've got a very exciting taste to tick off this week. However, John. Uh, it's an ancient taste, isn't it? We found it from our taste box. Yes, it's um, it's a mystery taste from our taste box. So apologies that we can't uh, credit credit the tasty the specific taste sender. Though I think it may have been a batch of bigger tastes. Um, it is uh, it's a packet of crisps, um, a Chinese slash Japanese uh, typeface, uh, Calibi Calbi. And um, what I've noticed, the best before date is they do it... You know how the Americans do month, day, year? Yeah. Insane. We do day, month, year. Um, the place this crisps do, do year, month, day. Oh, God. It's too hard. Oh, I can't cope with all of the different cultures in the world. Um, <laughs> There's too also, much I've just, going on. I've just realised they are three weeks past their sell-by date. That's fine. It's fine with crisps. It's fine with crisps. I don't want to be part of this mad waste culture. They say your onions go off in a week. I've had, well, I've had apples for six months. <laughs> yeah. but I've had onions. Onions go off when they go off. Yes. It's up to the individual onion. Y yes. And I will I will deduce that on a case-by-case -case basis. Yes. I'm not be told by some shirt at Tesco's yes. when Slice. to throw away perfectly good onions. Slice into the onion and make a, make a judgment call, John. Absolutely. Um, Fry as much as you like. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to open up now the thing with these crisps is though i can't read them uh, most of the uh, words they are chocolate crisps they are crisps like mccoy styled ridge crisps covered in chocolate now i like crisps and i love chocolate i'm not sure if i'm gonna like this oh dear they smell like weetos Okay. Um, no, are we toast the chocolate ones that yes. have the professor? The professor, yeah. The professor. Okay, so I'm taking out a chocolate crisp. Oh, it looks God. like... Oh, they look like they've been, been soiled. Dipped. It yeah. does look like a regular crinkle cut crisp has been has been run over by a tractor. Mm. Yes, that's a, incredibly that is exactly what it looks like. Uh, Ellis, are you, you're taking... I'm taking... They smell like Nesquik. Oh, that's so weird. On a train... I will often treat myself to a bag of ready-salted crisps and a Kit Kat. And it's like they've melted together in your pocket. Yeah. I, and I, it's I, got that cereal, mm. that uh, European cereal chocolate taste. Mm. I think... Oh, my giddy. I'm broadly, sorry. I'm not a fan. I think... Oh. Well, I've gone back in for a second crisp. I Well, my a friend of mine... Oh, blimey, no, no. Once got a massive thing of white chocolate pretzels... And the first one you eat, you think, that's absolutely disgusting. And the second one you eat, you think, yep, yeah, that's definitely disgusting. And by the hundredth one you're eating, <laughs> you're thinking, 
these are still disgusting. Why am I still eating them? Like fags. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, I really got on board with them pretty, <laughs> pretty early doors. Oh. Um, so, keep sending in your taste to tick off to Radio X, care of Global Radio on Leicester Square, WC1... 30 Leicester Square. 30 Leicester Square. WC2H. Oh. WC2H. 7LA. 7LA. Well, I never, <sighs> I never correspond to myself here. <laughs> no. Do you know what you could do? You could send yourself a nice letter to open. <laughs> <laughs> and then every day as you come in, you're like, oh, who's this? Oh, hi, the John. Pigeon. Yeah, hi, John. Um, Don't folks, worry, you're a talented broadcaster. Not my words, the words of Brian May. Brian May. Uh, team, uh, coming up, we have got... The words, the words we asked him to say, admittedly. I asked him to, because I knew it would stand me in good stead over the next 40 years. I'll always have that. I'll always, always have that. John Semptine, he's doing... I don't know, it'll be some sort of a weird version of In Our Time crossed with Desert Island Discs. <laughs> so a Sunday, a sun, no, you'll be doing the Sunday morning God slot. Oh, yeah. I think. And, uh Thought for the day with John Robbins. <laughs> Grief it's apples. It's awful. <laughs> it never gets better. And appearing tonight on... Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste. Take off a taste. Now, guys, if you've not uh, been born witness to take off a taste before, uh, what happens is people send us in tastes that uh, Ellis and I are unlikely to have t ticked off, and we then tick off those tastes. It's fun. It is fun. And um, this week, I'm slightly... I'm dubious about these tastes. Uh, they've been sent in by listener Nathan, and thank you very much, Nathan. He writes in his letter, I recently spent a week in Trinidad and Tobago and Guyana for work. Whilst this may sound extremely glamorous, the truth is I spent most of my time in meetings. Um, one of the ex most exciting aspects of the trip was the opportunity to find tastes for you to tick off. I didn't have time in Guyana, but on my last day in Trinidad, I managed to find these enclosed treats. I hope you enjoy ticking them off. Now, these treats... They're sort of fruit, but they exist in the hinterland between fresh and dried fruit, and I would describe them as damp fruit. I didn't think you could cure fruit before. You can... Well, I'm not... I hope they are cured. They look diseased. So basically, we've got tamarind candy and sweet pawpaw. The sweet pawpaw looks like a sort of a heart that's mm. been cut up. And I just don't know whether the sort of um, integrity of the packaging has been breached in transit. They look quite sort of floppy, and one of them's got a, a seed in it. Vin, will you try one of them first? Okay, what, what do you want me to have? The one that looks like a heart, like that's, a segment of heart. The pawpaw. The sweet pawpaw. Is pawpaw a fruit? I think so. Uh, it feels a bit wrong, doesn't they it? They feel soft and hard right, at the I'm same doing it. time. I'm going for it. We've all been there. He's ticking it off. Oh. What are we thinking? Oh, it's... Mm. Sharp. Is it sharp? Uh, yeah. I don't mind if it's sharp. Whack them over here. I'm not... Oh, God. Mm. I'm going to taste that for a while. So, are you? Uh, oh, no. Not spat anything out before on air. Yes, you have. Oh, have you liar. I? Yeah, you've, you've spat stuff out and took it for taste. It, do you know what it smells like? This is bad, John. It smells like an old water bottle. John, don't like it. It smells like an old water bottle that okay. you'd like, after a year of taking it to the gym, what you get around the rim. So I'm going to try the uh, the tamarind candy. Oh. It says it's spicy. It's all out. It's come out. It's not eating it anymore. <laughs> oh. The tamarind candy is basically like compressed sugar. Vin, I think this might get the the taste out of your mouth. Uh huh. Spicy compressed sugar would be my uh, vibe on the tamarind with a sort of a... John, don't touch the pawpaw, mate. I'm not going to. Save yourself. It's already, it's stained my fingers with smell. Okay, here's, um, here goes the tamarind. Go for it, mate. That's just like sort of... Uh, Crush of sugar. It's just crystallised Familiar sugar. sugar. Familiar, our old friend sugar. <laughs> you can't go wrong with just a big wedge of damp fine, sugar. Fine, Oh, it's got heat in it. It has got heat in it, mate. Oh, it is spicy. Right. I don't mind it. It's okay. I've never had spicy sugar before. That was a hell of a roller coaster, mate. It was. Don't, I mean, put the pawpaw away. For the, the love of God. Pull, pour away and eat some spicy, damp sugar. There you go, folks. Uh, if you want to send in some tastes for us to tick off, you're more than welcome. We'll be very <laughs> pleased to receive them. Right now, as Travis coughs up some pawpaw, pour, <laughs> it's time for Oasis with Supersonic. Oh, what a deal. Ellis James and John Robbins. Radio X. Coming up, uh, it'll be almost time for Tick Off a Taste. Now, Tick Off a Taste, if you don't listen to our Saturday show, 
is it's exactly what you imagine it is. It's two men tasting things on the radio. Uh, it's fairly, fairly simple in its premise, but it leads to great content. Um, John and I are sent in uh, foods, often from other cultures, other countries, that we tick off, decide if we like them or not. John, what have we had sent in to us this week? OK, so we've got a couple of German chocolate items. Manasacher. OK. Uh, which is Neideregelubach. Neid- uh, and one of them is whiskey cola chocolate, and the other one is bourbon and uh, marzipan and apple. But, but bourbon and marzipan and apple The chocolate. classic combo. <laughs> Grief. Uh, the next one is Nigel's pepper sauce, which looks worryingly homemade. Okay. I mean, the best before date is written in pen. <laughs> yeah, it's like buying jam from a covered market. And finally, some Indonesian sweets called Ting Ting Jaha which, um, if I can say, have the least appetising logo of all time. (laughs) The logo looks like sort of um, hairy willies with (laughs) with weeds growing out of them. Truly, truly disgusting looking. I know, I apologise for the language. They'd be watching me. You what? (laughs) They'd be watching me. (laughs) I was implying that I had weeds growing out of my bits. You had a gentleman's agreement? Yeah. my. uh... Oh, I think they might be ginger root. Yes, it's ginger root with right. hair growing out of it. Well, listeners, what would you like us to try? Would you like the... Um... Manasaka, Nigel's pepper sauce with uh, felt tip pen, best before, <laughs> or uh, hairy, weedy willies? <laughs> Radio. Radio. X. Ellis James and John Robbins. You're listening to Ellis James and John Robbins on Radio X on a voyage of flavour discovery, as it's time for Tick Off a Taste. And appearing tonight on... Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste. Take off a taste. That's right. Uh, we punted it out there and the public have spoken. John, what are we going to be trying? We're tasting uh, Hairy Willies. <laughs> right, OK. The Ting Ting Jahi. They are um, Indonesian sweets and uh, according to Wikipedia... Uh, Savieux magazine identified them as uh, one of the hottest products for the next century. Hottest as in trendy and Trendiest, exciting rather yeah. than spicy. Okay, well, everyone in the studio is going to try one. So, John, yes. get your taste out. There you go, Rachel. Vinay. Thanks, mate. Mel. Okay, and down. me. So they're in sort of little paper paper wrappers and they have the consistency like, of chewed gum. Yeah, like the notes with them said it would be tough to not eat the paper as well, apparently. Oh, who? Where's our, the, the letter? F- oh, oh hello, to, hello to you, sir. Uh, they're oh, stuck to the paper. It's like sort of like sugary, earwax. yeah, yeah, sugary earwax mm. that's been put in greaseproof paper and right, given to a friend. Licking okay, Vin's it, going in. Licking it off. Ooh. Oh my gosh. What's it like? It's, it's the weirdest oh. consistency. Mm. It's like resin that dinosaur flies were caught in in Jurassic mm. Park. Do you know what? It's quite nice, that. But it actually tastes nice. It's, it's quite. It's, it's just like ginger chewing gum. It's like ginger and cinnamon, mate. Mm. I really like that. It's sweet. Yeah. But I'm not saying no to it. Hmm. I think it's going to be a taste for a new generation. I'd like that in drink form. Yes! Do you Vin. know what I was just going to say? It, you know those little stock pots you can get, which is sort of glutinous hmm. stock? Yeah. It's like that, but ginger, and I can imagine dissolving it in hot water. And what then putting some whiskey in it. What are you stock pots for? What? What are you using stock pots for, John? Uh, bolognese, all pasta sauces, or stews. Okay. What, are you, what do you use stock pots for? Um, just, just, I'll just look at them. <laughs> <laughs> do you not use stock when yeah, you cook? Yeah, 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 let's not talk about But this stock, is a man man. who's never made a lasagna before. All right, let's not... Okay, you, let's do you not do. use stock? Yeah, I use the I use stock. Yeah, of course, all the time. For God's sake. <laughs> Mate, Cereal, cook rice in stock for yeah. tasty rice. All right. Yeah, well, maybe maybe I have done. Can't believe I've, you don't use. Stock. Maybe I have done. I've just forgotten about it. <laughs> uh, what did you think, Rachel? No, not a fan. Sorry. Is, is it, it what, too much for your sweet? <laughs> <laughs> are you? Are you uh, is it too out there for your Welsh palate? Basically, yeah. Okay. Do you have a similar upbringing to Ellis that you sort of? We're only allowed to toast for the first 13 years of your life. Yeah, exactly. Do you have the same meal on every night of the week? Is, did your mum do this? What, so Mon- Monday was always chicken kebs, Tuesday was always spaghetti bolognese, Wednesday, what would Wednesday have been? Oh, that was a meal that she took out of a, uh, she copied out of a magazine in Quick Fit. Uh, so we called it the Quick Fit meal. Uh, Thursday, I can't remember, then Friday was fish. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Ex- exactly the same as well. I love what well, even yeah. the Quick Fit recipe. <laughs> exactly the same. Every, yeah, it became quite popular. Quick Fit magazine food. <laughs> Radio. Radio X. Ellis James and John Robbins. You're listening to Ellis James and John Robbins on Radio X, and we just like to th- quickly thank Mike Bristow who sent in those tastes for us. He picked them up uh, in Bali on his recent honeymoons. So Mike Bristow with his ginger bisto. <laughs> Is basically what it tasted like, ginger yes. bisto. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> Coming up, we're going to be ticking off a taste. Do you like the sound of that, Lloyd? Yes. Do I get to try a new food? Yes, you do. He's good at this. How do you know what foods I haven't previously eaten? Oh, good point. Good point, actually. Um, well, I know you've tried Indonesian food, so it's a good job. We did the Indonesian sweets yesterday. Uh, yeah. Um, you won't have tried this food. Okay. I've, I've had horse once. It's not have- horse, is it? Have, no, no, it isn't. Have you had horse? Yes. What? Where did you have that? In the in a Tesco lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> no, John, John, oh, come on. Come on. Uh, that I'm going to take that off you, mate. It's mine. You gave it to me for my birthday. Yeah, but I told you to take it home. Um, well, I don't. I'm not on the radio at home. Am I? <laughs> um, I was on holiday in Sardinia. Yeah. Like at a barbecue, not a stables. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> very, very chewy. I don't really? recommend it. You wouldn't. No. Was it just the way it was cooked, or is that the vibe? I think it's a tough old meat anyway. A tough old meat. Well, there you go. Ellis James and John Robbins. Radio X. Spin Doctors, Two Princes. And if you'd like to listen to me take off a taste with Lloyd, then stay tuned. And appearing tonight on... Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste. Take off a taste. That's right, folks. This week's take off a taste comes from Steph, all the way from Berlin. She sent us a postcard saying, Images of Beer, which is a place. She says, Dear Ellis, John and producer Vin, another taste to take off from Germany. I don't really have anything witting to say, but hope this will make a nice change from the usual hot slash chilly stuff. Love the show. Thanks for the laughs and the wisdom. Lovely touch, that. It's good to know that some people are picking up on a lot of the wisdom uh, that we dish out here on this show. And uh, Steph has sent us two separate tastes. They are Nidarega Lubick Mana Sasha, um, which is what you're going to be... Uh, what. You're going to be... I'm going to be tasting, Lloyd. Uh, that's apple, bourbon and um, marzipan chocolate. It sort of looks... Uh, the packet is sort of black and looks sort of more deathly than I think it is. And, Lloyd, you're going to be taking tasting uh, Manasasha whiskey cola uh, chocolates. You like well, a whiskey, don't you, Lloyd? I do, but I would never normally put cola in it. Of course not. You're a sort of single malt guy, aren't you? Yes. What's your favourite whiskey? Oh, are you buying? <laughs> uh, always. Uh, 30-year-old Macallan, please. Ooh. Is that the nice? Mm. Very nice. And do you have it with ice? Uh, no, you're not supposed to, but it depends how many whiskies I've had previously. I have it with a drop of water. Yes. Is that all right? Some real whiskey nerds, do you know what they use? What? A pipette. D- yes, I've seen those. P- in fact, we went to the whiskey place in Edinburgh. Yes. And they have pipettes there. Yes. Yeah, lovely pipette. Nothing... Sexier than a guy with, <laughs> with, his, with his whiskey and his pipette at the bar. And warming it up with a Bunsen burner? No, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, so, Lloyd, here is your Mana Sasha whiskey cola. Thank you. Uh, so you can unwrap that. Um, Lloyd, so you can... It's like up- a little brick. It is like a little brick. <laughs> I mean, a lot of chocolates are sort of in that shape. <laughs> if the shape of the chocolate is amazing you, then the flavour's going to knock your socks off. <laughs> OK, go for it, Lloyd. He's, he's ticking. He's ticking. He's tasting. He's ticking off the taste. Good like sounds. That. Do you like it? Yeah. What does it taste of? I'm getting more whiskey than cola. Right, always good. Always but, good. Um, it's got a lovely... Soft fondanty centre, just like yourself. Oh, that's very kind of you to say, mate. Right, now I'm going to take off the uh, apple bourbon. Mmm. Oh! I'm getting... I'm getting marzipan and apple. And not an unpleasant little, um... Sort of waft of the, uh... Oh, get me a beer, Vin. <laughs> <laughs> little bit of a kick. Little bit of a kick sets the wheels in motion. 
yes, big fan of that. I'm probably going to eat all of that, I would have thought. Okay. Um, Chuck us a brick, mate, go on. A, a brick or a... A brick. A little brick. You can have a little... There you go, mate. Thanks, Dave. So Vin's going to tick off that taste. Oh, it is hard. It is? Well, <laughs> you've had chocolate I would before, not I guess. use it in the masonry scenario. No. Mm. But um, you could make a lovely little sort of um, chocolate house or a wall. Oh, there's a lot of whiskey in that. Is there? Mm. I've got more apple in mine. I have some of these, mate. We could do the end of the show drunk. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's... We don't usually do that. Uh, so thanks very much, <laughs> Steph, for sending in those tastes that we've ticked off. And appearing tonight on... Tick off a taste, tick off a taste. Tick off a taste, tick off a taste. Tick off a taste, tick off a taste. Tick off a taste. Tick off a taste. That's right. It's one of the top features we've brought across from our Saturday show, Tick Off a Taste, where two men, John and I, are paid to taste things, and then we tick them off. Because by the end of our lives, we're trying to tick off all the tastes the planet has to offer. So uh, Apart I'd... from those, um, I don't ever want to try those rotten eggs that you get in China, and I don't want to try the fermented shark that you're not allowed to open on a Oh, it's fermented herring, isn't it? Oh, yeah, fermented Ugh. herring. I don't yeah. want to try that. I, I did my own personal tick off a taste uh, this lunchtime. I tried chocolate with cinnamon in it, but I couldn't taste the cinnamon. So <laughs> Lovely stuff. So even, Ellis James, even applying tick off a taste rules to his own private life. In my own time, yes. Yeah. So, John. Oh, I've just opened the taste and I can smell it. Oh. So, um, today's taste is uh, courtesy of Tom Smith. He says, Hi, Legends. I hope this missive finds you well. I've sent you a new taste. It's Nigel's hot pepper sauce. I discovered... Nigel. Well, exactly. I'm not... S it doesn't fill you with confidence, Nigel's sauce, does it? <laughs> I discovered Nigel's hot scotch pepper sauce on a cold November day. My other half had taken me uh, to the local farmer's market with our two-year-old daughter. I was languishing in my shame well as it was the day after my birthday and there had been some maximum shunting the evening before. The farmer's market was not exactly buzzing, but I glumly walked around trying hard to keep a brave face, despite feeling that I might um, be ill at any moment. I spotted a new stall boasting some tasty-looking chilli sauces. I tried a bit of Nigel's eponymous sauce on a bit of pita bread, and the shame and hangover fell away immediately. Oh. Now, I'm not saying Nigel has developed a sauce that can destroy shame. That is for others to say. All I know is that it certainly kicked the A out of my hangover, and with the endorphin rush I experienced, it put a big old smile on my face. So... Ellis. This just sounds like win-win. It sounds like win-win. Well, it's frustrating. I've just eaten a twirl. <laughs> you had your daily twirl. Didn't yeah, I've had my daily twirl already. So right, I'm um, I'm spooning you up half. Well, I say a third of a teaspoon of Nigel's sauce. Handing yeah. it over there. There he goes. Thank now, you. Down the hatch. Years ago, this would have been cued absolute. Oh um, yeah. Absolute nightmare <laughs> for this, but he's since undergone Project Spice. He's convulsing. How is it? Is no, it hot? swimming in it. No. Okay. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> Is it going to cause me problems? No, I think you could cope, man. Oh! Oh, hello to you, Captain! Uh, yeah. Oh, it's pretty vibrant. Yeah. It's vibrant in the mouth. It's tomato-y. It's, um... <laughs> it tastes a bit like an arrabbiata sauce. Is yeah. that the cheesy you know it, tomato you know what one? what it tastes like? I think that's just tomato. Oh, what's the cheesy, the put, the um, the mascarpone one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do what it yeah, tastes like. You know when you go to your auntie's house and there's dips and <laughs> Doritos? One of those dips, but imagine extra malice. Yes. <laughs> malice, malice Dorito it's a malicious dip. dip. Mm, it's certainly making its way around my throat. It tastes like um, a kind of... You get them in supermarkets, and there's a there's a chive one, and there's a hummus one, and there's a weird orangey one, that, and you'd never know it. And then there's the tomatoey one. It's a malicious tomatoey one. <laughs> I think I'm going to get heartburn, Vin. Oh, there's tears. I can see tears in the studio. I'm all right though. I'm I'm happy. I mean, do you want to have one good. on your on your little lentil? Oh, shut up, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Noel Gallagher's High Flying Birds, aka What a Life. That's my d go to sort of phrase when I've got nothing to say. I haven't just go, oh, what a life. But people think I'm depressed. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Noel Gallagher's High Flying Birds, you're listening to Alice James and John Robbins on Radio X. Do you know what there isn't enough of on the radio, John? Um, sort of erotic stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, erotic stuff and also men tasting things. Oh, that's true. Which, again, could be erotic stuff. It could be, but we are writing that particular wrong because now it's time for Tick Off a Taste. <laughs> 
And appearing tonight on... Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste. Take off a taste. That's right, folks. It's time for Ellis and I to take off some tastes. We've got a bit of a backlog of tastes. We've got a monster sort of selection bag of Japanese dried fish treats. Okay. Uh, I'd say there's about 50 little packets in there. Are you still a pesco? Yeah, still a pesco, but I'm, uh, I th- I'm thinking of coming up with a new type of diet. Oh, okay. So, it, listen to this. It's vegan in the house except from cheese and milk. Uh, so I'm a vegetarian. So no I'm a pescatarian outside of the house. Oh, uh, right. Uh, for ease. Uh, but inside the house, I'm a vegan apart from milk and cheese. So pesco to vego. And mackerel. And mackerel. Because <laughs> <laughs> I like pes- dr- eating mackerel out of a can because it makes me think I'm surviving a nuclear blast. Of course it does. Anyway, the, first off, the first... Uh, so this massive monster pack of, um, of Japanese dried fish treats... Uh, is from Adam and Kathy, and they sent these in uh, quite a while ago. Uh, but they said, "Good old fish." They said, "Please find enclosed our offering for tick off a taste uh, selection of dried fish from Japan." A friend of mine brought uh, them for me as a surprise gift from his regular jaunts to Japan. He had already spoiled me so much uh, with so many delicacies for my birthday last last year that I thought I would share them with you. So, Ellis, I'm going to give you uh, two sachets of treats. Okay, I bet it's good for gut health. Dried fish in a packet. Either that or it's going to... Um... It looks like dried mango. Yeah, so you've got a... Do you want to describe it? Sort of like a shard of fish? Uh, I've got a shard of dried... Oh, the smell! It smells like um, fish food. Like, you know, there's flakes of fish food. Oh, it's cat. Like oh, cat. God, yeah. It smells like primary school. <laughs> mine, <laughs> mine looks like um, pork crackling. So I'm going to dive in. Yeah, it looks like dried mango crossed with a, a posh pork scratching like you'd get in a posh pub. Do you know what that tastes like? It tastes like... Oh, some... the texture is absolutely bonkers. Bite it off, mate. Take off that... T- oh, he's, oh, oh, he's oh, gone oh. all in. It tastes oh. a bit like um, sort of honey roast mackerel skin, is how I would uh, describe that. Sort of a chewy top... bit off the end of a mackerel. Oh, it sounds top... quite good. My top lip smells weird now. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I'm going in for another one. Oh, oh it smells just as bad. Is that a different one? Yeah, oh. exactly the same texture. It's all chewy. It's like fish crackling. Yeah, but sweet. <laughs> it's the sweetness. Mm. No is that fish crackling that's had honey roasted onto it? Yeah, it absolutely is. Oh. So, in order to wash that flavour away forever, we're gonna we're gonna stop broadcasting. <laughs> no, we've been sent in a palate cleanser, and this is from Tom Stegall. Stegall. And he says, for Ellis, I've enclosed a sachet of instant beer mix. Simply add water to the beer powder. Alcoholic, I'm not drinking at the moment. It's not, it's oh. a, a super session brew, um, which he says, I can only assume we'll put Doom Bar and the rest of Sharp's Brewery instantly out of business. So it's, um, just smelling it. It looks like a little packet of sherbet. Yeah, it looks like a packet of sherbet. Is this another it's Japanese got a distinct thing? smell, what's so, that? Yeah. Oh no, it was South Korean, that's what it was. <sighs> oh, fish right. is horrible. So, um, Ellis, describe to the listeners what I'm doing. Uh, John is uh, pouring the instant beer powder into a pint glass, and now he's putting, uh, pouring water into the pint glass. And here we go. I've got a lovely pint of foaming, dusty beer. <laughs> it's like cloudy lemonade. It does, it does no. It looks like urine. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this... Uh, do it, it looks like... Uh, and it's in a Team GB glass, so it looks like a hurri- h- hurriedly uh, organised <laughs> sample. Yeah, it looks like um, like a new flavour of Barocca, because it's frothing like crazy, but yeah. it's not the, the nuclear looks orange. like uh, cloudy apple Barocca. <laughs> yeah. But how does it taste? <laughs> <laughs> He's ticking. He's licking and ticking. Some, oh, my gosh. <laughs> Can I have a go? I need to get rid of this f- fish crackling. Oh, it doesn't taste anything like beer. It tastes a bit like apple juice. Does it? Oh. I think. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's really... That's not cool. That tastes like incredibly watered-down apple squash. Yeah. But, it's but getting... I've also got fish in my mouth. <laughs> I feel... God, I, I feel like uh, I'm on a stag do and things have taken a turn for the worse. <laughs> We're about to eat fish and drink some apple juice. <laughs> Radio. Radio. X. Ellis James. And John Robbins. And appearing tonight on... 
Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste. Take off a taste. Uh, Ellis, this week's Take Off a Taste is a joint podcast devotee collaboration. Oh, yeah. So, this taste was spotted by Andrew Forrest in Alicante. Oh, been there on holiday. Lovely stuff. Brought in Lyon, France by Alison Alexander. Oh. And posted from Hong Kong. I've heard of Hong Kong. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thanks for all the great radio, and I appreciate a shout out to any other Hong Kong podcast devotees. Ellis and John, you should come and see us. We have stand up, pret, email, pavements, session ales, shame, the past, and Welsh people. And our spiders uh, are medium sized. Sevens rugby, that's what they have in Hong Kong. Why pavements? I don't know. Uh, anyway, the the uh, joint uh, sort of globe trotting taste is um, sort of like a bag of sweets. It's not dissimilar to the, sort of the Haribo style sweet bag. However, they are called darkness acid. <laughs> wow, what's what's this going to do to me? I, I thought that that was just sort of what what floats into my mind as I'm trying to get to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, which you then, you know, cynically use to your benefit oh, at the end of the <laughs> Good Lord. So these are French sweets, French darkness. Le... What? Le... Darkness. Le... 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 What's darkness in French? I don't know. Why don't you Google it and give me a sweet? Okay, you talk talk at the listeners through the sweets. Darkness acid. Obviously, I, I'm eating these with some sense of trepidation. They look very haribo West. They look like the soft ones in Haribo. So... With that in mind, I'm going to pop three into my mouth. Really? Oh, no artificial colours. Um, sans colorant, artificiel. Le obscurité. Yeah. Mmm. I'm going to dive in. They? L'acide d'obscurité. They are nice, John. Right, let's have a go on these bad boys. Mmm. What are your main thoughts, El? My main thoughts are... I'm driving. I need something to keep me going. I've got some darkness acid in my mouth. <laughs> you had this little yellow guy? No, why? How dark is he? He's not. He's, the, he's my favourite, I think. I oh. mean, my only criticism is that at first look, all my least favourite flavours, your oranges, your yellows, your greens. They're all my favourites, you mad bee. Oh, come on. Your purples, your blacks, your no, reds. Orange. The yellow one tastes like orange. Orange. It. It's got to be orange opal fruit. It's got to be orange oh, fruit pastels. Get a cannabis, whatever. room with yourself and don't let anyone else in the room. <laughs> You get a room and fill it with 150 p- packets of opal fruits and your just take blacks, the your purples, no. your reds. Oranges, and no. No one likes the citrus of any sweet. Whoa, 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 come on now. John. Come on. John, just because you're critically loved. I've always uh, been critically loved. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't allow you to, to spew forth your nonsense. They mm. are very nice sweets. Thank you very much. The I tell you one thing though the 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 name of them darkness acid is pretty misleading. Mm. I yeah, thought that they'd was be suitable be... for a children's party. Um, <laughs> yeah, apart from the name, yeah. we'd like some darkness acid. You have to have something savoury first. Oh, so- I want darkness acid. <laughs> Thank you to Alison <laughs> and Andrew. Oh, it's my birthday. It's Keep- my birthday. It's not your birthday. It's not your birthday next week. Oh, I want some darkness acid now. <laughs> Ellis James and John Robbins Radio X. That was Songbird by Oasis, uh, which is French for birds, um, in a way, oiseaux. Uh, you're listening to Ellis James and John Robbins on Radio X, and it's time to Tick Off a Taste. And appearing tonight on... Tick Off a Taste, Tick Off a Taste. Tick Off a Taste, Tick Off a Taste. Tick Off a Taste, Tick Off a Taste. Tick Off a Taste. Tick off a taste. <laughs> uh, that's right, folks. It's time for Ellis and I to taste things you've sent us in to tick off. Uh, the first one is from Pip. It says, Hi, Hammers. I was on a work trip and visited Borneo, brag, where I saw the some vile-sounding sweets, and I instantly thought of you two legends. Since I couldn't find a way of attaching them to an email, I've had to revert to the past and use snail mail. Many apologies. I can, however, confirm that I'm on email. Also, a mini shout-out to my awesome husband, Paul. Uh, he makes me a really proud wife. He is a massive fan of the show, 86er and retro one so I'd appreciate a hello and a schwame. Thanks a lot. Aye, aye. Are you going to give him a shawarma? What's that? I don't know. A type of kebab, I thought. Uh, Shmai, I'm assuming. Okay, well, Is that yeah. Welsh he, for hello? No, he, but he can have one. I, I can... Oh, shawarma, you mean? Yes. It's not a million miles from what I said, is it? Well, shawarma, I thought I thought that was a kind of... I it's spelled S-H-W-M-A-E. Yeah, shawarma. 
<laughs> I honestly, I the, does the, don't, well, don't tear it what, up. Does mate. the world turn? What what uh, what are these? What are these sweets? They Jay? are. They look absolutely repulsive. Uh, pepper jellies. I love black pepper. I'd have it on rice krispies if I could. Well, <laughs> okay. I, I can. We'll have it. I, 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 so can. I don't. I draw the line at rice krispies. <laughs> Uh, pass one along uh, to intern Anna. There Joe, get so. involved on the pepper yes. jelly. Uh, yeah. Vin, there you go, mate. Thanks, mate. Let's chow down on these bad boys. Oh, I hope they taste like black pepper. Individually wrapped. Individually wrapped. Very right. sticky. In yeah, sort of crystallised. Oh! Oh! There's a bit of mint in there. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Actually quite pleasant, that. It's like dentist gloves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. That's nice, that. <laughs> it does. It's got a peppery kick. Who'd have thought pepper and mint? Mm, pepper. Yeah. It sounds like something Heston Bloom has <laughs> Yeah, oh, don't I'm, mind that. I'm having I'm having a I'm having a scale and polish. His fingers are in my mouth. <laughs> and now there's a little bit of pepper. I went to the hygienist the other day. Oh yeah. And deep she, talking. And um you know when they do for a deep scale and clean, yeah, there's yeah. an awful lot of blood. And you think it's it, they actually th that they're cleaning your soul. Yeah, and you're there, and your mouth is just sort of filling up, and you can't swallow. And it's just, and and I just said, uh, well, I, I just said, um, everyone. Well, no, you're lying back, and they're going at it, and all the your you sort of you your mouth begins to fill up with spit and water yes. that they use. I forgot about your aggressive plaque. Continue. Um, it's not aggressive, <laughs> and it's and it's not even plaque. It's under control. It's not even there to be controlled. <laughs> um, I've excellent oral hygiene. Uh, every so often, I treat myself to a deep cleanse. Um, anyway. So I said to her, oh, it's all right if I spit, because my mouth is just full of all the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she said, uh, I actually don't like uh, to encourage people to spit because I'm worried that it'll make them uh, rinse their mouths out when they're brushing their teeth and that ri rinses away all the fluoride. I'm like... Yeah, no, I had this experience the other day. But that's, it, that is totally different. If my mouth is full of bits of teeth and blood and spit... Yeah, I mean, if I'm anyone's not, got a phobia no. of the dentist, this link is not going to help. But also, you used to, they used to tell us to spit... And then yes. the last time I went to the dentist, they said that you're not meant to spit anymore. Well, they said they did, but in the 80s, people told you you should eat bread and potatoes to lose weight, Vin. Uh, they said, <laughs> she said, spit, by all means, spit the toothpaste foam out, but don't don't rinse with water. Yeah, so to leave it in Because I asked so her to rinse, working. if I could, I could rinse that blue stuff around my mouth to get rid of all the What's great the blue stuff? stuff. It's just sort of sterile, it must be a like, little, like a very watered-down mouthwash. Okay. Anyway, sorry, that's completely irrelevant. It really annoyed me. Yeah. You're sort of making the wrong point. And when, uh, when advice changes. Uh, uh, next anyway. taste. Yes. Dear Ellis John and Prod V, I hope you're all well. As you can see, I'm on email. It's actually an email that's been printed out. Lovely touch. Please find enclosed my submission for a potential taste for you all to tick off, which I procured on a recent jaunt to Japan. To Japan. I've not sampled them myself, as they look gross, and I hate the sabi. <laughs> not sure if they're particularly hot, but John, this may be a way to incorporate a spice sensation into your tea bricks. Love to everyone. Keep up the good work. Becky from the Wirral who's talked to us before. P.S. Yesterday, I was, I was finally allowed to wash my left armpit with shower gel and to apply deodorant, and I feel like a new woman. Oh, that's in reference to an email we got about quite a while ago, but I think these tastes have been here for a while. Yeah, right, so. Okay. So these are wasabi Kit Kats. I initially dismissed these as I thought they were green tea mm. Kit Kats, which, which we've had we've, many yes. times. I it's like, a lighter green than the It's a lighter ones. green, mate. I like wasabi. Oh, they've got the colour of uh, and the inside of an arrow, uh, a mint arrow. Hmm. Mm. Doesn't taste like wasabi. No, there's not much wasabi in that. Tastes like a Kit Kat. Yeah. Tastes oh. like a white chocolate Kit Kat. That is it. And then you get the portents of wasabi, and it never kicks on. Mm. It's, like an, it's like an attack at football that just peters out. I mean, in fairness, they've done the only thing they could do to make an edible wasabi Kit Kat, but it has meant that the wasabi is really not relevant. I would actually... Joe looks like he's having convulsions. You're right, yeah, mate. I just really don't like wasabi. It's, it's I took them to trading standards. I don't think it's, it's wasabi no, yeah, enough. I don't taste a wasabi. No. Anyway, thanks very much. <laughs> Keep uh, sending those tastes to Radio X, uh, London. Yeah, uh, <laughs> W... WC2H7LA, 30 Leicester Square. WC2H7LA? Yeah. Great. I hope, I hope so. I hope so. Or Google it, or guess, or yeah. don't bring it in person. <laughs> you'll, you'll be escorted from the venue. <laughs> and appearing tonight on... Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste. 
Tick off a taste. That's right, guys. This is the part of the show where we will tick off uh, all of the tastes we have yet to experience in our life. Uh, the, all of the food ones, of course. Imagine finishing taste. Well, one day we will, I would imagine. There's yeah. There's no, no new tastes, are there? Well, well, I mean, there are no new kinds of... There's, what was the, Is it uma, umami? Umami. Um, is that it? And it's, um, it's not sweet and it's not sour and it's not bitter. Yeah, it's just increasingly sort of... Uh, Combined tastes. Yeah, fusion tastes. Yes. Uh, this week's taste comes from Ashley and Toongi. Um, we've got a postcard here, all the way, Ellis, from sunny Freiburg. Where's that? In Germany. Oh, nice, okay. Uh, oh, Fry as in F R E I. Freiburg, yeah. yeah, okay. Um, dear Ellis and John, while normally a user of email, special correspondence calls for a postcard. Don't be fooled, though. The accompanying taste does not come from Germany, where I can confirm that 99% of crisps are paprika-flavoured, but instead was brought back from Hong Kong by my friend Toongi, who I've converted to the podcast, so I have someone else to share in conversations about shame and traffic conditions across the UK. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to be the only radio duo really, That's really honing in yeah, on those yeah. topics. I screened two of the tastes she brought back from her last trip home and picked out this as it is most interesting. Uh, John, Tungi promises this will cure any roughness in the throat if your shouting lessons don't pay off. All the best, Ashley and Tungi. Well, the treat is, uh, is in a sort of little mini Tupperware box and it's preserved baxiangual. And what's that, John? It is a pre preserved citrus fruit. The ingredients say mandarin orange, kumquat, citron, mandarin peel, licorice, starch, peppermint. So it's all the flavours. They, they look like <laughs> fishermen's friends from the Orient. They do. I'm just trying to... It's an extremely secure box. Oh, it is. Wow. Look they... at that. Here we go, then. Looking forward to this. They smell a bit... They smell a bit like old cough medicine from the past, not the sweet one. Okay. They look like fossils. They do. They look like sort of sliced chocolates, but they're... they're... So, let's... Here we go. Mmm. Mm. Oh. My oh. gosh. Oh, no. Oh, that's not oh. for me. So, that's, so that's what remold tyres taste like. That's <laughs> interesting. John's spitting his into a cup. I've never seen that before. Three years of broadcasting, doing this feature... It's like my least favourite part of a Christmas pudding, the peel, uh, which I, I do not like peel in any cake or Christmas pudding. Not yeah. a fan of... Uh, what, about, what, I, what about your marmalade? Don't mind that so much, but I'm not a marmalade guy. Aren't you? No. I've known you 11 years, and if you still <laughs> surprise me. Um, but then they've got that weird sort of um, minty aftertaste. Yeah. It's like eating uh, a bad Christmas pudding after you've brushed your teeth. <laughs> That is exactly what it's like, and it's really cleared my sinuses. Yeah, they've got that sort of quality. It does to them. have. It. I mean, for me now, I'm looking outside. I've got this taste in my mouth. It's Christmas Day. Mm. Queen's speech is about to be on. But there's something horrible about uh, citrus and toothpaste, isn't there? Yeah, there is. It's like uh, drinking orange juice after brushing your teeth. Yeah, the worst, which is the worst. Yeah, that's actually the worst. It's thing. Worst thing that can happen to a person. Oh. <laughs> Um, folks, thank, thank, hey, thank you very much, um, Ashley and Tungi, for that, um, quite, a, not, it wasn't appalling. <laughs> no, I... <laughs> no, it was nice. I, I must admit, I've never tasted anything like it before. No, it was very intriguing, and it's exactly dead centre at the heart of what this feature is. Absolutely. <laughs> um, you know, we're, we're on a taste journey, and mm. we've taken another couple of footsteps. Oh. Um, so thank you very much. Keep those coming in. Keep coming in, tastes. Uh, right now we've got music from the Foo Fighters with The Sky Is A Neighbourhood. Ed, have you ever tasted anything? Uh, one or two things, but it was a long time ago. <laughs> have you ever ticked anything off? Uh, I don't believe I have. Well, get ready to tick off a taste. And appearing tonight on... Tick off a taste, tick off a taste. Tick off a taste, tick off a taste. Tick off a taste, tick off a taste. Tick off a taste. Tick off a taste. That's right, Ed. You will now get to sample something that very few people get to do in their lives. You get to tick off a taste. Uh, this week's taste comes in from Aoife and uh, she has written us a little uh, note. She says, Dear Ellis and John, I'm currently travelling around the Greek islands. Brackets, humble brag. Aoife, it's not a humble brag, that's just a statement. That's what we want to hear. 
Um, if you were to say, I've just stubbed my toe travelling around the Greek islands, then yeah. maybe you're in humble break territory. Saw this in a supermarket in Naxos and thought of you two. Ouzo is the local liqueur here. Personally, I think it tastes like the devil in liquid form, but who am I to deny, deny you a taste to take off? Um, thanks, Aoife. Aoife has sent us some Ouzo sweets. Uh, they sort of got the appearance of small sherbet lemons. Um, personally, I despise ouzo. Horrible, horrible and stuff. All aniseed based liqueurs. Uh, Sambuca, there are others. Um, but I'm willing, in the spirit of uh, tick of a taste, to tick off this taste. Joe, you grab a taste. Um, now, uh, is it true that ouzo, uh, the, the thing about ouzo is it crystallizes in your stomach after you drink it so that when you drink water, it then dilutes the crystals again and you get you get drunk all over again. Is that true? Apparently so. Oh, God, that sounds awful. That's what I imagine um, sort of taking a hallucinogenic drug's like where you sort of can't stop it. Mm. Is that is that what it's like? Who are you asking? Um, a, a, a lawbreaker. <laughs> <laughs> None in the studio, mate. Good, good. Um, okay, so should we all simultaneously take off? We've all got our little uh, sweets in our hand. Let's tick. It's like we're in a cult. We're all putting a pin in yeah. at the same time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's ouzo. Yep. Mm. It tastes a bit like an aniseed ball. Mm. Yeah, At once you said it's more aniseed than... It doesn't taste alcoholic, does it? Yeah. No. Yeah, it just tastes like an aniseed ball. Not, not unpleasant, but I'm not, not a huge aniseed fan. It's nicer than ouzo. And so many, so many of the tastes seem to have an aniseed bent. <laughs> you know, thanks to our friends, the Scandinavians. <laughs> it's one of the biggest tastes, isn't it? Aniseed. Well, it is. It's sort of like the fifth or sixth taste. <laughs> so you get sweet, salt, bitter, bitter, and umami. Yeah. Umami and uh, cheese, sour, sour, yep. and aniseed. Crisps, crisps as well. <laughs> sure. Um, and uh, then aniseed. Yeah. Bad, good and bad taste. Good, good, good. Poor yeah. taste. Sorry. Poor taste. This is one of the few things I've ever had where I can actually taste it in my nose. <laughs> <laughs> Like mustard. Mm. Mm. Um, how much of that can you consume? I'm going to have the. I'm going to have the whole thing. It's very small. Great. How many of those would you have to eat before you had to inject yourself with well, insulin, not heroin? I mean, really, like I'm having. I'm having one. I, I'm not going to inject for that. But uh, if I had a couple, I'd probably. I'd probably pop a unit in. Would you really? Yeah. Fascinating insight there um, from diabetes. <laughs> Diabeast. Diabeast, thank uh, you. Ed Gamble. Folks, keep those tastes coming in. We're not going to stop till we've ticked off every GD one of them. This is the Amazons with Ultraviolet. That was Nirvana, the man who sold the world. Hope you got a good price. You're listening <laughs> to Ellis James and John Robbins, and it's time to tick off a taste. And appearing tonight on... Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste. Take off a taste. That's right, team. It's that time when we tick off tastes. Um, we had some tastes sent in by who sent in these tastes, Al? Is there an accompanying note? Uh, oh, yes, there is. We got sent um, American mustard, uh, the type that they have in America. Uh, and also some hot sauce. Hot sauce from the French and Frank's Red Hot team, because autumn shouldn't stop you grilling. <laughs> <laughs> but it always has. <laughs> it does. My, I, I sometimes think about removing my grill in yeah, autumn, because yeah, I just don't use yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, and then bringing it back out around April, May. Yes. Well, yeah. Because autumn stops me grilling out of the question in the winter. Yeah, I mean, the idea of... And spring, I'm not ready yet. The idea of grilling in November makes me feel physically sick. <laughs> um, what an odd catchphrase. <laughs> um, so I'd like to say to the people at uh, French's... Uh, what's it called? French's and Frank's Red Hot Team. French's and Frank's Red Hot Team. It's as kind as it was to send you us the sauce and the mustard, <laughs> which I will grill... Come December, uh, yeah. regardless of what society deems the norm, <laughs> um, I have already. I regularly tick off these tastes in my own home. Yeah, uh, so I'm just going to take these back and, and replenish my supplies. So, uh, just to recap for any listeners out there, autumn shouldn't stop you grilling. Yes, and it's very bad luck to poach in May. <laughs> Isn't that what they say in the old? Or is it um, never steam in September? <laughs> Uh, yeah. 
So instead, we're going to tick off a taste that we've had for a while. Unfortunately, we've misplaced uh, the uh, accompanying notes. Yeah, it's been knocking around the crazy place we call... Uh, taste Towers. Radio X Taste Towers. For a while, actually, we've lost a note, but um, they're still in date. They don't go off until April 2018. By which time we'll be grilling it will again. We'll be grilling again. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be grilling season. What do you ever go to like a, <laughs> a, a group grill, the first grill of the season? Yeah, 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 yeah. And that first grill is always the best of the season. In yeah, my well, experience. everyone's there. They haven't grilled Full since of summer. Optimism, yeah, and you just you've got the whole grilling season ahead of you. Yeah. The last grilling season, it doesn't bear any reflection on your current grilling season. Just hire out a big Airbnb. <laughs> everyone's oiled their grills. Uh, El, talk us through this taste. It's a Japanese cheese brulee. Hmm. It looks absolutely Absolutely disgusting. So what's a so, cheese brulee? It looks like a little creme brulee, but it's got cheese in it. So Oh, oh he's dropped they look like little bits of halloumi. Yeah. He's thrown them all over the studio. Oh I've got, I've got it all in my groin. He's now. got one in his crotch. <laughs> right, there you go. Um okay. Oh, it, do, it looks Do you like a little thing? segment yeah, of um halloumi in a mad way. Right. Yeah. I'm taking it off. It's like a little cracker. Oh, it's absolute. Oh. No, it's bad. Mm. Um, it's like sweet milk, but bad. Yeah, but is, no. it's like sweet... Um, oh. It's not, good. it's not good. It's got cheese on top, but the, it's like a sort of a compressed square of dust that's quite sweet with a sort of a very thin grilled cheese topping. It's like if you it smells were... smells rank. If you were at a kid's party and you'd had... Uh, and you'd moved on to pudding but you just had a bit of cheddar mm. from a child's plate ten seconds before, and you're all confused. It tastes like a cheap shot. Yeah, I'm all at sea now, Vin. Like, like whatever. Cheesy, che- you know if you're out at a bar and someone gets a round of shots, of and you don't alcohol. want any part of it, but you'd have to because of yeah. you know, pressure. But with grilled cheese on the top. It's not good. <laughs> cheese right. alcohol. Have you never had a cheese shot? That is a thought. Another one for Dragon's Den. Um, I'll just have a whiskey and red Leicester, please. I tell you what, though, a segment, a, a sort of a Ooh. chunk of uh, cheddar with a capsule of red wine in the middle would make a nice mouthful. Ooh. Have you have you had that, or have you just concocted that? No, I've just imagined it now. Of course, I haven't had that. <laughs> well, I did, though. <laughs> Cheese with a capsule of red wine. <laughs> Mad idiot, uh, folks. Keep sending those tastes in to Radio X Leicester Square. No more of them, please. We can't. Promise to like them all, but no. we will try them all. We will try them all. And appearing tonight on... Tick off a taste, tick off a taste. Tick off a taste, tick off a taste. Tick off a taste, tick off a taste. Tick off a taste. Tick off a taste. Folks, if you've not heard that wonderful jingle before, it's because you have never enjoyed the majesty of Tick Off a Taste. Uh, this is a feature from... Ellis and my Saturday show, which runs from one till four, and you'd be very welcome to join us. It's also podcasted uh, for your entertainment. Uh, uh, Basically, what we do is we get people to send us in exotic tastes, strange tastes, hot tastes, and we simply tick them off. We're hoping by the time we retire to have tasted every single thing on earth. And today's taste comes from Dave. Um, He describes himself as a... Retro oneer, a thirty er a vibe taster, and a merch wearer. Just to uh, translate that for you, that means he's listened to all of our podcasts once. He first listened on the thirty seventh episode. He has uh, seen us live, and he has bought our merch, which is available from ellisandjohnmerch dot com. Uh, he has sent us a sweet. He says, "Dear Ellis and John and the Vinigma, please accept these sweets for tick of a taste. They're from India." I first came across them offered as a gift from some Indian colleagues whilst walking in. Uh, can't read I think it says working in Australia. Whilst working in Australia. Thanks for that, Vin. I then came across them again on honeymoon in India, offered as a gift from our tour guide. Difficult to know if they hated me, and this was some (laughs) sort of retribution. Weirdly, I think it seems that some people actually like them. So I've looked these up uh, on the internet, and some of the reviews on Amazon, they're called, uh, the suite is called Pulse. Mm. Candy Bypass Pass. Sensational Kacha Arm Flavor Candy. And we've uh, found out that Kacha Arm is raw mango. Um, yeah, but it's sort of, me- it means sort of green mango. It's got like a real uh, tangy kick to it. Okay, well, one review, bear in mind this is a five star review. Uh, a, st- a five star review on Amazon says, Strange earthy flavor that invoked my gag reflex a bit. <laughs> 
Um, the juice on the inside tastes like burnt rotten eggs. How is that getting five stars? So I'm opening the little sachet. Oh, it's a very sort of... Um, it's tiny, isn't it? No, it's, I'd say it's the size of a Werther's original. Yeah. It smells of... Um, Bright green. It smells of curry. Yeah. It smells of nice curry. Oh, I want a curry now. <laughs> right, I'm popping it in. So apparently you have to do it in four stages. Uh, the first stage is to suck it, in which point you get the sensational flavour of the raw mango. Hmm. It's in. It's in. Hmm. I wouldn't say it's sensational. It's got that slight plasticky taste that all individually wrapped sweets have. Yeah, okay. So you've got to get through that. Getting through that. And now getting, um, mm, like a raw, yeah, sort of a mangoey raw flavour. Mm -hmm. I may have to skip to the second. What's um, stage two? So stage two, according to Amazon, is the slow emergence of the powder into your mouth. Hmm. So I'm now going to, I'm going to enter that stage. It's going to crack. Oh. <laughs> oh, he's spit. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, it's spitting out. It's in an envelope. It's in the bin. That's he's spat into the bin now. That's disgusting. That is not John looks upset. That is not fun. <laughs> that was a surprise and an unpleasant surprise. It's it, a really fluid experience. Oh, it though. tastes exactly like rotten eggs. <laughs> Oh, Christmas Day. Oh, uh, I can't swallow. I hate it. I'm going to have to remove the flavour with one of these super sour sweets oh, left over John. from the breakfast show. <laughs> oh, crisps. Crisps in a bin. <laughs> oh, Lord, I just had to swallow some rotten egg flavour there. Well, thanks. Yeah, why not put rotten eggs in a sweet? That makes sense. Consider that taste ticked. Sheila by James T. You're listening to Alice James <laughs> and Josh Widdicombe here on Radio X. Uh, and now it's time for Tick Off a Taste. And appearing tonight on... Tick off a taste, tick off a taste. Tick off a taste, tick off a taste. Tick off a taste, tick off a taste. Tick off a taste. Tick off a taste. Oh, God. I mean, that's his voice, isn't it? <laughs> Silly sausage has got himself trapped in America because of the inclement weather. Right, this week's Tick Off a Taste comes courtesy of Mike. Uh, hi, John Ellis, producer Vin, and various interns. Hi, chaps. Hope the new year finds you well. Is that, uh, am I an intern? Yeah, intern, intern <laughs> Josh. Oh, he's doing really well. He makes a cracking cup of tea. I think we'll ask him back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a retro winner and vibe chaser and wanted to send you a sample of these oddly savoury sweets all the way from Mexico. Oh, Mexico. I, uh, Mexico. I bought these for my office and after sampling one myself, my colleagues weren't keen. So I thought I'd send you some of the remaining 29. It's astonishing <laughs> that um, these have done the journey. Almost to the mile that John tried to do to get to this. Yeah. Show. Oh God, don't, don't. I'll only cry, Josh. I mean, it's like I'm missing a limb or something. They aren't as the sweets aren't as spicy as the pack uh, packet suggests. Uh, FYI, Pike Elotics are a chili pineapple combination and are instantly very savoury, but worth investing the time to get through to the sweet pineapple ending. I've included a picture of the packaging and the ingredients list if needed. Do enjoy. Best regards from Mike. So they're called Pike Elotics. Um, Can I just say, I've looking at this lolly. Yeah. I've never seen a dirtier stick. <laughs> That's a very good point. It's an absolutely filthy stick. Yes, mine, mine too. How? Why does? Why in the in in the process? How did the stick get so dirty? It looks the the lolly itself looks like dog dirt, yeah, and it looks yeah. like the stick has been dropped in. Looks dog like a dirt. chicken nugget on a stick, doesn't it? Yeah, that's it been does. wiped with dog dirt. Yeah. but well, that st stick is. Oh, it looks like, do you, do you ever like go into an old coat when you're a child yeah. and you'd find like a six month old one of those um, oh, um, lollies you get from Little Chef? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what was the flavour? It was but, um, butter, no not was it? Oh, it's going to drive me insane. If you could remember what the flavour of the Little Chef lolly was that you two, got for clearing your plate. Two riddles in one show. Yeah, two tweet us out Radio X or text us on 83936. They were white and orangey yellow, weren't yeah. they? Anyway, this is a... It, it looked... Do what it looks like. It looks like oh, a fossilised lolly. Yeah, it does. From from the from the past. If you went to the Jorvik Viking Centre in York... Um, yes. ...and they brought this out as like a, a lolly from the time, you wouldn't y believe them. Absolutely. I think we should probably take... I'm going to take a photo of this before I... Uh, before I um, well, in try case it. you die. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Right. Okay. So, it's a. Are we putting this in? It's a Pike Let's go for it. Ah. Uh, 
<laughs> oh my god. It tastes like the beach. <laughs> it tastes like the beach. <laughs> the, oh, it's oh, the so film. dry. Oh. I, I, I tell you the problem with that. Ah. Ah. Oh, hang on. Are you bitten into it? It came off in my mouth. Um. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, You're getting pineapple. Oh, the pineapple's quite good. Yeah, but it. it... Once you got through the knickknack feeling around the side. <laughs> yeah. It's like a it's like a spicy knickknack. And a pineapple that you found on the beach. <laughs> but that's not a product, is it? Oh, oh my good word. Grief. I'll tell you one thing. It is chewy. Yeah. I mean, my my head is saying yes, but my teeth are saying no. <coughs> and to think I paid for a scale and polish last week. That oh, is awful. Crim. But in a weird way. <laughs> crims. Did you just say crims? <laughs> yeah, I did, yeah. <laughs> is that your worst experience in crims? <laughs> well... It's our old friend, Take Off a Taste. And appearing tonight on... Take Off a Taste, Take Off a Taste. Take Off a Taste, Take Off a Taste. Take Off a Taste, Take Off a Taste. Take Off a Taste. Take Off a Taste. That's right, team, it's Take Off a Taste. Something we haven't done for a while, but as I will explain when reading out our submission... We can't do it without the tastes. No. You can't tick off a thought. You can't tick off a memory. You can't tick off an imagination. No. Tick, tick off a hammock. You, can, you <laughs> can't. Well, you, you could. You could. Off, you could fall off a hammock. You, what a feature that would be. It, falling <laughs> off a hammock <laughs> on Radio X. So it's a lovely uh, handwritten letter uh, that comes in and is sent by uh, Daljeet. And uh, it says, Dear Ellis John and Producer Vin, hope you're all well. I was out pounding the pee on Sunday morning when I was listening to the most recent podcast. Rav emailed asking if there were any other Punjabi PCDs about. I have Punjabi heritage and am a PCD, so I guess that makes me a Punjabi PCD. John... Punjab and neighbouring states get very cold during December until mid-Feb, so probably an ideal time for you to go, because we were discussing whether uh, the Punjab... Is it the Punjab or Punjab? Uh, either is fine. Uh, discussing whether it would be too hot for me to make a visit. Mm. Um, talking of India, hopefully you've received the sweets uh, that I've been meaning to post since I got back from my trip in February. They were meant to be for the tick of a taste feature, but realise you don't do this feature anymore. We do, guys. We need we tastes. Need tastes. <laughs> um... <laughs> Uh, so, um, uh, a cousin recommended the mango one. So, uh, Daljeet has sent in two bags of tastes. Ellis, the first is a big bag. Mazello flavoured candy. Okay. Apple, guava, watermelon, banana, and lychee. Let's have a dig on guava. Is, what's, is that lychee? Lychee. lychee. Lovely stuff. I'm like a lychee. I'm opening them up. It's proving hard. So I'm going to a tear as opposed to a pull apart yeah, yeah, action. Yeah. So you want guava? Yeah, yeah. Guava, well smelt. Um, here you go. There's guava. I'm going to take a little walk down Lychee Lane. Lychee Lane. So mine's blue. Oh, mine's green. Mm. I'm taking it off. Oh, they're like boiled sweets, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting a big, intense lychee hit. I'm getting a huge nostalgia day terror. Because... <laughs> they taste like um, Jolly Ranchers. No, it's, I almost choked to death on a bowl sweet um, at the Swansea Grand Theatre in uh, uh, oh, d- December yeah. 1990. Watching a play of The Hobbit? Uh, yeah, yeah. God, how well do we know each other? Yeah. It's too well, I think. Is it too well? Let's have a cuddle in bed, for God's sake. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, sorry. Um, I- <laughs> <laughs> right, so... Um- <laughs> yeah, I, I leant back and uh, the bowl sweet was a fox glassy mint went down the wrong way. Nightmare. Next thing, Lynn Folds Wood is on the phone. Absolutely. Uh, after Dad had slapped me on the back too hard. But he did save my life, because to be honest, Mum was just rubbing it. And he was delighted when he found out you were also choking on a fox's glacier mint. <laughs> uh, so I'm now, so a lychee, just a general synopsis, taste of lychee, boiled sweet, okay. Jolly Rancher type vibe. I'm now going to uh, venture into Tangy Mango. I am. I'm going to spit out guava because I'm actually scared of boiled sweets. Mm, I'm, I'm tang- willing to put the fear aside to make great radio. Okay, Tangy God, Mango. I'm such a trooper. I'm deep in. It, initially, it's got that quite unpleasant plasticky taste that some boiled sweets have that you have to vigorously rub away with your tongue yeah, before yeah. getting to the fruity yeah, treat yeah. beneath. So says a boiled sweet expert there. Have mm. you got anything that isn't boiled? Mm. Mm. Um, anything no. chewy? No, it's all boiled, mate. Um, Different yeah, cultures. Yeah, it's nice. It, t- it tastes like... Um, <laughs> 
You know when something tastes well, similar, really. Yeah, yeah, the same culture. Yeah. You know when something tastes too much like the thing it is that makes you think it's not actually a sweet, it's just a hard version of a mango. Yeah, because I'm going to crunch because I think it's got something inside. That's I one would... of those tiny Punjabi mangoes that they have. What I would... oh god, it's what got I would... curry in the middle. What I would John. say, oh, don't spit in the bin, you absolute ape. It also doesn't have curry in the middle. What Come I... on, it does. what I stop it. shouting. Read it and weep, mate. What I it would got say, it's got masala spice. Yeah, in the middle. that is different from saying it's got curry in the middle. <laughs> what? Exactly what it's got in the middle, mate. What I would say is that sweets cross international borders. Also, I just case. spat in a bin. That's not the behaviour of an ape. That's the behaviour of someone who needs to spit and finds the best, most polite place to do it, because that is no. a disgusting no, you taste. you spit on your hand, then you throw it out the window. Can, I've never... That oh, is, I quite like it. It's like green mango. Oh, you think you like it now, mate? Wait till you cut through to the spice in the middle. That is the most drastic contrast I've had in any taste I've ever ticked off. Really? It was going so well, and then I read on the little packet, uh, you know what it is? Filled. I'm there. I've got it. It's like it's um, black salt. That's what that is. Okay. Is yeah. It says masala filled. Yeah, it means masala means spice. That's what that means. Okay. Well, it's got spice in the middle of it. John doesn't like it. Vin taking a well, it far more eggy. measured approach. It tastes like sulfur. Yeah, that's what black salt is like. Yeah. Is it? Well, mm. well, no thanks, mate. <sighs> I think you should apologise. To, to who? Them. I sort of think you should as well. To, <laughs> to <be> Indi- <laughs> Apologise to India because I didn't like a sweet and then spat in a bin, which I think is good and not even the recycling bin. And they so that spit's s- not going to uh, go on to form a trestle table. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, that was tick of a taste. They said this feature didn't have any legs left in it. Oh, mate, I've just given it two extra legs. (laughs) It's now walking on all fours. (laughs) Guys, good news. We've got tastes in town, so let's tick them off. (laughs) And appearing tonight on... Tick off a taste, tick off a taste. Tick off a taste, tick off a taste. Tick off a taste, tick off a taste. Tick off a taste. Tick off a taste. Here we go. Uh, for those of you who are not long-term listeners, uh, this was a, a previous regular section where we would tick off tastes uh, that we've not previously tasted. And we've been sent in some tastes, I think, Vin, from an anonymous... There's no there's no name on the letter, but it's got beautiful handwriting. And it says, yeah. hey, guys, here are some tastes to tick off. Firstly, some salty licorice chocolate. And secondly, Pilaja jellies. Uh, the name means rowan tree in Finnish. However, these are more commonly known as the fox sweets because of the image on the packaging. They contain an unknown amount of rowan berry extract, hence the name. And they're sort of the Finnish equivalent of Marmite. Half the nation finds them disgusting, while the other half claims to enjoy them. Pick your team. I wonder if they've got lots of vitamin B12 like Marmite does. Oh, I, I don't think it's... I think Marmite is a, a sort of a... a yeah. They're metaphorical. I don't think they taste of Marmite. Um, do you reckon they're vegan? I suppose uh, you are broadly vegan, but it's... Um, I think if the ingredients are in a foreign language, you're okay. Yeah, yeah. That's oh, they've fine. got vegetable fat in it. Uh, that's palm oil. Okay. Um, I did actually once check out the ingredients to a powdered soup using Google Translate app <laughs> uh, to find out whether... But it just it translated one of the ingredients as animal. <laughs> um, so I assumed that they uh, weren't uh, vegan. So, Ellis, you can have a pelagia. Oh, yes, please. Um, the fox sweets. And I'm... Ooh, oh, Oh, look at that. I wasn't expecting that. So they're, they're like, sort of like... Um, describe them, Mel. They look like little boiled sweet sandwiches. They're sort of little jellies with um, a red centre and a, oh, and a white soft. outside. Oh, they're lovely. Yes. I mean, I couldn't eat a whole bag. I'm Finnish, yes. Not Finnish, no. I mean, <laughs> do you know what? I don't like the texture. I think they're getting worse, though. The flavour is just sort of general sweet. Yeah. Um, so, I, I mean, I would say they were they were inoffensive, but I find it remarkable that um, a lot of people don't like it. Interesting so. thing with those sweets, they... They don't melt in the mouth, they fall apart. Yeah. Which so has never happened to me before. I've never moved, to fall apart in my mouth. We move on to the licorice chocolate, salmiaki. Looking forward to this because that doesn't make sense. <laughs> okay, there you go. Well, like a couple licorice, of cubes. like chocolate. Am I going to like this? Ellis is tasting. I'm ticking. Oh my goody aunt. Oh, it's intense. It tastes like a greedy Christmas. <laughs> 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 because, oh. Oh. It does, it really <laughs> does 
<laughs> Next to the telly, mum and dad's house, there's licorice all sorts there, and there's chocolate there. I've gone to town. They're both in my mouth at the same time. I'm confused, but it was my decision, and I stand by it. Oh, you've double divoided. <laughs> oh, they're sort of. I like the chocolate element. I think, if anything, the licorice element. It's a sort of a. Just to bring you into the fold here, listeners, they're like um, d- sort of dairy milk shaped cubes, but inside yeah. there is a liquid licorice center, which I could I could honestly do without. But yeah, fair enough. I mean, and chocolate is nice. I think I think they're two nice components that don't go together. Yeah, Shakespeare and Grolsch. <laughs> <laughs> oh I man, like Grolsch. I like Shakespeare at GCSE level, but um, oh yeah. Well, th- thankfully we ticked it off. I, l- I like the way how. We're becoming more and more cosmopolitan with our tastes. Yeah, we've ticked those bad boys right off. If you have any tastes you would like us to tick off, send them to Radio X, Global Radio, Leicester Square, London, WC2H7LA? 30 Leicester Square. 30 Leicester Square. Did I get the postcode right? Spot on. WC2H7LA. I'm the best. (laughs) Wow, John. Imagine that. Imagine just knowing our postcode. Imagine being you. (laughs) Oh, too much for most people to comprehend, I would imagine. And appearing tonight on... Tick off a taste, tick off a taste. Tick off a taste, tick off a taste. Tick off a taste, tick off a taste. Tick off a taste. Tick off a taste. It's the feature that will not die. As long as tastes keep being created, we'll keep tasting them. We, uh, John and I, are on a mission to taste all of the tastes by the year 2050. <laughs> yes, and this week's taste was brought to me at a gig, Ellis, uh, by a listener and oh, yeah. a live vibe taster. And um, it is uh, Japanese chocolate called Rummy. Okay. Okay. And there was some discussion between us over whether it was vegan or not, but I've decided that the rule applies. If the ingredients are in a foreign language, I'll turn a blind eye. Nice. I think that's actually quite reasonable. Unless it's like a, a, a Greek chicken. A, fr- a friend of mine is a vegan, but um, not in Wales. <laughs> Where do they live? Uh, well, I think he's got family in Barry. Just really okay. made me laugh. So he pops back for some burgers. <laughs> Not burgers, but he might eat a bit of cheese. Ah, lovely stuff. I mean, you know, you're flexitarian. Uh, you know, life is a grey area, Vin. Choose your own vibe, choose your own taste. Choose your own taste. So it's rummy. <laughs> On the front cover, it's got a photo that sh- seems to suggest... So it's like a little glass of rum a- and a bunch of grapes. So it's chocolate that tastes of rum and grape. I think so, yes. Okay. Uh, just passing a cube over Thank there to Ellis. You. Let's tick it off. Oh, it smells very boozy. Mm. Oh. Um, oh, yeah. I'm not sure. <laughs> oh. It's too boozy for me. Oh, get me back. Get me back <laughs> on the wagon. <laughs> off the wagon? On the wagon. Drive the wagon. Crash the I'm wagon. Scared. I'm scared of this wagon. Crash the wagon into a um, bin. It, ah. Uh, do what it tastes like. It tastes like I'm on a stag. Someone's get, given me a shot of something. I've had to do it because of peer pressure, but I happen to have a dairy milk in my pocket. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, like it tastes, you know, chocolate liqueurs very rarely taste of proper booze, but that taste of actual... It's like an amaretto in a twirl, <laughs> all in one. How much grape are you getting? No grape. Zero grape. No grape. I think I, the grape is in reference to brandy. I think because brandy's made from... from. It's called rummy. I reckon that's brandy. Uh, I sold it. I think... Is it? Did you not get an element of raisin? No, I'll go and hear more. <laughs> there are people watching us through the window, and I can't imagine how low rent they think this show is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're just eating chocolate and talking into microphones. There are five people staring at us. Do you know what I feel like, John? I feel like an exhibit. <laughs> and I don't like it. They're staring, they're not saying anything, they're still staring. They seem to be on some sort of official tour. I think they're more interested in Capital Extra. Oh, thanks, Vin. I'm a confidence player, you know that. They just they don't seem that engaged. This chocolate is not cool. I like it, mate, but I now feel a little bit tipsy. Thank you very much for that taste. Um, we'll keep ticking them off if you send them in. I'm going to go outside and scream into their faces to stop them, <laughs> stop them watch us scream. You tired, John? Yeah, I'm a bit. I don't like being stared at by people with lanyards on. Uh, folks, right now, we've got music from Tom Grennan. He won't be eating any of this rum chocolate because... He's sober. The way and appearing tonight on. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste. 
Tick off a taste. Hello to you, fair tasters, tickers, and everyone in between. Uh, this is the part of the show where Ellis and I taste things with our mouths, our radio mouths. And uh, this week's tastes have been sent by Patrick, Katie, and Bobby. And they sent a postcard, Ellis. Oh, lovely, beautiful 10B. Uh, for those of you born uh, post-1990, a postcard is like a sort of a hard email. Um, yeah, it's an analogue email. An email that sort of exists, um, but you need uh, a stamp or um, or a post box. Actually, or both, actually. It's, they're very short. It's more of an analogue text message. I'm yes, saying. it's like a text message with a photo. It's like an mm. MMS, yeah, but yeah. the one that you can hold in your hand. Uh, guys, to Ellis and John, greetings from 10B, where we are on on holiday. Ellis, where's Tenby? Uh, West Wales, Pembroke. Give me a fact. Nice. Okay. They ban stag do's. Good. Uh, we have just found a rock shop where I bought some tick of a taste samples. You may have had garlic bread before, but not garlic bread flavoured rock. Ugh. Also spotted, am I allowed to say this on radio? I think you're gonna. Ganja rock. There it goes. And thought John may want to experience the taste mm. of, quote, da herb without breaking the law. Enjoy. Um, so that uh, we've got four possible rock tastes to tick off, Ellis. You can choose from uh, chicken ticker stick of rock, chicken uh. ticker sticker, um, garlic bread rock, quote, it's the future, <laughs> uh, pizza flavoured rock, oh. or um, our old friend the Gange. Ganges rock. Yeah. Ganges revenge. I am going to go for garlic bread. I am intrigued by the garlic okay, bread. Okay, so it's almost like we're in the world of Willy Wonka or in the world of a terrible, terrible idea. Uh, it says, garlic bread flavour rock, quote, it's the future. There you go, Ellis. Right. I am going to... What if there are elements of uh, street herb in the herb rock and oh, we get raided by the police? It would affect, it would affect your broadcasting. You're ch you'd become a chilled out broadcaster. The postcard did em emphasise that it's completely legal. It's just a sweet... It smells like pineapple, can I just say? Is that the pizza one or the gun? This is, um, this is the doobie, um, the, the doobie okay. guy. Oh my God, can I just say that Garden Bed Rock is absolutely so horrific. <laughs> is it? I have to say. Oh my God. Um, the, the Ganja Rock tastes sort of just like generic pineapple fruity rock. It's so weird. Garlic Bed. Thank the Lord they've not actually put any weed based um, additives into this. Oh. Or I'd currently be spacing out like it was the 60s. <laughs> uh, what's the garlic one like, mate? So garlicky. Really? Uh, I mean, it tastes like um, sort of supermarket's own garlic bread. That's interesting because I think garlic's quite an easy thing to flavour stuff so with. so confusing, though, because the texture of it is of rock. Mmm. And there's an element of sweetness. There's an, there's an element of sugar. Mm. But... Oh. <laughs> Is horrific. Well, really horrible. I have to say, do you want to try and wash it down with some chicken ticker rock? Yeah, go on then. Chicken ticker sticker. And then I'll, I'll have pizza rock as well. I'll go the whole heart. I might try pizza. I'll now. do all of the meals. This is like the chewing gum on um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Yeah. Oh, I'd love to jump in a big fountain of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I'd love to, Augustus Croup it. I'd wear trunks. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't go in my clothes. They'd have to have a filter in it, wouldn't they? That would be a grim. Yeah, tip, it? and also, if you got people jumping into fountains of chocolate, presumably there's chlorine in there. Oh. Oh. What's, oh. That, then? What's that, John? Is that pizza? Yeah, cheese and tomato pizza. Oh, it's not. It's neither pleasant nor unpleasant. Oh. God. Oh, Ellis has luck, does not lucked out on this one. Ah! <laughs> What's the ticker sticker like? It tastes like marigold gloves <laughs> and a Korean rock. <laughs> oh, is it, oh. The, is it the flavoured condom of confectionery? <laughs> Chicken ticker rubber glove rock. <laughs> awful, awful business. Well, I've done quite well there. The cheese one doesn't really taste the cheese. Also, the ganja one just tastes the pineapple. Also, it's... Ginger, <laughs> garlic and curry-flavoured oh. sweets. Also, it's stuck in my teeth now, so... Mm. Rock is actually annoying. Yeah, I never <laughs> liked it. Never a fan. Too crunchy. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for those four tastes. Um, 
I, I would actually eat, I will eat the rest of the ganja one, I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> um... Yeah, maybe the the kids will realise a bit of a street cred in the old guy yet. <laughs> I certainly weren't uh, weren't just drinking shandies in the seventies. I have to tell you, sometimes we'd uh, we'd whack on tubular bells and things get quite carried away. Do I'll do. <laughs> I'll go back. I'll get my guitar. I'll come up to your house. We'll jam. <laughs> jam provide. That was, was oh. So- Actually, We've got ourselves into a pickle because uh, Ellis amusingly swore at our uh, intern, Anna. <laughs> well, because she thinks you look cooler than I do. She was so quick, quick on the draw to say that you were as well. But there's no need to swear at an intern. But we, it was light-hearted. It was forceful and light-hearted. <laughs> oh, um, but you've heard other stories about presenters' pr- past. Oh, come on. Throwing don't things lump, at people, lump, lump me in with that lump. pressing people in the chest, <laughs> being marched out of early shows. I am. It, but I should point out this was years and I years am ago. Broadly good to work with. Word Joe is going to go round the in, intern this. community about Ellis James's terrible temper. <laughs> He's nice, but if he puts on a pair of brown sunglasses, make sure you say he looks cool or <laughs> hell <will> break loose. <laughs> Folks, it's time to tick off a toast. And appearing tonight on... Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste. Take off a taste. This week's taste comes from Alfie Langlands. Oh, great name. Great name. I wonder if he's a fan of um, Piers Plowman by uh, the poet Langland. It's like a name from Get Carter. Mm, Alfie Langlands. Alfie Langland did that. Down at a lockup. Yeah. Anyway, Alfie says, You've tasted many vibes, and now I present you with another taste to tick off. I was recently on a client visit with work, supporting them with a trip, uh, f- uh, supporting them with a visit from a Japanese delegation. Upon finishing the meeting, the delegation kindly presented us with a gift a selection of fancy Japanese biscuits, a couple of which I've enclosed with this letter. These biscuits are now in the office kitchen for my colleagues to enjoy, many of whom have commented on their delicious sweetness. So, Ellis. Would you like Maple Long de Chat Tokyo? Oh, they're both called that. Do you want the green or the, the yellow? Uh, green. Oh. I like biscuits, and I don't care who knows it. Uh, I'm going to open up one. mine. I can't tell the difference between the two because it's all written in Japanese. I love biscuits. So, uh, oh, they're a very thin biscuit, mate. Yeah, I've already had eight biscuits today. Have you? Oh, they're sort of... Oh, they're... they're, they're Glued together with some form of internal uh, cream. It's a Japanese sandwich biscuit. <laughs> it's like uh, the bourbon <laughs> custard cream. <laughs> John, John, John's lost the ability to broadcast that his own description oh. of a Japanese biscuit. Oh, I don't Maybe, mind that. No. Mm. Just dive in. Oh! Oh, hello. Oh, is that cheese? I don't no. know what that is, but it is absolutely fantastic. They taste like sort of pure crispy sugar. Um, they're, they're very crispy, thin, light, almost French sort of biscuits. Yeah, it's like you'd... Um, they're almost French. But it's, a biscuit, got a, it's like a biscuit you get at a nice-ish French hotel. But there's some form of saltiness coming somewhere, which well, I can't put my finger on, and I'm not sure I want well, to. Well, my internal cream is green. My internal cream is white, but it's definitely got salt on the outside. Stop putting salt on things, guys. Yeah. Sweet things. Put as much as you like on chips. Yeah, my internal Ugh. cream is green, and I, I can't really describe it. It's just suddenly... Let's have a look at yours. I'm on, I'm, I'm on the subway. I'm in Tokyo. But it's yours, got, yours hasn't got salt on it. I'm in... I, I'm about to try oh, out a new... Better. I'm about to try a new Sega computer game. Mm-hmm. I'm in Japan. Mm. I'm and, listening uh, to Call access me. one of those vending machines yeah. I've heard about. Oh, God. Um, God. Thank you very much uh, for the... Uh, for God, the you've got a one-track mind, John uh, For those biscuits. Um, mine was up internal and down. Internal cream. With uh, glue together with internal cream. Ellis James and John Robbins. It's time for us now to take off a taste. And appearing tonight on... Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste. Take off a taste. That's right, folks. It's the nation's favourite feature. 
when the nation are asked, what is the favourite feature you've heard which involves two men tasting things? It's tick of a taste. Uh, and today's taste that we're going to tick off <laughs> has been provided for us by our very own Vinay Joshi. Just think, one day, John and I will have tasted all the tastes. Yes. I've got to imagine, Unless they it? keep making new ones. Finishing taste. I really want to taste the Impossible Burger. What's that? It's a vegan burger that bleeds beetroot blood. What? Ooh. Yeah, it's amazing. Apparently it's amazing. It's amazing. Brian Mays took a photo of being near one. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it on his Instagram. Um, but it's all over... It's Great all over content. America. Me near a burger. Um, so, Vin, talk us through this week's taste, because you've brought it back from your holidays. Jaunt. Yeah, so I went to Best Kept Secret in... A in Holland, then, it, then well, I was, well, it isn't now, is it? Exactly. Yeah. Then I went to Belgium afterwards. What? With uh, with Steve Ferdinando from Danny Wallace's show. Marco Polo. Do yeah. you see the star Steve Ferdinando? <laughs> I should sing that. You should. Does people not sing that to him all the time? No, I don't think he's ever heard. I think that I start song doing before. that every time I see him. Well, we had, so we went to Belgium. So obviously, there's a lot of um, high percentage beers. Yes. Yeah. Lost 14 hours of my life in Brussels once because of all that high percentage well, exactly. beer. Exactly. So we went to this walked 16 miles. We went to this one it. bar, and they apparently this beer that I brought back is called Delirium has been voted the best beer in the world. In the world. Apparently, but it's got a picture of a pink elephant on the front of it, and I'm I'm not sure it's going to be that. Great. Well, Be- I'd like to talk listeners through what yes. I'm holding in my hand. First, I have to say. Uh, it breaks all the rules I have set for myself. Yeah. In that it is a eight percent by volume. Oof. B. It is twenty five minutes before the cut off point at which I don't ever allow myself to drink before. So I have to warn you. Yes, yeah, pre recorded. Show this. It's nine a.m. <laughs> <laughs> I have to warn you that if I drink this and get my booze head on, you got to keep bringing me booze. But you. But also. You're off to play pool after this show. Yeah, it's going I'm, to ruin your game. It's not, because I'm going for pints with Lloyd, okay. whom I love. Yeah. Um, but I, if if this gets me going, you know what I'm like. Oh. We're, only, we're only going to drink a little amount. That We've already discussed that. No, I'm like... You're not going to get amorous. Eh? I'm like Henry <laughs> Sellers in... Um, touch my chest. In uh, <laughs> A Father Ted. Right, so I'm, so the bottle itself is sort of... What's it made of? Is that, it's obviously glass, but it's painted to look like a sort of um, a pog and pole worktop. I also... Exactly. <laughs> Um, when I met Johnny Marr, the lovely, engaging, interested Johnny Marr, uh, he, obviously he doesn't drink anymore, and he talked to Dan O'Connell, who he clearly really liked, Ooh. about people they both knew who'd done the 12 Steps programme. And I haven't done the 12 Steps programme, I don't know anything about it, but I haven't had a pint for a couple of weeks. I've, I've, I've done the 12 Step programme, but not for booze. <laughs> what have you done it for? Gambling. Oh, right, okay. Luckily... Um, that means I can still tuck into this, but I, I wouldn't be able to bet you who would like it the most. <laughs> <laughs> what flavour is it, John? Cause it's, is it well, it's obviously alcohol flavour, isn't it? Because it's 8%, you madman. But what's it say? Is it, it's got a cherry or strawberry? Uh, it says strong fruit beer. Oh, I don't like fruit beer because yeah. I, I don't like beer strong beer. Like fruit. Remember, this was voted best in the world. It's been yeah, but it like better taste like a s- who sip really strong beer over the course it of an evening. better taste like Estrella. Or Doombar, because that's okay. what I like. I'm going in. Okay. Oh, another thing, John. <laughs> the thing is, John, you, don't, you obviously don't take me seriously or treat me with respect. Do you know and what? And it's, it's, it ruins my confidence, because I need confidence on the radio, and you're nasty to me. <laughs> shut up, then. Are you shut up, then. <laughs> Who are you? Shut up. Are you quite finished, Alice? Um, It's... Do you know what it is? It's like cherry aid, but but it doesn't. It's the worst of both worlds. Okay. <laughs> it really is because it doesn't taste like nice fruit. It doesn't taste like nice beer. It tastes like bad beer mixed with bad fruit. And I'm not. I I'm not having any more. I don't know if, you've, ever, have you don't know if you've ever chewed no, hubba bubba on the way to a barbecue and then had a can of Fosters. That's what's happened to my mouth. <laughs> I don't think I've ever it done just it. really. It's such oh, a shut up, Vin. You're you're just as bad. Strong. For, well, it's just such a stupid idea. Oh, it's strong though. But you don't. No one has a coffee and thinks. Oh, I wish this tasted of grapes. You want it to taste of coffee. I mean, you want maybe there to be hints of grape on the palate. Yeah, but yeah. But no one thinks Notes. this this coffee has had grapes added. Why put fruit in beer? What do you reckon, Vin? I'm gonna I'm gonna taste it in a little while. Tick it off now. I'm not going to take it off Tick now. it off not, now. You're not legally allowed to take it off now. Oh, come on, you coward. <laughs> Juicing a radio show. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Why are you anyway? Uh, anyway, folks, the taste we ticked off was a delirium beer. And I didn't like it. Time for tick off a taste. 
And appearing tonight on... Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste. Take off a taste. That's right, guys. It's uh, the semi-regular feature where Ellis and I tick off tastes, mm. uh, things we haven't tasted before, uh, that we then get a great deal of pleasure or sometimes disgust in ticking. You cannot accuse us of being fussy eaters. Um, no, you can't. Because we'll try it. Yes. John uh, brought Unless it's meat or yeah, dairy. John, <laughs> John won't try meat or dairy. I will try meat and dairy. So, um, guys, this week's taste has been a long time coming. Because we were emailed, it's an email we read out, I think, on the podcast intro some time ago from Ben, Ben the Bin Man. Oh, yeah. Um, ben the Bin Man, uh, in the section of the email we didn't read out, said, Recently, lovely, the lovely Mrs. Ben returned from L.A. of the wonderful U.S. of A. and told me of Mexican cola. It uses real sugar cane and has a much smoother, refreshing taste than Western cola. What, smooth cola? Yes. Say it ain't so. I've said Western there. Mexico is in the West. A um, European cola. Yeah, yeah, say. yeah. Uh, and is Mexico in the West? How do you define what the West is these days? <laughs> we live in a global village. Well, it's in, uh, it's, it's in I, the Southwest. Yes, south it depends where West. you are, though. I don't. I think it's to do with if you're a first, second, or third world economy. Which one's Mexico? Oh, we're thick now. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway. Um, it turns out you can import them at a cost, so I got some, originally for John's birthday. However, they were so tasty, I accidentally drank all of them. I've acquired some more and sent them your way. Perhaps you could tick them off as one of your tastes. I hope they reach you in time, as when the post office official asked me what the contents were, I replied, Mexican Coke. I had a large amount of backpedalling and Google searching to ease her concerns. So, we have, thank you so much, Ben, three bottles of Mexican Cola. And I have to say, there is an enduring pleasantness about the yes. look of a glass bottle of cola. The iconic, it's iconic, John. It is, uh, based on the shape of a lady. Fun fact. Ooh, bodies. Um, Alt-J said that. Did you see that interview? No. Where they were talking about, um, they were talking about their new album. Thank you. Uh, John's just passed me a glass. And they were talking... <laughs> We're talking about bodies. Yeah, he just went, it's just a body. Did he? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they listened listen to the show. They listened to the show. Oh, thanks, Alt-J. Alt-J, George Ezra, Hooten Tennis Club, who are our other pop star friends slash listeners? This is another one, George Ezra, Alt-J. Brian May. Uh, and uh, former Maccabees. The Maccabees. The Maccabees. Maccabees. So, um, though, just to describe the Mexican cola bottle, it's not as voluptuous, it's much slimmer um, and uh, it looks like it's sort of been stretched slightly. It's quite yeah, tall. St- stretched woman. 355 mil. Yeah, women come in all different shapes and sizes, and they're all beautiful. As do men and gender and as men. a spectrum. Yes, bodies are all different and the best and great. They're all fine, uh, yeah. unless they need treatment for illness. Anyway, yeah. um, and they're even then bodies. they're still good. Oh, still be- so I'm going to take my first sip of Mexican uh, Coca-Cola. Mm. Hmm. 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 Um, oh dear. Hmm. Oh dear, mate. It tastes a bit like Soda Stream Cola. It tastes like Tavali Pop, which. Did you ever drink Tavali Pop? No, what is it? No, it was a kind of pop that was made in Carmarthen that was very big in Carmarthen. I thought it was global, hmm. but I've mentioned it a few times at gigs, sometimes less than 10 miles away from Carmarthen. <laughs> <laughs> it's got nothing. Was it not something your mum made to stop you f- f- sort of uh, moaning and whining to get real coke? No, there was. There was. There was Why a... don't we just get you some special Tavali? No, there was a Tavali. There was a, the fridge there was a makes some noises. Come on, then. Yeah. <laughs> um, I I personally think it tastes exactly the same. No, it doesn't taste exactly. It is smoother. I'll give you that. The aftertaste is a little bit more watery than regular Coke. I'll tell you what the, the, the effect it does. I don't, I'm a diet Coke guy. Oh, me too. Um, <laughs> so I, You don't I, get a body like this drinking full fat Coke. So what, well, fun fact, oh. so there is research that thinks that diet drinks act exactly the same as regular drinks because your body thinks it's sugar anyway. You confuse, you're confusing your beautiful body. You're confusing, so you release insulin even yeah. though it's there's no sugar in it. I associate, so the insulin, and I think the insulin turns to fat. I may have guessed that last bit of I it. I associate real, as in full fat Coke, with being hungover on holiday. I associate it with the early gigs I did, but when I had stopped drinking, um, as shown by the gig diaries, because uh, I was drinking p- pints of Coke, because I didn't like Diet Coke then, um, I, uh, I associate it with furry feeling teeth. Itchy teeth. Itchy teeth. Yeah, yeah. Which I'm not getting from the Mexican Coke, it has no, to be No, so smooth. Mm. 
Anyway, pushing the boundaries of uh, digital UK indie radio. I've got to be honest, I think of all the tastes we've ticked off on this show, that is the least controversial. Yes, it's sort of a, like, it tastes like Coke. (laughs) Yeah, because, I mean, you could tell me that it was Pepsi and I'd go, oh, is it? Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I've got to be honest, I was expecting fireworks. I was expecting fireworks, but thank you very much, uh, Ben, for sending that in. And also thank you for the kind things you said in your email. Guys, it's time. James, you like you like tastes. I love tasting. I love pasting. <laughs> do you like ticking off tastes? Yeah, yeah. I think probably more than anyone I know you like ticking off tastes. I do love ticking off tastes. Let's take off a taste. And appearing tonight on... Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste. Take off a taste. Uh, did you do this feature when you were in with Ellis? No, I didn't. Okay, so this is a part of the show where we tick off tastes we haven't ticked off before or tasted. Lovely. So we've got Great idea. We've got two tastes today. Uh, the first of one, first one came from you yourself. You bought it. Do you want to tell the story yes. of this taste? Yes, it's called uh, kombucha. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Um, I first saw it in like a big like health supermarket shop. It was on on the uh, shelves, and I asked the guy stacking shelves, uh, "What is this?" Yeah. And he was like a real like kind hipster man. So in America, and he said, uh, "Oh, it's this. Uh, it's like fermented fruit, and they put it and they steep it for weeks." And he did a really long detailed thing and then he paused and went it tastes like ass <laughs> uh, so um i have not tasted it yet so I, I didn't buy it because he put me off but then i saw it today on the way here i thought i'll buy it so it's i quit sugar recommends yeah which is obviously an american sort of health thing yeah huge bad sign though isn't it if i quit sugar's recommending it um it's a it's a sort of a cultured sparkling apple drink so i'm guessing it's good for your guts yeah uh, which we all like i do know that friends of the show alt j are fans of it it oh, are are they? They? you can have it do with you know vodka. What? it smells just like Go gone on. off beer it smells right. like You've got a pint and you've handed it to the landlord. Well, let's tick, let's tick, John. Okay, so I'm pouring it out. It smells like good. Have you tried this, James? No, I've never tried oh, it you before. You swig straight from the beam. Pass it over. Okay, I'm ticking yeah, it. Go, it's yeah. sort of got a cloudy appearance. It's sort of halfway between apple juice and beer. Do you know what? It smells so much worse than it tastes, and it tastes of absolutely nothing. It does taste of nothing. Mm. I mean, that guy... Has it, it tasted tastes... some pretty bland ass. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, this doesn't taste of anything. It's very boring, isn't it? It tastes like just sort of old fizzy water with a bit of vinegar in it. Yeah, and um, but it's, if it's good for my guts, I'll I'll, I'll nail the rest of it. Yeah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm drinking the rest of this. It's, it's over with me now. Bad luck. <laughs> now the next taste uh, comes from V. And she says, uh, is a handwritten letter. She says, following my first taste last night of a new purchase, I just knew I would need to uh, share this intriguing taste sensation with you. I'm not sure if you're able to sample this curious taste uh, extra, e- extravaganza live on air, as it is a warm beverage requiring more milk. However, I do recommend that you try it when possible and share your thoughts with me and other PCDs. Well, thank you very much, V. We can taste it live uh, because we have um, both coconut milk and a, uh, a microwave here. It's Pucker Organic Latte Turmeric Gold. Uh, so it's kind of a latte powder. And you, James, mm. don't drink caffeine, do you? No. No, I haven't so this had is caffeine, caffeine five free. Uh, no added sugar. Not a lot of sugar going around today. Have you got your. I have not got one. It's in one mug. Oh, I'm it's afraid. in one mug. Yeah, I'm okay. going to take a sip first. It looks, it's the colour of bright yellow. Looks sort like of, paint. Looks a bit like paint. Looks a bit like sort of a sweet Doesn't corn like broth. Right, yeah. A little sweet corn broth. Maybe a chowder. Right, John's ticking. It tastes like Indian food. Oh, yeah? Just yeah. like g- generic Indian food. Yeah. Well, <laughs> since I chose that cuisine earlier on, I don't, mm. I don't mind if I do. Vin, you can maybe tell me specifically what I'm thinking of. What does that... Oh, I quite like it. It tastes like pilau rice. Well, it's yeah, the, it's the turmeric, turmeric. That's the colour that they use. Turmeric, God. But that's definitely got like Holdy. S- some saffron element in it. Cardamom oh. pods and saffron powder. There you go. Get in, Robbins. I met Clark Peters once, who's uh, in, in The Wire. Oh, uh, the, the, oh, he, what's his character? He plays uh, Le- Lester. Lester, Lester, Lester. Lester Smooth, Lester Cool. And uh, he said uh, turmeric should be used instead of penicillin. Hmm. Yeah. 
worrying, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's sure. really big in like um, Ayurvedic medicine and stuff oh, like that. I'm, I'm sure loving this. I'm loving it. I'm sure it's great for you, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust it if I had meningitis. <laughs> I think I mainly like the coconut milk here. Yeah, that's mainly one. But the, but then the, the little the little kick of the no, it's not even it a kick. It tastes like a coconut milk pilau rice soup. Yeah, mm. <laughs> which I wouldn't also, mind. It's more yeah, like a lassi because of the milkiness. Like yes. a lassi. Like a lassi. Like a lassi. Thank you very much, V, for sending in that taste. Thank you, James, for the um, ass juice. <laughs> and uh, coming up, <laughs> listeners, we have music from right now, Arctic Monkeys. Oh. <laughs> Oh, ho, 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 what an absolute stonker. Under pressure, Queen slash David Bowie. Uh, one of the great songs that doesn't have a chorus. Yes. Name some others. Um, <laughs> Thunder Road. Correct. Yes. Uh, What's Up by Four Non Blondes. Don't know. It does have a know. chorus. Uh, a Bittersweet Symphony. I would argue that does have a chorus. Oh. You'd argue wrong, mate, according to <laughs> NME.com. Yeah, well, uh, what are they Rhapsody. <laughs> In the Aeroplane Over the Sea. Yeah. Up the Junction by Squeeze. Money by Pink Floyd. There House Music. House Music. <laughs> general. Brackets yeah, General. Brackets General. Um, Bob Dylan, Subterranean Homesick Blues. Uh, anyway, guys, if you want to let us know. Rapping. Rapping. <laughs> if you want to know what your favourite song is without a chorus, then go ahead. <laughs> but right now, it's time to tick off a taste. And appearing tonight on... Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste. Tick off a taste. That's right, guys. This is where Ellis and I tick off the tastes you've sent in. And we've got a wonderful sort of log jam of tastes uh, at Radio X Towers. Uh, today, we're going to tick off a taste sent in by Lorna. She says, uh, on a recent attempt to live my best life by doing things that I've always wanted to do but never felt brave enough for, I went on a solo trip to Melbourne earlier this year for some comedy and sightseeing. St- Australia, presumably, not Derbyshire. Absolutely. <laughs> And a little uh, shop in Fitzroy, I passed the turning for Matlock oh, yeah. in my car when Izzy was doing a voiceover on the radio. Oh, nice, nice. And I thought, you lucky, lucky, <laughs> lucky man. Uh, in a little shop in Fitzroy... Takes the pressure off me, gotta be honest. <laughs> I had a quote, saw this and thought of you moment when I was faced with a selection of hot sauces from the Melbourne Hot Sauce Company. Hopefully the bottle I posted has made it to you safely. Thank you very much, Lorna. The bottle remains intact. However, on the first... Uh, I took the lid off and the first time I screwed it back on, it shattered. So uh, my first message is to the people at Melbourne Hot Sauce Company, your lids are not fit for purpose. Uh, however, let's find out if your sauce is. It's Melbourne Hot Sauce XPA hot smo- Hop Smoked Jalapeno. You're excited about this, aren't you, John? I'm very excited, even though uh, producer uh, Joe got me a mug of water, which I see as a personal slight. <laughs> got you a mug of, got mug of, a mug of milk, milk, even though you've completed Project Spice. Yeah. So here we go. I'm pouring it onto a tablespoon. Got some for you, Ellis. Lovely. Where's your spoon, mate? There you go. Here we go. A glug of that. And I'll uh, keep okay. the wolf from the door. Down the hatch. Down this the hatch. Here we go. Always worries my dad, this feature. <laughs> oh, it's very mild. Very smoky. Yes, mild, 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 mild. I was expecting my bum to come off, but that's abs- <laughs> it's fine. It's, it's abs- I, I'll, I'll be honest with you, Lorna, it's actually very mild. Yeah. Which w- this is it's absolutely as- perfect for it- our old friend, the Bloody Man. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what it's as spicy as? Spicy crisps. Yes, it's a bit like a flaming hot monster munch. Yeah, yeah, or the Dorito version. I can't remember what that sizzling barbecue or whatever it's called. Chili heat wave. Chili heat wave. It's as it's as heat wise. It's is is chili heat wave. I really was expecting fireworks, but I don't think that's Project Spice. I think even oh, that is lovely. Back when I had the palate of a toddler, I would have been able to cope with this. That said, not taking anything away from the taste itself. It's very pleasant. The smokiness really adds a cosmopolitan edge to this. Um, it's like, a, I tell you what, it's taste. like a sort of a mild Oaxaca sauce. Yeah, but I'm getting the Midwest of America. I'm getting barbecues. I'm getting, I can, uh, the, the smoke from next door's barbecue is drifting over the garden fence. And actually, uh, the person who's making the barbecue next door is ready to be queer eyed. Mm, mm. <laughs> That's the kind of part of America I'm in. I've had a breakdown and I've moved to that bit of America. I've quit the show. John uh, is broadcasting despite his Bloody Mary addiction. Mm. Uh, uh, we, we carry on, well, John carries on for another three months. 
show before he's sacked um, and Dan O'Connell does the Saturday show instead <laughs> but all in all nice taste nice taste <laughs> horrible keep those, vision keep those coming in uh, right now this is Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino Casino by Arctic Monkeys coming up we are going to have a crisp off in Tick Off a Taste Radio, Radio. X Ellis James and John Robbins and appearing tonight on Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste. Take off a taste. That's right, guys, and it's a crisp special uh, today on Take Off a Taste. We've got two sets of crisps battling it out. Um, just checking the ingredients to one of them. They're all foreign, so I think it's fine. First off, this is from Hamad. He says, the name's Hamad, quite new to the fold, as a 204-er. Wow. Pretty recent. So Newbie. Hamad's only been listening since the 204th show. I've been listening since I jacked in my job as a scientist to start my own car valeting business. Best of luck to you, Hamad. Bit random, but I've gone from spending my days in a silent lab watching zebrafish breed to living my best life in the fresh air, building a customer base of absolute legends and sampling the delights of the digital radios they invariably have in their quite posh cars. It must be quite interesting to see what radios, uh, what, what, what's tuned to what. Well, he says, I came across you two one Saturday in January when a client's car was tuned to your commercial digital indie radio station, which I now listen every week. I like the sound of that person. Now, Hamad says, I was in an Arabic supermarket with my fiancé Sophie at the weekend and we picked up a few bags of magic jaws for my two younger brothers who practically live off them. Uh, they're vegan, John, and given your penchant for space raiders, probably right up your street. Mind you, Sophie thinks they taste a bit like we. Um, <laughs> Great. So, that's crisp number one from Hamad. Okay, we crisps. Crisp number two is from Andy. He says, I hope this finds you well. While on holiday a few weeks ago, I found a taste you might like to tick off in the arena of European crisp flavourings. I was looking for some crisps other than paprika flavour at the yeah. local supermarket. Very disappointing, Europe. Awful crisps. What are American Europe. crisps like? Never been to a... Massive. <laughs> Massive. You can sit on one. Refillable. Yeah, they're like... Um, <laughs> Unlimited crisps. They're like a poppadom, but a hundred times the size, like those yeah. massive lily pads. Yeah, and you, as long as you sit in the restaurant, in the crisp restaurant that they have in America, cool America, America they'll keep bringing you a big crisp to nib- nibble on. Uh, it's the uh, obviously the awful obesity crisis they have over there. So he goes uh, he goes on. I spotted these fried egg crisps next to the Spanish equivalent uh. of our old friends Hernig and Senf. Great. Although intrigued by what these might be like, ultimately I bottled it and got myself some Doritos. However, I thought highly capable taste ticking broadcasters such as yourselves might like to give them a go. Now I think the um, fried egg crisps are vegan. Remarkably, I cannot imagine them being nice. They've got sort of a, an. A, it's all in foreign. So you're broadly I, it's vegan. All in foreign. Come on, John. It's all in Spanish. You're broadly so, vegan. Broadly vegan. Um, right. So I, I, th- I think we can. I think this is fine. I think this is fine. So first off, I'm going to go for a wee flavoured crisp. Oh, great. Um, Oh, mate, they have an odd smell. I'm going to taste them now. They're in the shape of little straws. They smell straws. absolutely vile. I don't mind right, them. Right, we crisp. Here we go. They taste a bit like what's it? They're cheese and ketchup flavour. There is an aftertaste that re- that's a real kidney punch. Well, why not remove that aftertaste? The with... smell of the back is, it smells like a, a next door's bins. Why do next door's <laughs> bins smell worse than your own? Well, it's like next door's farts. <laughs> So, why not take that taste out of your mouth with some lovely fried egg crisps? Okay then, Europe. What have you got to offer me? Oh, wow. Oh, my They God. taste remarkably like fried eggs. Yeah. They taste like fried eggs on toast. Because, you know, crisps don't taste like the thing they purport to taste of. Ever. Apart from Spanish fried egg crisps, where it is 100% accurate... If you could make it, crisps have the consistency of a fried egg in some sort of crazy parallel universe, the taste would be identical. I mean, it's so not pick- a good thing. It's not a positive. It's actually <laughs> disgusting. Pick a winner. Magic Jaws, which taste of cheese and ketchup and wee, or fried egg crisps, which taste too much like fried For eggs. For the accuracy, I'd have to say fried eggs. But the I've wee, got to give it to them. The, the wee crisps were gross. Oh, oh, oh I'm a bit depressed now. Okay, guys, thank you so much for those two tastes. Send all your tastes to Radio X, Leicester Square, London, W1. Here comes the gloom. 1H7LA. WC. 
WC2H7LA. Correct. FAO, Ellis and John. Here comes the sadness. <laughs> oh, didn't like those crisps at all. They've app really knocked the wind out of my sails. The Wales Republic of Ireland game and the Swansea Millwall game now just a distant memory. I feel really gloomy. Chill out, mate. Teenage kicks, or should I say, taste nage ticks? Mm, hit it to make me sound cool. And appearing tonight on. Tick off a taste, tick off a taste. Tick off a taste, tick off a taste. Tick off a taste, tick off a taste. Tick off a taste. Tick off a taste. John, yes. Have, have you stopped trying? <laughs> no, I've started trying hardest yeah. in the world. It's trying too hard. I'm uh, hoping to get a million dollar move to KWBBL Radio oh, USA. K Rock. K Rock Radio. It's time for a listener to tick off a taste. And this week's taste comes from Vince. If it came from my brother. Your brother? What's your brother's name? He's called Rajiv. Hey, Rajiv. Hey, big Raj. What? Which one of those will he prefer, Rajiv, his name, Probably or Big, big Raj? Raj really? Big yeah. Raj is a yeah. cool name. Is he yeah. big? He's bigger than me. Is he? He's my big brother. How tall is he? Uh, taller. Big taller. Big taller. Raj. Taller. Taller. Uh, so, describe to us and the listeners, uh, producer Vin, what we're dealing with. We're, uh, we're about to taste some uh, years old mate. So, he's moving flat at the moment, and he was going through his cupboards, and he found this little, this thing... So I've brought it in. So he got it from Peru years back, and mm. it's a South American drink. And he um, sort of smuggled it through in an adapted Lynx can. It does sort <laughs> of have fun. that feel to it. And there's a similar drink, which um, is from is from the coca plant, which is illegal. Is this the one that people drink in those documentaries about tribes and then throw up and see the Lord? No, I think that's the <laughs> that's the Simon Alpster one. That's what you're thinking of. What's that? Uh, I can't I'd, it's I'd like a go on that. What? You want to throw up and see the Lord? Yeah, I just want to see the Lord. <laughs> well, Once what? I don't mind being sick, I, never minded it. I would like to see the Lord, but ideally not whilst being sick. Oh, I just don't care. I'm just looking on the Wikipedia page, and um, mate just... or mache yeah. uh, is uh, uh, also known as uh, shimaro. It's the national drink of Argentina. And Uruguay and Bolivia. It's Have they not had Coca-Cola? It's great. Very popular <laughs> amongst footballers. Yeah, well, so, this is how it came to my attention, yeah. because in, during the World Cup in Russia, a lot of the Uruguayan team and the Argentinian team were yeah, drinking it on the bus. Yeah, seen drinking it. Yeah. But because Pochettino's at Tottenham, a lot of the Spurs players drink it. So Eric ah. Dyer drinks it and Deli Ali drinks it and they love it. And it it's a stimulant, so it makes apparently makes you feel much nicer than coffee. It doesn't like, arouse yes. you, does it? Well, we'll find out. I don't, want to, I don't want to have my fertility increased for the next sort of five hours. I've got to drive to Brighton. <laughs> got to do a gig. <laughs> I've got to cycle home. Um, it would be awful, wouldn't it? That said, if it does have that effect, maybe I'll take some in a in a, in a pouch for, for a, a other... I'm going on holiday on Monday, and, and we're both a bit under the weather. Um, right, so it's in a kind of gourd. Have we, got, have we tweeted a photo of this? I think so, yeah, we have. And, uh, so it's in, a, it's in a ceremonial gourd. And with, there's a metal sort of straw with a sort of sieve on the bottom as it's well. A, it's, a, it's a sieve come spoon. Yes. It's, a, it's, a, it's a straw in the shape of a spoon but the, the bottom of the straw is encased in a sort of a, an infuser styled sieve yeah because it currently looks like an oxo cube that's had wood shavings oh, yeah. sprinkled into yeah, it yeah it looks like a tree has thrown up have yeah. a bang on it mate yeah so this is this is going to make me feel like Lionel Messi so because I'm carrying a bit of a cold I'm going second is it hot it is quite hot it's like too hot Johnny Vaughan has just texted me burn it what, why why uh, then what? What's he talking about? About the matter. Oh, right. Very... You, you haven't got his laptop. <laughs> <laughs> it's very woody. It is a bit like wooden fags. Wooden fags? Wood and fags. Ooh, woodbines. Peter Stuyvesant. I, I, Do you feel good? No, Rothmans. not yet. Not yet. I think in about an hour's time, I'm going to become very, very amorous. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> for, that, for that cycle journey home. Silk cut. Mmm. <laughs> It just tastes like it just tastes like a pipe. It tastes like smoking a pipe. Can I? Do, who wants? Do you want to try it next without my cold? Oh yeah, on? I'll go. Before It'll you. probably cure me of my cold. I mean, I don't. I don't feel like. Uh, 
I don't feel like Eric Dyer or Lionel Messi yet. Are you going to get obsessed with it and do start doing Mark Wahlberg esque work? Yeah, waking up at half past two and do drinking you read about that? What an idiot! <laughs> also, why just move things forward five hours? <laughs> he goes to bed at half past seven p.m. What an absolute idiot! The best thing on that in that uh, on his schedule is when it says family time slash meetings <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for an hour. Yeah. He he goes to bed. This when, is quite nice when this Great British Menu starts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, He's not getting any of the big news. He's not can getting I news go on this? this tastes like it's good for you. I can already feel my defensive positioning getting better. Yeah, it does taste <laughs> like it's good for you. Right, my then. decision making has improved. Do you Ooh. know what? It looks a bit like um, the dipping sauce you get in Wagamama. Yeah, actually, yeah, it's cleared up a bit, hasn't it? Yeah. Okay. It, it also a, looks like it, it, it looks like if you swept up in juice since. Oh, it's quite unpleasant. <laughs> it's got a taste of lemongrass. It's sort of like if lemongrass and hay in a... Um, I mean, it's... Yeah, it's... Uh, my hmm. mouth hasn't felt like this since I smoked a cigar about 20 years ago in a pub to look older <laughs> so I could get served. <laughs> a I cigar? Thought, yeah. I thought, who's not going to serve someone smoking a cigar? <laughs> That's why I started smoking cigars, because they were much less likely to ID you. Yeah, yeah. Because it would be like you're buying it for your that granddad. Was, that was my thinking. I don't mind it to... It does. It tastes like a bad pipe. It tastes like when you get um, pipe smokers will know this. Uh, <laughs> when you get a buildup of saliva in the base of the bowl, then you accidentally suck pipe saliva back into your mouth, oh. like a kind of uh, tobacconist's trumpet. Yes, <laughs> I don't feel amazing yet. I feel quite alive. Do you? Yeah. I'm waiting for mine to kick I in. I think my eyebrows have gone up. I think I've got a high tolerance for matte. Mm. I tell you what. It's, it's, in all honesty, listeners, I know you're all desperate to hear the description of this for the eighth time. It tastes like if you leave a green tea bag in for way too long. Yes. With a bit of lemongrass and pipes. Yes. But it, I do look quite cool. I feel it, a bit like Gandalf with a big... It looks a bit like a, I'm Sherlock Holmes smoking a water pipe. There, 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 is, a, there is a fantastical element to how it looks. Mm. Feels like I'm going to be able to uh, communicate with Sauron. I have to be really on my guard. Cause he's tricky. He's tricky. He'll borrow a fiver and he won't pay it back. It's 13 minutes past two coming up to 14 minutes past two. And that could only mean one thing. It's time for Tick Off a Taste. And appearing tonight on... Tick Off a Taste, Tick Off a Taste. Tick Off a Taste, Tick Off a Taste. Tick Off a Taste, Tick Off a Taste. Tick Off a Taste. Tick off a taste. That's right, guys. It's time to tick off a taste. Uh, the section of the show where Ellis and I taste things we've not tasted before, thus ticking them off. Uh, this week's tastes, plural, uh, come from Kaylee. And she writes uh, to say, Dear Ellis and John, I recently ticked off a huge step in ensuring I am living my best life by travelling to the other side of the world for the first time, the beautiful Indonesian island of Bali. Ooh. This is a massive achievement for uh, me, as being a fully-fledged member of Team Anxiety, getting on planes for any length of time fills me with a nightmarish meltdown-inducing dread. However, whilst over there, I stumbled across some interesting tastes that I wanted to share with you both. First up are snakeskin fruit chips. The Balinese informed me that this fruit increases a man's fertility and improves how to put this politely... Just try it. ...the f force of his emotion. To me. <laughs> uh, I've, I've edited that. Uh, I can't vouch for this myself, but enjoy. To essence. No. Okay. Uh, let's not dig down that well. Secondly, mm. uh, the sour turmeric herbal candies, because why not? Thank you very much, Kaylee. Um, I was concerned initially when I opened the package to find the snakeskin fruit. I was thinking, how am I going to give a message to people going, guys, I mean, I not don't want to get a moral high ground, but could you please not send us things covered in snakeskin? <laughs> Turns out it's just the way that the uh, skin of the fruit looks. Yeah, no so, snakes have been killed in the making of this feature. No. Um, uh, and it's actually, uh, it's called Salak, uh, in Latin, Salaka Zalaka, which sounds like a Frank Zappa album. And it's a species of palm tree native to Java and Sumatra, where I have been. Um <laughs> Yeah, I've lived a life, mate. You're like Marco Polo. <laughs> um, or Michael you're, Palin. You're like, a, you're like a packet of polos yeah. or Michael Heseltine, <laughs> um, who also has been on lots of journeys. Oh, so, yeah. Ellis, grab a snakeskin fruit. So, just to describe them to you listeners, they look like dried miniature half avocados in white. 
Would you say that's fair? No, they look like hollowed out thick crisps. Yeah, they look like cookies, don't they? Uh, guys, I know exactly what they look like. The inner lining of a conker mm. bit. Yes! Yeah. Uh, the, the horse yes. chestnuts. So anyway... Because it's gonna... conker season, they also look a little bit like the inner, uh, the inside of an ear. That, yeah. That mm. someone would um, choose to dissect. If maybe well, if you'd enjoy eating them. Sort of... It's not look off a taste. Oh. Oh, not bad. It doesn't taste of anything. It tastes a bit like a dried apple crisp that you would get in, for example, oh, yeah. a it healthy does cereal. It does eventually. Like fruit and fibre. You know in fruit and fibre you get those yeah. little dried apple crisps. Um, I don't mind it, mate. I thought that would be much worse than it is. Actually, oh. it tastes of barely anything. Mm. No, I don't mind yeah. it. Yeah, it's, it's residual fruit and fibre. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm going to eat a lot of them. Does Thank it taste good much, for you? Bailey. Yeah, it doesn't taste bad for you. One step at a time, Martin. Sorry, that's a reference that's to an, an advert that was about 30 years old. What's that from? Brunflix. That's right, one step at a time, I Martin. would say 1991, 1992. Similar era to... Um, one uh, step at a time, Martin. What on earth are you <laughs> My mum could do better than that, you great wet lettuce. What are you doing? <laughs> one step at a time, Martin, was he was going on a health kick by eating Brunflix, and then his friend or son or next door neighbour said he could go for a jog or a... You know, you know, play some squash, and then he he tucked into his brand flex. He went one step at a time, Martin. I sometimes say one one step at a time, Martin, in my head. If someone asks me for something that I like beyond my reach, do you? Yeah, one step, step at, at a time, time Martin. Martin. Anyway, uh, next taste is <laughs> is the sour turmeric herbal candy. It's amazing adverts because they stick in your head, but I never bought brand flakes. Idiots. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a sour turmeric herbal candy. It comes in a miniature little pouch um, and is... Oh, oh dear. Turmeric, very good for you. Yeah, it's people have turmeric in coffee, don't they? Yeah. Turmeric lattes. Turmeric lattes, yeah. Idiots. Yeah. What's wrong with good old-fashioned mellow birds? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's sort I of stuck inside. It's stuck inside the packet, I think. Oh, I've got it, I've got it. One step at a time, Martin. Oh, dear. <laughs> this wrapper. I think what's happened is they sort of heated and then cooled in, in transit. Yeah. Oh, oh. mate. Oh, God! This heaven. is amazing radio. Yeah. <laughs> Two men open things. They're but very small little packets, actually, Vin. I've got mine out. I've. <clears throat> oh, here we go. It's going in the old I'm mouth. I'm hungry now. Hmm. What can I just say? I like, br broadly speaking, I like turmeric. It's sort of citrus... Now I've got this sort of resin under my nails, which is going to bother me for about two years. Just clean your nails. I'm just licking it. <laughs> oh, you look like a little shrew. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that just tastes like a classic sweet. Yeah. I don't mind it at all. Foreign issue classic sweet. <laughs> yeah. And it's halal. Oh, great. Yeah. Uh, Lovely. Yeah. Lovely the, stuff. I think mm. they came from Bali. Yeah. Oh, it's it's a great holiday destination for an ITV1 dating programme, isn't it? Mm. Bali. Oh, imagine lying in a hammock with uh, you, you, you know, your full-time GF. Imagine BF. it. What a scene. <laughs> what a scene to imagine. Uh, guys, it's time to Tickle a Taste. And appearing tonight on... Tick off a taste, tick off a taste. Tick off a taste, tick off a taste. Tick off a taste, tick off a taste. Tick off a taste. Tick off a taste. That's right, guys. Uh, Ellis and I have got two tastes, one each of the same taste, and we're going to tick them off. I can't wait to complete taste. Oh, it's going to be great. Yeah. And then, and once we've completed taste, any new ones they want to invent, they have to run by us first. Yeah, yeah, and we'll s sit there in lab courts <laughs> saying, I accept that. Put it out. This week's tastes come from Sid. He says, Konnichiwa, Ellis-san and John-san. I just returned to the UK from a wonderful three-week holiday in Japan, and I thought I should continue your show's tradition of global taste ticking by sending in an omiyagi, a small Japanese gift of my own. I first encountered these enclosed items in a smoky, intimate jazz bar in Tokyo's tre in Tokyo's trendy Asukasa district. Oh yes, please. The food stuff appeared in a small pot alongside an array of sweets, nuts, and other bar snacks. These snacks accompanied a smooth glass of single malt whiskey, which I'd ordered to help myself settle into an even smoother Japanese jazz vibe. Oh. I won't spoil your taste experience by revealing my assessment of the item, but it's definitely not something I've encountered before. I've since discovered that the snack uh, is called umeboshi, with this particular brand called umeshiba. I'd recommend not Googling this until you've tasted it, as it wasn't what I expected from first sight. 
Well, um, it looks very chocolatey, John. Does it? I think so. Oh, it looks like a massive grape. It looks like a sort of a radish grape. Yeah. Um, oh, have we Googled it to the extent that we've... Well, it looks it's not like meat, is it? No, it looks I like a veg- uh, uh, sorry, fruit to me. It looks like a lychee a little bit. Yeah. Are you sure it's not meat? It's, it's not, not a meaty fruit. Because it does, well, it does have the look of a, I would say, dog's testy. Yeah, but I'd, it, it's clearly... Anyway, it's um, from from what I'm looking at. There's it's no not in English, and your, your rule is if it's not in English, you can't be blamed. Okay, I well that's for non-vegan, not really meat. I don't think they've put. I don't think they've put meat in the fruit. John. It's it's got a smell. It mi- it smells like shoes. It smells <laughs> like shoes, but it also smells like it's been pickled and soaked in alcohol at the same time. Oh, John, yeah. I'm going to bite first, so that, okay, so thanks, that you don't mate. have to. Vin, first to tick. Oh, um, it's not meat. <laughs> okay, it feels like my eyeballs are getting smaller. Right. Okay. Oh God. Oh, it's hard. Oh, I really don't like it. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Aunt. I'm re- oh, it's salty. Oh, I'm, I am sorry. I'm it's sorry. It's like a salty plum. I like yeah, it. it's been fermented, I think. It's like, um. oh, oh my good gosh. Oh. I don't mind it, actually. I've spat, I've spat out. It's like um, kimchi. Yeah. It's like a it's like a kimchi plum. I don't kimchi mind it. Kimchi is a kind How has that happened? Fermented cabbage. That this tastes like the sort of thing I would have for breakfast. Oh, God, what? Are you, are you mad? You can't it's eat... It's like vinegar. I like vinegar. I like all forms Imagine of vinegar. Imagine eating you know that what? in a jazz club. But all... Oh, yes. But because John mm. kind of loves the rules, when it comes to food, he's willing to break them. And I would he... love that sliced <sighs> under um, uh, uh, cheese on toast if I the ate cheese. First thing. Yeah. It tastes like I'm getting wrinkles. Ah, yes! It's horrible. But I on, like but it. On, on I'm my, really sorry to slag it off. But I can't, I can't do that. I can't finish that. I wonder if it's good for you in any way. Mm. Oh, good, 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 we never had a pickleback. Who, who does that? Me. Once. It was awful. <laughs> a, a, a Tom Parry's birthday. Do people do that? Yeah. They have a, a what? A gherkin and whiskey? A shot of gherkin brine followed by a shot of whiskey. <sighs> Top tip. Never use sweet gherkin brine. Use salty ones. Don't, just sweet, stay, leave disgusting. the brine alone, everyone. Oh. Guys. Teachers. Guys. Leave I've, the brine alone. I finished it. Oh, well, there'll be another tick off a test next time we get... One sent in, and then we'll have completed taste. And appearing tonight on Take off a taste, 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 take off a taste. That's right, guys. Uh, we're taking off a taste today, and um, there's a slight theme to uh, today's took of a taste because our taste uh, was given to us live in person by a young listener to the show called Sandy. Hey, Sandy, shout hi. out, mate, if you're hi. listening. Hi, Sandy. Live tastes. Sandy was at our book launch at Waterstones, Tottenham Court Road, this Thursday. Um, but we've also had an email from Martin on the subject of our uh, younger vibe squadron. Um, <laughs> Martin has two questions about our tour show. First, he says, um, I currently have a cataract in my left eye, and as a result of the ac- as an accident as a child, I have no real vision in my right. Uh, I finally got to see a surgeon last night, and it looks like he might operate on the 2nd of November, which is our uh, London Apollo date. Uh, he says, if I do have the opposite, worth me attending the show, um, as I'll be suffering from literal darkness. Is there a visual element? Um well, Martin, don't you worry. You'll be absolutely fine. Yeah. It's mainly an oral element. We'll be reading uh, from the book and chatting. There's no, going to be no sort of pyrotechnics. You will miss out on my beauty, obviously. You'll miss out on Ellis's beauty. Uh, you might miss out on seeing our faces clearly, but it's not It's not in any way sort of... There's not much dance or anything no, like no, that. No, 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 um, no. But he also goes on... It's not uh, Hamilton. No, no. Uh, if I can't go, would it be appropriate for my wife to bring our son Fraser... Uh, who he describes as a shame enthusiast. Uh, he's eight, but will be nine on the 8th of November. Eight-year-old member of the Vibe Platoon. Yes, uh, I did consider intentionally avoiding 2nd of November for my op, but the wife has said that's not an option. Uh, in terms of suitability for younger legends, it very much depends on what your attitude to... Um, beauty is. Beauty <laughs> slash... Life beauty. Uh, swearing. So I remember um, Sandy was at the front of our book launch, and there were a couple of there were a couple of F's and one Jeff, and um, 
uh, Sandy's dad sort of looked at him and went, ooh. As if to go, oh, this is grown up. Well, how grown and up talk. Sandy clearly loved it. Yes, <laughs> because um, children love it. I would, I would say it will be the sort of equivalent language of a of a top fifteen, but a but not an eighteen. No, no, no. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but but I have to say, we are two guys who, once we've got a couple of beers in us, we may <laughs> swear like docker. smell like smell like. But there'll be no sort of adult imagery as such. <laughs> Because um, that's the difference, isn't it? You're, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some parents may not mind swearing. Some of them may mind sort of uh, descriptions of adult activities. There's going to be none of that. We're not going to spend five minutes describing the perfect way to... Uh, Can't wait to hear in- this. ...become intimate with your partner. Yeah, of course, of course, of course. We'll Unless that, that comes up in the Q&A. <laughs> um, anyway, so Sandy's taste... <laughs> Is something I've seen on desks here at uh, Global Radio, but have never actually. Uh, I've always been quite interested by it. its toxic waste, okay. which I had always assumed was some kind of like putty-like um, bubble gum, but it's actually a hard-boiled sour sweet. And I, I have a suspicion this carries the torch from the warheads that I used to have as a child. When I was in Year Seven in school, and I was in the canteen, and I was a bit of a joker. I asked uh, Madge, um, who sort of was handing the food out, I said, can I have chips and toxic waste, please? And she gave me beans. Ah. Yeah. What did you mean? Exactly. I wanted Madge to sort of try and guess. Oh. Actually, I did mean beans, and I was glad when she gave me beans. Good. Well, there's your warhead, mate. Um, so I'm, I, I like sour sweets. I do. Um, but I'm hoping they're as sour as sour can be. So let's go. Mm, quite Ooh, sour. Hey. But not... Remember... About two years ago, we had those super sour bonbons sent in, yeah, which were impractically ah, sour. I'm not sure about this, actually. I don't um, mind. It tastes like vitamin C powder. No, thanks. Mm. It's too much for me. Too much for my bl- oh, my bland palate. I don't mind it. I don't like it at all. Did you just swallow it straight down? Of course I didn't. Joe, say <laughs> the sour makes me angry sometimes. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> You're through the sour to the purple pretty quickly, though. Those sour bonbons we had, I think, uh, before your time, Joe, thing. were absolutely unbearable. Because you know how usually you can suck the sourness off? Yeah. With these, it never ended. Yeah. I recall Maximum listening. Maximum sour. Oh, yeah, and now I'm through to the purple, so thanks very much for that, Sandy. Yeah, thanks, Sandy. Though I'm not quite sure why adults who work at Global Radio have this on their desk. Because we're a cool company, John. I guess we are, really, just playing, sit, playing foosball with our sour candy. Just sit down on a... F- a bean bag and play mm. Fortnite. What is Fortnite? I don't know. It hasn't it been banned Was by it? Elon Musk? Uh, I, I can't I say. I don't know. <laughs> it's been banned by Elon Musk. I, well, I in on my street yesterday. There's a, someone's got a Tesla car. There's a Tesla car on my street, and it is too big. It looks so stupid because it's not like big like a sort of a Hummer. It's it's the same shape as a as a regular car, but it just looks like it's been sort of increased in size by one and a half times. It looks so stupid and must be impossible to park. I think cars are getting bigger, but British parking bays are staying the same size. No, well, what happens is oh, here we go. So hatch in generally um, a, car, a car company's Don't range. Do the time outside, Joe. <laughs> a company's car range will get bigger. So their smallest car will get bigger to the point at which they need to introduce a new smaller car. It's mad if you look at it. So the the, the Golf is the equivalent of the Passat from yeah, but ten years. The ago. Golf used to be their small car. Yeah, then yeah. they introduced the Polo. the Polo. But then the, now there's one smaller than the Polo because they keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But the Tesla is too big. I, it looks so stupid. I just I have found parking tight because there are two big cars either side in British parking. Base. I'd love to know your thoughts on this. Text us on 83936 <laughs> or tweet at Radio X. Well, you say that, but cars are getting bigger, but spaces aren't, which yeah, is the that's, problem. that's the point I'm trying to yeah. make. Yeah, and, and, and it's the same with... Um, it's the same with roads, because obviously roads in London are built for horses and carriages, yeah. not for Land Rover Discovery Evokes. Oh, God, imagine being Prime Minister. I would love to be Prime Minister. I would ban everything. Would you? Yes. Alcohol? No. no. <laughs> it's the Model X. It's too big. Anyway, sorry. That's um, that's my sort of slightly tamer version of Clarkson's... Uh... <laughs> Clarkson's hyperbole. <laughs> yeah. Now it's time for Tick Off a Taste. And appearing tonight on 
Tick off a taste, tick off a taste. Tick off a taste, tick off a taste. Tick off a taste, tick off a taste. Tick off a taste. Tick off a taste. That's right. It's time for Tick Off a Taste, where John and I try to complete taste. Yes, and uh, we've been handed. We've got so many tastes at the minute. They're backed up. Yeah, we get get we get given a lot of tastes at the gigs in particular. Um, which we is could a open a restaurant of unusual tastes with all the tastes we've got yeah, to take off. Yeah, we could. I love the presents we get at the gigs. A girl called Thea gave me a, p- a picture. She was only eleven. She gave it me, and it was a, of a football. Um, with all of my favourite things on it, including Izzy and Wales. I, no, that, she gave us the fossils. She gave us a fossil as well. I got a picture. Did you? Yes. Didn't want a picture. <laughs> but thank you very much for the fossil, Thea. Um, anyway, this week's tastes uh, were given to us by Brian and Holly at, I believe, um, uh, the... Gla- uh, the um, Glasgow. The Glasgow gig. And I did do that uh, accent <laughs> yeah. right off the top. And Great. sort of lost everyone for about three minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, Ellis, the first taste is Mixery Cola. That's great. Bring it on. What's the one thing you've always thought beer was lacking? Um, um, I don't know, chips? No, it's Coca-Cola. What do you mean? Well, this is beer with Coca-Cola what? in it. Uh, it's Mixery. It's going to sound oh. like a house party gone It's going to taste like a house party mm. gone wrong. Or gone right. It smells like shandy. Sugar me <laughs> on the belly. It tastes... <laughs> not It sure. tastes like belly. It was belly? Oh, sorry, you just said belly. It tastes like... Um, not that I've never tasted enough. But, come on, we've all kissed a belly in moments of tenderness, <laughs> and that's nothing to be... And as a warning. ...ashamed of. <laughs> and as a warning. Like a rattlesnake's tail. Um, uh, it, it tastes like um, uh, the shandy, um, uh, but sort of a bad shandy. It is like, you know, I mean, I haven't had a big house party this for a long time, but you know when you wake up and there's cans sort of on the mantelpiece mm. and some of the cam- cans are full of fags? It tastes like a pub smells in the morning. Yes. Yeah, it tastes like when I used to work in pubs. Um, and uh, what Who my friend Robert at school <laughs> used to call a Stella Greer, which was Coke and uh, lager. Ellis oh, has had another sip. And secondly... I'm not sure about it. To but wash it, it like, down... Is it alcoholic? Am I drunk? Yeah, 3.1%. Oh... Uh, bonbon, Radnafisk, Radnafisk slash Herskit Sillet. Um, so this is a, I would imagine, some form of sweet from um, Scandinavia. And in my experience, it'll either taste of salt or licorice. Yep. <laughs> Which one? It's got, it's sort of like cherry and licorice. It's not unpleasant, actually. It's hard. And they're shaped like fish. Well, I don't know why. <laughs> All Scandinavian sweets are shaped like fish and taste of salt. I, you know, there's obviously a room for patriotism, and my patriotism uh, mainly. Oh, they got a lot of salt in the middle. Mainly comes in defence of our sweets and crisps. Mine in in defence of our pubs. Yeah, you don't get sweets and crisps in pubs, like in in other yeah. countries, like you don't. <laughs> Why put salt in the middle of a perfectly good sweet? It was wrong with people, there, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> What was that? <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> Ellis's anecdote. No. No, I there's loads of anecdotes backed up. That's the thing. Just you wait till I get round to telling a new one. Yeah. Good radio that off. <laughs> uh, guys, thanks for your tastes. Hope you enjoyed the sound of us ticking them off. Ellis James and John Robbins. And appearing tonight on Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste. Tick off a taste. That's right, guys. Here at Radio X, we see it as our duty to tick off all the tastes known to person kind. And uh, today's taste is sent in by Myra. I think I'm saying that. It might be Mira. And uh, she is writing from Finland. And I think, um, yeah, Myra has uh, sent in something before, uh, Finnish Marmite. And uh, this week, uh, Myra sends two tastes, but what I am struck by, as I was um, the last time you wrote in, is how beautiful and neat your handwriting is. It's a sort of handwriting that, if handwriting is your thing, would give you uh, ASMR. ASMR. It is insane. 
It's not like... I um, cannot stop looking at it. It looks like a computer-generated version of a person's handwriting. Yes, because it's not like um, a sort of a robot's perfect handwriting, but it's just so neat and nice, and I'd like to read a very long story written uh, like this. But I'd love to see how that writing responds to an exam uh, situation. Or any form of stress. Yeah, time pressure. Yeah. Would that handwriting, for example, uh, go to the dogs with um, uh, at a height... Uh, in a sauna, or <laughs> in a be writing in a sauna, or in a rally car. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, th- uh, f- yeah, at two G. Uh, Mira or Myra, I really hope you don't mind, but we may well have to tweet a photo of your handwriting because it's just so great. It is exceptional. Anyway, Myra's tastes. Um, uh, she says, "I worked in one of the biggest souvenir shops in Helsinki." Uh, One day, when going through some new goods we had received, I came across this ridiculous flavour of chocolate someone had invented, thinking it would be exotic enough for tourists to want to buy it. My first thought was, who on earth would want to taste this? My second thought was, I know exactly who would want to taste this. Um, uh, So this is for you, Ellis, because it's uh, a non- Non uh, vegetarian snack. Right. It is chocolate, which I was excited by, because I quite like some chocolate, with reindeer in it. Meaty chocolate. Yes. (laughs) Right. Um, now, I am now six minutes into the hangover. Yeah. I thought I'd really, I thought I'd somehow got away with it. If, if this cures your hangover, it's going to be a very difficult to habit to sustain. Well, I think it's kill or cure. <laughs> it's kill or cure. That's probably what they say to the reindeers. <laughs> chocolate. Here it goes. Well, it's dark. Oh, my, oh my God. <laughs> What's it like? It's like eating, it's dark chocolate. Hmm. But it's like it's got beef jerky or something in it. Oh. But in it. In it. But obviously, that is a mistake. Well, I remember from years ago, I once had, when I ate meat, I once had, um, uh, what was it? it? You have a chocolate sauce is quite common with, well, it's sort of in a fancy restaurant. You might have chocolate sauce on um, deer <clears throat> or venison. Venison and chocolate sauce is a known taste. I don't know if I made this point last week. But you know how when you swig from a can the morning after a house party and there's something in that can and it shouldn't be in there and mm. the response your body will Aww. give you. That's what it feels like because it... it the, the it's rain, fags in a can. Yeah, reindeer Aww. meat is very leathery. Right. So you don't expect to have it in a bar of chocolate. No one is expecting leathery chocolate. <laughs> and anyway, but because, um, uh, because um, Mira is so kind, she's also included a, a vegan snack. And yet I'm going back for more. <laughs> Why am I doing this? This this is going to sort me out, I think. My vegan snack is Roos Nacho. It is my birthday, and I will eat leathery chocolate if I want to. <laughs> Valkos Siptui and Yirtit, garlic and herbs. Um, so here I go. Ooh, I'm they actually getting look into this. Now. Healthy. <clears throat> mm. Very mm. crunchy, John. Very dry. I have to say, not to be eaten without a dip. Oh. Is it like a what, what, what? Is it Rivita style? You know those pita chips you get in some uh, sort of fancy pubs, which are absolutely inedible. Mm. As soon as you bite into them, your entire body loses all its moisture. Like posh pork scratchings in yeah. uh, those glass bottles. Mm. Anyway, they're super super dry. But thank you very much, uh, Mira. I'm going to dip them in. I'm going to find some sauce somewhere. I'm going to dip them in some sauce. I'm going to have some more leathery chocolate. Alice James and John Robbins. <laughs> And appearing tonight on... Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste. Take off a taste. We love ticking off your tastes here at Radio X because taste is finite. We think we're about halfway through. Halfway through global taste. Yeah, unfortunately, I've missed time today's taste because I just previously ticked off Pret's vegan Christmas sandwich taste. And I have to say, Pret, you you have not changed the rule that carrots in sandwiches don't work. No, not well, not even gr- a little bit of grated carrot. No, no, carrot in the sandwich do not work. Do you like raw carrot in general? Yeah, don't mind it. Boiled carrots with a Sunday dinner. Don't mind it. Would rather roast them. Okay, but it's the sandwich carrot that you've got a big problem with. Yeah, and also the ones in Pretz one are just, they're too thick and hard. Oh, I hope they're listening. I hope they're listening too. You've got a bit of windy pops, haven't you, John? Yes. Anyway, onwards to this week's taste. It comes from Joshua, 
who says, uh, currently our family are downsizing to a small cottage in Dorset. Um, and in the process of throwing away my belongings, I found an item that made me think of you. Like John, a few years ago, I experienced a brief and passionate interest in bushcraft, which has <laughs> led me to purchase the item I'm sending you today, a pack of Seven Ocean Standard Emergency Rations. The taste was not one I personally relished, and uh, weighing up the process of what to throw away, the low odds of the apocalypse also weighed in against my ration pack, so I decided to send it to you to tick off the taste. Um, so, uh, thank you very much, Joshua. Um, Joshua sent us his final two um, emergency ration bars. So they basically contain an entire meal in calories, and um, they're in two bars. So Ellis, if you were surviving on perhaps it looks like the malls, chalk. Yeah, well, it's oh, they're of, wrapped. They're wrapped. That's they're funny. wrapped. Yeah, but <laughs> they're sort of solid. Just to describe them to you, listeners, they're solid. They look like sort of blocks of fat. Yeah. Um, yes. Like sort of big tablets. They, they they look like dishwasher tablets. Yes, they're made of wheat flour, vegetable fat, uh, vitamin C, B1 and B6, Great. Uh, and barley. Now, the big myth when I was at university was that if you drank 15 pints of Guinness, yeah. you had all of the vitamins and nutrients and minerals that you needed to survive, and you could just drink Guinness and it would be great. Am I going to get all... I need for today from this pretty much bar. well there's 280 calories uh which um is about the equivalent i guess to a l long mars bar okay i'm um, so not I'm sure in, why I, you wouldn't just have a long mars bar so i'm in the jungle yep and i need to eat and to save space and the weight of my pack this is all i've got yeah it, i mean it's a bit heavier than a mars bar <laughs> <laughs> Not entirely sure the advantages. <laughs> Smells of shortbread. Yeah, like well, like a children, like a child's rusk. Yeah, are you ready okay. to take? Yeah, let's go. Done that. Oh my god! Oh, it's very dry. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, and then it sort of disappears in your mouth. Yeah, it's what I imagine Captain Scott it. Yeah, it's like eating a dusty ghost. <laughs> <laughs> ah! It's just like eating a dusty ghost. A calorific ghost. It's a um, nutritious dusty ghost. It's I, so dry, it's unbelievable. I fail to see what the advantage of this is over some shortbread or a Mars bar. You'd need a water supply. Yeah. You'd have to uh, access. You'd have, you'd have to um, discover a water supply before eating one of these because this has removed all of the saliva from my body. It's so dry. I imagine if you dropped it in the sea, it would uh, expand into a boat, <laughs> and then you could sail away on your on your chalky ghost. Or just the sea would dissolve, and you'd see a lot of shipwrecks. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it's that was rubbish. Absolutely <laughs> vile. It's rubbish. <laughs> so it's bad. Like taste of nothing. So angry now. Why wouldn't you have just have Kendall mint cake? Because all you need in a survival situation is cows. You don't really need vitamins as much if it's over, say, the course of a week or two. Don't you? No, Didn't not you run really. out of vitamins after two weeks. Well, well, I t t t take take a, a, a sonatogen. But for the space of that box, which is, say, the size of a, a large wallet, you could take four Mars bars and a, and a multivitamins. And you'd have a bit of fun. Yeah, and not have to eat the dusty ghost. My God. That said, thank you very much, Joshua, for sending us the Seven Oceans uh, emergency rations. It's dried all of the blood in my body. Mm. Mm. What, a, what a mess. What a mess. Uh, this is Gang of Youths. Let me down easy. air. Coming up, we've got music from Jamie T and Green Day. And also very soon, it will be time for... Take, Take off, off a taste. taste. Ellis James and John Robbins. Radio X. It's T to T off a T. And appearing tonight on... Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste. Take off a taste. That's right, guys. It's the cutting-edge feature where Ellis and I tick off tastes. Um, we can't claim to have ticked off all of the tastes, but that's why we're still doing this feature. Yeah. Uh, this taste comes from Kerry and Mike Day. They say, dear Ellis... Good and names. Good names. Sound like they run a car dealership. Yes. Where'd you, where'd you get that from? Mike Day Ford. Oh, good. Oh, I know. Yeah, on, on, the, on the Bristol Road. They do 0% finance on all approved used. Do they? I need a new car. Mm. Do they do Part X? They do Part X, and also, you get your scrappage fee. Oh! The, these are not the adverts. No, no. Just to be clear. <laughs> no, this doesn't exist, this, um, this place. Good deal, though. Pop down to Mike Day Ford. 
what's just off junction the, six of the A101. What's car? What's car of the week? Car of the week is a uh, Citroen uh, Megane, <laughs> Renault Megane. <laughs> well, actually, it's Mike Day specialised in cutting cars in half because he wants the en- shirts. <laughs> yeah, he wants the engine of a Citroen but the boot space of a Megane. Right, so it's a Citroen Megane. It's a Citroen Megane. He's yeah. quite a dodgy guy, isn't he, Mike Day? Oh yeah, thousands have died. <laughs> anyway, uh, Carrick. <laughs> Kerry and Mike Day uh, say, on a recent trip to Sin City, is that a real place? Do they mean Las Vegas? Um, Texas. Texas. Uh, well, anyway, they say, on a recent trip to Sin City, we saw these gruesome looking and possibly gruesome taste- tasting Texan sweets in a blood sauce in a gourmet sweet shop called Lolly and Pops. We thought they'd make an appropriate Halloween themed taste to tick off. Um... So thanks very much for that. Uh, they say other weird items sold included the likes of corn and bacon flavour fizzy drinks. Um, so the, the the so they're in a sort of a Haribo style little sachet. It's in Vegas, Sin it City. Is Vegas, okay. Um, the it the texture of the thing is disgusting because it's <laughs> it's like a sort of little it's like it's full of little bits of body. It's all wet. Does it look like space food? No, it looks like sin food. Sinful food. Mm. Mm. Chicken. Have you got any scissors, of... Joe, mate? Chicken on a bed of mm, skin. <laughs> oh, good God! <laughs> there is oh, a little bit oh. of the packet that says "tear here." Okay, just on the, uh, on the top it's all corner got there. Spooky juice in it. <laughs> oh, oh, mate! It doesn't <laughs> smell. Pro- Ellis, I've sort of prized open a bit. Of, it's like a bud- blood bag. You've, you've oh. got paper towels there, so so do use them. What? Oh, oh nice. Gosh. Right. <laughs> it, do what it looks like. You know spare ribs you get from a Chinese takeaway? Yes. It looks like s- the spare rib juice but dripped onto a piece of Haribo. <laughs> yes. Okay, I'm going in. Oh, crikey. It's Haribo textured. It's really not pleasant at all. But it's got the kick of um, a moderate level spicy Chinese meal. It's made of the stuff gummy bears is made of, but it's wet. I mean, I like the fact that on the back of the packet, apropos of nothing, it says, say no to drugs. <laughs> <laughs> is that the sort of odd, odd sort of moral... Moralising you get in America. What, the Robbins principle? It says, go Texan, and then it says, say no to drugs. Yeah, yeah well, it's can, never, it's can, never a can, bad message. You can gamble Odd your thing life. to get on some sweets. You can gamble your life away, but, mm. but you know, don't take drugs. Oh, mm. obviously don't, don't do any... Oh, do everything responsibly. <laughs> Just <laughs> a quick cover all there. <laughs> quick cover all, be responsible. Sorry, I should have been sent on a course. Mm. Be responsible. Don't gamble, don't take drugs. Don't drink underage. All of the others. We'll go through them. Uh, um, don't be rude about the Bible in front of a church. <laughs> <laughs> be nice uh, to your parents. Yes, but unless they've not been, unless they deserve to have, <coughs> be given short shrift. Yeah, but I'm not, I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> okay. Don't, don't ask my advice about how you should treat your parents. Alice. This is Jade Bird. <laughs> This is Aha by Jade Bird. High and dry. Oh, good grief, John. What? I just, it just turns me on, man. <coughs> Sorry, I thought I was going to have a voice failure there. High and dry by Radiohead, and now it's time to take off a taste. And appearing tonight on. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste. Take off a taste. That's right, guys. It's time to take off a taste. And we've got a backlog of tastes, some of which we've already tasted before. So I need to say thank you to, I think, Bess, um, who sent us a, a happy five year anniversary card for broadcasting almost for five years. Wow. And Bess sent some Dutch sweets. Bess, we've already ticked the, the exact sweets he sent off, but thank you anyway. Um, it just means we're chipping away at global tastes. Yes. Very thank- few left now. Thank you to Amy for the uh, extra shipment of Louisville vegan jerky, mm. which is excellent. I'm going to take that home. Uh, but we're going to take off three tastes uh, today. The first comes from Ben, 
And Ben says, um, I've enclosed a few nibbles for you to enjoy, um, acquired on my recent travels to New Zealand, Taiwan and Japan. Uh, dried garlic cloves and sour plum coated peanuts. I almost, I, I meant to remind myself to take these cloves to Fordy's birthday because our friend Matt Ford is a big fan of garlic. Yes, he um, is, yeah. So, Ellis, first taste to tick off. It's a speed taste. These are full garlic cloves, dried. Oh! My goody aunt. They are lovely. They are garlicky. Fordy would absolutely love these. Yeah. Um, oh, my girlfriend's not going to want to kiss me tonight. For so many reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Alone, so because she's met you. <laughs> oh, they're delightful. Yeah, so garlicky though. It feels like the, the garlic is coming up at your mouth from a different part of your body. I don't mind them. No, I like it, and the crunch is absolutely delicious. Hit me with whatever these are. Sour plum coated peanuts. Hit me, man. Plum coated peanuts. To is be that, honest, is that correct? Just, yeah. just tastes of pe- no, just tastes of garlic. Because yeah. of what happened to <laughs> I think we've really misjudged the no order idea. of these. They just taste like nice, general, savoury peanuts. Well, no, they taste like garlic. <laughs> Let me have another six. <laughs> <laughs> another six peanuts. And another six peanuts so that I can stop tasting garlic. Thank you very much. That's three. That's four. That's... That's right, that's it. Um, also, what I like about these Japanese sweets, it, well, not sweets, savoury snacks, they come with biblical quotes on them. Do they? Oh. Since you are precious and honoured in my sight, and because I love you. Isaiah 43.4. Couldn't agree with you more. Screams peanuts. Screams peanuts. <laughs> uh, screams um, traditional British Christian values. <laughs> uh, that's in reference to a very odd email we received that we will read out in the intro. Mm. Um, so, I'm really got... I've got garlic in my teeth. Um, and our next taste, hopefully to get rid of the taste of garlic, though it's one I'm a fan of, uh, is from Adam. He says, I sometimes work abroad. Recently I was in a meeting in Ghana and these ginger menthol sweets were on the table. I popped a couple in my mouth and was then hit by a wave of regret. The taste is fine, but each swallow of saliva seemed to get hotter and hotter. I like ginger more than I like music. Wow. Like, I, you, well, you know this. You've seen me with ginger. Yeah, but I didn't know it, it was more than music. So you'd rather give up music than ginger. Yeah. What do you think about Simply Red? Why is that? Because of Mick Hucknall. Yeah. I see what you've done there, Vin. I would say that... What do you think about cream? <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, nothing can compete with uh, raw ginger. Okay. Pickle ginger. I love it. Well, me? I cannot wait to taste this. Okay. See if you like that more than you like the Oasis. It's a sweet, so I shouldn't... I should, should I suck it or chew it? I think... Oh, hang on. There's two different types. I would suck it. How's I'm it? Not, yeah, still tastes of garlic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my entire mind tastes of garlic <laughs> right now. I'm not getting... Now it tastes like tunes. Okay. Not that sort of reference to me preferring ginger to garlic uh, music. Um, that's a reference to these sort of cough sweet... Do they still make them? Very, very yeah, primary so, yeah. Well, I'm getting a bit of ginger. It's not gingery enough. I well, need I think it's more. Be good for my um, cold. Anyway, thank you for sending in those tastes, guys. I need we'll, more. We're committed to taking <laughs> off. Wanna, I want you to push me. I want you to push me. Finally, I'm in my comfort zone. I've been I've been eating bland taste for too long. There's nothing I can't take. Hit me, John. Actually, hit With me what? on air. What? What are you <laughs> talking see about? what happened. I don't know. I think the garlic's made me go weird. <laughs> oh, I am getting ginger now. It's quite intense. Oh my god. Anyway, guys. Hit me. <laughs> yeah, I think you are in your comfort zone. Yeah. yeah. So hit me. Okay. Hit right. me up the bum. <laughs> good, good, good God. <laughs> I'm now going to hit you up the bum with a big smack of blossoms. Uh, with how long will this last? It's time to tick off a taste. And appearing tonight on... Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste. Tick off a taste. That's right, guys. It's uh, taste ticking time, and um, we, we, we've got such a backlog of tastes um, under Vin's desk in the Radio X head, HQ that we're going to have to uh, tick off multiple tastes. So, so um, unfortunately, we've lost some of the accompanying notes. 
Um, but the first one comes from Andy Pate, or Andy Pate, depending on how he uh, spells his name. <laughs> it's P-A-T-E. Andy Pate. <laughs> so it could be Andy Pate, we just don't know. Um, uh, Andy bought these, uh, this is a Burfi, uh, which is Diwali sweets, which we've had before. So I'm going to taste, I'm not going to taste them because I know that they taste like space lard. Uh, but I've given them to, to Vin because okay. he's a fan and they're from Goa in India. Oh, they look nice. Thank they you very really much. Good. They look him. like um, the almond ones. Um, Ellis, oh, you love these. Do you want Ellis, one? Okay. Is going to taste. <laughs> what is that? It looks like petrol don't know what in a it jam is. jam. <laughs> Yeah, this is going to taste a jam jar of Japanese petrol, which um, came from the person who sent us the sour plum nuts that we did last week. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Um, but can we take a photo of it before Elliot's tastes yeah, it? Yeah, okay. I mean, that because looks terrifying. It's got a Japanese ring pull, and it looks like petrol in a Japanese jam jar. Yeah, it basically sort of looks like a... Um, it's a, it looks a bit like a sample, like you'd expect to see yeah. a sort of... Um, it looks like a urine sample from a very hydrated person. It does. So, Ellis, if you could taste that. Uh, we don't know what it is. Have you got something, John? Yeah, I'm going to have pineapple lumps. <laughs> oh, good. Lucky you. <laughs> so, first, Vin, can you have the tick off the uh, burfi from Goa? Oh, it's you know what? It's a bit different from the stuff you guys would have had in the past. Yeah. Um, sort of stringy. Okay. Oh. Ooh. Oh, God. Is it nice? Um, it's good, yeah. Crunchy, it sounds. Yeah, I think maybe because we've had it for a little what while. What are the flavours? Well. Um, it's very sweet, and there's a, yeah, a bit of almond and a bit of pistachio. Oh my my mum would love this. this Ellis, is her favourite. What's the smell I of the? I think it's alcoholic. Oh, it's it tastes... sake. It might yeah, be sake. Yeah, it might be. It's a lot of sake. It tastes a little. It tastes a little bit like the mouthwash you get at the dentist. Oh, have a, have a little go on that then. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what's my it like? God. It's str- um, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's alcoholic. I think. Is it? Oh God, Vin, do you want to try it? I'm going to start telling you some truth. <laughs> right, I'm just going to have a, a, a pineapple lump. What's that big lump of chocolate there? That's a jelly tip block. What on earth is a jelly tip block? Oh, and tell me more about it. These pineapple lumps are like hard, sort of pineapple sweets covered in um, like pineapple flumps the, covered in um chocolate. The Japanese nice. petrols really opened up my tubes. <laughs> My chest hasn't felt this uh, aired in an awfully long time. Mm. Would, it, would it work on my it's, cold? It's destroyed any residual asthma I had from when I was a kid. What's it like, Vin? Like, it's like I've drunk it into my lungs. Yeah, yeah, that's how I felt as yeah. well. What does it taste of? It tastes like it just lungs. tastes like really weak white wine. I okay, think. like sake. I'm, I'm not really. I'm not familiar with. Sake. I'm not a sake person no. either. What, what's the What's the big lump of chocolate? Let I might down this. That's a jelly tip block, mate. Um, We'll have, have the jelly gel- tip block next week. Oh, all right then. Okay. You want to try any of these, John? No, I don't want that. It's, good. No, it's want like that. a little picnic in here. Nice. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for the uh, tastes for us to tick off. We're sort of getting back through some old and I dare say gone off tastes. Thanks, Andy. Um, thanks, Andy, Pate, and um, <laughs> thanks whoever sent in the uh, pineapple lumps and the uh, Japanese um, petrol. petrol you're in. Ellis James and John Robbins. Radio X. Ellis has discovered a newfound love for pineapple lumps. Yeah, absolutely delicious. That, that That's the nicest thing I've tasted since, probably since I started puberty, I think. <laughs> Why? What did you taste on the day you started puberty? It was so nice. <laughs> the, the day I started Did your mum bring you a celebratory cake? <laughs> a puberty cake? <laughs> <laughs> and with a lot of brown icing to represent my new hair. Oh, God. <laughs> Good God. Does she say you're like today and tomorrow? <laughs> yeah. So it's, this is the, that's the best thing you've tasted since your puberty cake. Yeah. If you're, uh, as listeners, if you're out there, if you're, if you're, uh, parents of a, a, a child who's going through some physical changes. For God's sake, make them a cake. <laughs> Take a photo, share it on Facebook. <laughs> Make them a puberty cake. You Vin, could. Vin's getting involved in the pineapple lumps now. They're absolutely delicious. You could... Um... <laughs> yeah. I mean, change is inevitable, isn't it? Are they as nice as your puberty cake, Vin? No, uh, I preferred my puberty cake. Yeah? <laughs> but each to his own. You know? How did your mum do your uh, puberty cake? Was it... Was it um... Drawings of bodies, body parts, just <laughs> hair. It was actually a little bit smelly, but she <laughs> right. said that, you know... Classic. It was these, a smells, these smells happen. <laughs> smelly socks. Yeah. And an untidy room on your puberty cake. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> awful, awful business. <laughs> uh, coming up, uh, well, no, right now it's time to play Potato. 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 Bird's eye. No, 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 no. Sorry, I'm just thinking about my puberty game. It was like you're playing a different game. And you used the old swallow defence on your first potato. I did. It's just... You're enjoying your pineapple lumps too much. I am. They are absolutely fantastic. Um... Okay, I'll concede. I'll concede. You concede. You are listening to Radio X's Ellis James and John Robbins live from London's Comedy Store. I'd like to say it's a Radio X first, but it's actually a Radio X like eighth, uh, the eighth time that shows have come live from uh, audiences. But we're having a great time here. It's very festive at the Comedy Store. Wonderful room. Um, People are, some people are wearing festive jumpers. Uh, Others just nude. Um, (laughs) Just enjoying the safe space. And it is now time to tick off a taste. And appearing tonight on... Tick off a taste, tick off a taste. Tick off a taste, tick off a taste. Tick off a taste, tick off a taste. Tick off a taste. Tick off a taste. That's right, guys. If you haven't listened to the show before, this is probably the lowest rent bit. Uh, we get a lot of taste sent to us. I was just telling the audience during uh, Rolling Stones that someone made us a puberty cake. That was uh, disturbing. Um, <laughs> but that's backstage now. Thank you very much to the kind person who did that. I should just add, it was a cake with the word puberty iced on the top. It's not a cake that's going to kick-start puberty. <laughs> you never know. Well, I think our taste this week might kick-start yes, it for, for that... you, Alice. Uh, then... <laughs> Vin, talk us through the taste. Well, normally people send in the tastes, yeah. um, but this is something genuinely I found lying around the office. Right. Which is quite, kind of worrying. It's called Testo 7, all in one synergy. Right. Um, it's testosterone. Mm. I, for one, cannot wait. <laughs> Can I have a look at the packet, please? A, a blend of minerals, vitamins, and an amino acid. And it's sort of bright pink, isn't it? Is this going well, to kick-start my low sex drive? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm just going to show the, t- the t- Testo 7 testosterone drink to the audience. Um, it looks like liquefied angel delight. And I cannot wait to drink some testosterone. How much did you put in? Oh, definitely more than advised. Because the, dose, yeah. the I, dose is 7 grams for men and 4.5 and grams for women. I'm just... I don't know why there's a difference there. Maybe women need less zinc aspartate. <laughs> It sounds healthy, John. I cannot... It the sounds... muscles I'm going to have for the third hour of the show. It's, I'm really, really, really looking forward it to... It reduces grow... tiredness and fatigue and maintains testosterone levels. I can't wait to grow a beard doing the Jamie T song. <laughs> what if we just become overcome with lust and start snogging each other? Well, we... <laughs> as long as we snog near the mic, it could make passable radio. All right, let's take off. Let's okay, do it. Let's take Down it. the hatch. Down the hatch. John's going. Ellis is going. How's that? Do you know what? It actually tastes. <laughs> <laughs> um, it tastes like quite a nice fizzy drink, but flat. Oh, yeah, but what it's done to my more lively parts. <laughs> there are parts of me that feel so lively. I think I've just conceived a child on my own. <laughs> Like in, um, like in oh. Jurassic Park, nature has found a way. <laughs> You've conceived a child and the genes of the mother. But the, but the child is a dinosaur. <laughs> wow, it's sort of tangy. It's a familiar flavour. I would advise you not to take a I second goal. I could get addicted to this because finally I feel as angry as all the other men. <laughs> <laughs> Are you, are you an edgy comic now? I am, yeah. Oh, oh, wait, you wait till I start talking about freedom of speech. Then you'll know, oh, yeah. you know how much testosterone I've got. Um. Oh. oh, God, yeah, yeah. My triceps and biceps have grown, definitely. Oh, I've got a pain in my right temple. <laughs> That's uh, not a, a good thing. How's, how's my beard looking? Um, Considerably v- virulent. Long. Yeah. <laughs> It looks like it's joining up with your pubes. <laughs> and appearing tonight on... Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste.
tick off a taste. That's right, guys. Uh, just because Ellis isn't here doesn't mean I'm not going to tick off tastes. If, that were, if that's what you were thinking, uh, you couldn't be more wrong. And um, these week's tastes come from Alex and from uh, Dan and Renee. Um, because, uh, so well, this is the, the email, uh, the letter from Alex. She says, hi, Alison John. Love the show. I've enjoyed a taste for you to tick off. I travel often, mainly for work. And part of the joy of this is searching out the most weird and wonderful sweets to inflict on my colleagues. On a recent trip to Thailand, I discovered these chewy durian fruit sweets. Is that how you say it? I think it's durian. Durian fruits, fruit sweets. You may not know this, but durian is known for being the smelliest fruit in the world. It is pungent. In fact, it is banned on some forms of public transport in mm -hmm. Asia. These sweets have been roundly rejected by my colleagues, but I'd be curious to know what you think. So, uh, also, Dan Fernandez and Renee Bowden also sent in some durian cubes. Unfortunately, Vin... Um, at exactly the same moment I smelt these sweets, mm -hmm. I realised that one contains gelatin and the other contains milk. So right. unfortunately, you are going to have to taste these sweets. So they're unacceptable for a man who is broadly vegan. Yeah, well, it's a convenient vegan. It's, that does sound like it. I'm a convegan. So I've when, had the fruit before, not these sweets. They do, they, it smells horrific. So the first one is from uh, Dan and uh, Renee. Okay. They sort of smell, oh my goodness. If you kept powdered, you know you used to get powdered parmesan? Yeah. Uh, before f sort of fresh parmesan was wildly, widely available. Uh, and like your parents might keep it and put it on a spag ball. It sounds like a cupboard that's been kept in next to some socks and a goat. That's quite generous, I think. I looked online and um, people have compared it to vomit and skunks before. You I've can never, oh God, I can't smell that ever again. Um, it looks like a massive pineapple. And it's meant to be quite nice, but yeah, it smells very pretty. Okay, here, here we go. That one. So Vin is ticking off the first of oh, the Oh, it's tastes. like really soft toffee. Mmm. Is it nice? It's dilly. Oh, no. Oh, it, Did it start nice? It lured me. Oh, I thought it was going to be nice. Now it's horrible. Oh, okay. God. Oh, God. It's sort of meaty. Well, those ones don't smell as bad as these ones that were sent in by Alex. Oh, God. I feel like... These are the ones the gelatin. Give them a sniff, mate. I feel like my eyes are going to come out of my nose. Smell them. Okay. And they're wrapped. Oh, God. Oh, this isn't good. This have a go on those. So sand durians being ticked it's off. Bad. Okay, I'm going to have the these ones by King Power. King Power. There King Power go. Stadium. Oh, it might be the same people. It probably is if they're Thai. Yeah. How strange. Okay, this is a different colour. It's sort of lighter. It looks like a chew it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like a sort of... Like a pale vanilla chew it. Okay, let's go. Mm. Mm, firmer. firmer. Oh, instantly horrible. It really? Uh, what, what does it taste of? Genuine gag reflex. Yeah, John. yeah, yeah. I had that smelling it. Um, oh, this is uncomfortable. But do you reckon people do eat those for fun? Well, they must do. People are different. Well, people <laughs> are different. Always, That's a very good point, Vin. It's, uh, these sweets have made me truthful. Uh, but is that the worst one, the second one? Uh, yeah, it's not worth the. This profundity is not worth the flavour. Okay, well. Uh, I'm going to have to spit. I yeah, yeah, I, was, I thought that was going to happen. Can you, Let's make okay, sure John, you take control of air. the. No, you look after the controls. Oh, everything will fall apart. John, okay, I'll have to. I'm sorry, mate. I've got okay, to... you do that. And yeah. I will talk about my oh. favourite band, who are Foo Fighters. Oh. Um, and the thing I like most about the Foo oh, Fighters. God. Oh, there's still some in there. The thing I like most about the Foo Fighters is that they were founded in Seattle, Washington in 1994. Um, and prior to the release of their debut album... Okay, uh, I'm back. Yeah, okay, great. Uh, so it's now time to play the Foo Fighters. Songbird by Oasis. Great bit in the video where Liam gets chased by a dog. Uh, absolutely love that song. Love that video. <laughs> John, John, right, John. John is choking on his uh, on his sandwich. You, you're right. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> sorry, I I was ticking off my own taste uh, during that song, <laughs> and it was the ever wonderful artichoke and uh, olive and red pepper tamponade pret baguette, which unfortunately isn't available at all the prets. So you no. have to go to two different ones to get all the stuff. Anyway, very, very good for you, artichoke. Yes. <clears throat> But where did you get that toilet paper from, John? <laughs> the thing. All oh, right. I Sorry. Uh, the the side effect. In now. Putting the choke in artichoke. Oh, very nice. Thank you. Uh, it's old Johnny Robbins here um, because <laughs> Ellis and I are about to tick off a taste. 
And appearing tonight on... Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste. Tick off a taste. Hi! Welcome to <laughs> Tick off a Taste, uh, Ellis and John. This week's taste, can't wait to tick it, is from Tom Mays. Tom says, Ellis and John, you're, he's written on an incredibly dainty paper. Yeah, I... Which will give you a clue as to the destination from which this taste has come. They're like those tiny little pads the elderly keep by the phone. Yes. Uh, your podcast helps me survive my nightmarish daily commute on the world's busiest train line, the Chu Line in Tokyo. Oh, thank you. Never been. My parents came to visit me from the UK the other month. We went on a fun pack trip to Aomori, Aomori, the northernmost region on the main island of Horishu. That sounds cool. Not only is Aomori the country's number one provider of apples. Is it? Yes. Very good for you, apples. <coughs> it is also <laughs> famous for its garlic. 70% of Japanese garlic comes from here. Excitingly, I found the enclosed garlic boiled sweets at a train station gift shop during my travels and hope you might consider them as potential tastes to tick off. Very good for you, garlic, as well. Thank you very much, Tom. It's made a bit of a renaissance garlic, I think, in the last couple of weeks. The cast couple of weeks. Yes, I've just read a few articles on its health benefits. Have oh. you? But that's probably because I was searching them out. Um, right, uh, so there is a garlic boiled sweet for you, Ellis. Great. I've got one here. Thank you, Tom. We're now going to tick off this taste. Mm. Currently getting nothing. Tastes like generic sweet at the minute. That's what I'm getting. Generic. Mmm. Oh, I'm chewing mine. Yeah, me too. I'm going to hold my mouth away so that um, I don't put people off because some people don't like the sound of uh, sweets being chewed on the radio. I think that's um, all people. What, well, I'm, I think... Especially I think, people who own radio stations. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> Do you know what? I'm that getting... is one of the subtlest hints of garlic. Yes. It's sweet... There's, I mean, it's definitely garlicky. It tastes almost car caramelised. Yes. It it's tastes like a sweet roasted garlic. Do you know what? Have we had a pleasant taste here? I mm. think, do you know what? Do you know what? When when John chucked that taste over at me and I caught it with one hand, despite not looking, because I'm that great at catching, I thought to myself, this is going to be grim. Ellis it's wasn't actually... here last week when we did the, did we do the durian? The durian last week. Do you want to do that later? What? These really nice sweets. Oh, yeah. But this is delicious. <laughs> it tastes like... Very subtly balanced garlic in a great roast dinner. Mm. Very good. So thank you very well, much for that, Tom. Well done, Japan. Good country. <laughs> good country. Radio, Radio X. Ellis James and John Robbins. And appearing tonight on... Take, take off a taste, taste, take off a taste. Yeah. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste. Take off a taste. It's take off a taste. Take two. Because uh, Ellis is going to taste the Dura, Durian 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 sweets we had last week. I didn't have them, Ellis, because they're not vegan. I just put, oh, what is it then? So, well, it's, a, it's got like gelatin, gelatin or something. Yeah. It, yeah. I just popped it in. Mm. It's crumbly. Do what, it do what I, it tastes like. It's how I imagine snooker chalk, <laughs> like Q chalk <laughs> taste. No. <Yeah. clears> have you got the other one? Yeah, yeah. I'm at a pool hall. Did you think they tasted like snooker chalk then? Uh, I couldn't get over the, the smell, really. It's, it's very pungent. It's the consistency. Well, maybe they haven't aged. They've, we've had them for a week, so maybe they've aged badly. Oh, great. Um, actually, God, Phil. <laughs> uh, Ellis is trying to open the kind of wrapper that might fox a three-year-old. Oh, the very ill, very elderly. <laughs> the very ill and very elderly. <laughs> it's correct. Yeah, here we go. So this one, this one looks like a mini bar of soap in a cheap hotel. Mm -hmm. they sort of, I think they look like sort of cheap chewets. It starts off the size of a small <laughs> frisbee and ends up the size of an actual size uh, paracetamol. <laughs> that is disgusting. Yeah. What's that, that one? Absolutely horrible. Take it off. Taste what, it to me. What? Take me off. Oh my god! It tastes like um, public toilets. That's the one. <laughs> yeah. Oh my good yum. That's the one that made me feel sick when yeah. I smelt the bag. So I'm in a public toilet. And I'm licking the urinal because I've been because I'm being bullied, <laughs> and it's a bigger boy, and I can't fight back because oh, I, I can smell it from here. Yeah, all right. Um, is... I, I can't fight. It's actually. Can I spit this out? Like that, I had to spit it out last week. Yeah, I can I? I'm going to spit this out. Yeah. It's disgusting. Yeah, I'm being held down. I'm. I've just had my head flushed. 
and um, I'm having to lick the bowl. Oh, good grief. I think that can be too oh, descriptive. That um, was absolutely vile. It smell it smells in my nose. What country it's ba- is that um, from? Ugh. I think Thailand. it's Thai. Yeah, it's well, banned on say, yeah, I'm for, say it. it's banned on public transport in some countries because the smells so It should bad. be banned on private transport as well. Oh, it should be banned on the planet. Okay. <laughs> What a lot of fun we have. <laughs> Tim, you've been in uh, this business we call show for a while. What would you surmise um, constitutes a feature called tick off a taste? Tick tick off a taste. Mm. Um, I would say that what you're probably doing is each week you're bringing uh, a, another flavour to the table mm-hmm. and you are eating or consuming that flavour in some way mm-hmm. and then you probably have some kind of ledger that you're um, keeping a track of what you've had. Well, ledger aside, you're absolutely bang right. It's time to take off a taste. And appearing tonight on... Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste. Take off a taste. What do you think of the jingle? Um, well, you saw with your own eyes. I love the jingle. <laughs> OK, so this week's taste comes from Rebecca. And she's got. We're a big fan of very neat handwriting on this show. What you're What you're saying to that out of ten? Um, out of ten, oh, it's really, really good writing. It's neat. Uh, but out of ten, actually, fairly low. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> no. I give I give that a really strong. I'm going to give that actually ten. Oh, I wouldn't go ten. Oh, well, we've I've had gone some. 10. We've had some tens. Well, I'm going to say. Let's look. That's gonna, I'm going to say it's <laughs> nine point two. Let me see this. Uh, that is a ten. Do you know what that reminds me of? Good homework from female classmates. It's so neat and bubbly and nice. It's neat, it's bubbly, it's naive. <laughs> if, if I was handed some bad news by a doctor in that handwriting, I'd think that's perhaps a little bit too babyish. Right, OK. Hmm. Pretty harsh. Uh, anyways, Rebecca, she says, love the podcast. I'm a 237er and on aspiring retro one ship with approximately 150 episodes to go. In this package, there are two items for Tick of a Taste. They both come from New Zealand, where I lived for 29 years. I include the vegan taste, fruise balls, as sadly, the other taste, Eskimos, contain gelatin. And I'm pretty sure gelatin is a no-go for the broadly vegan. So, uh, thank you so much for that, Rebecca. I'm going to dig into a fruise ball and Tim... Uh, Rebecca describes Eskimos as, and I quote, the best lollies in the world. Um, no, sorry, the nicest lollies ever. I had said quote and then was summarising. I don't know why I did that. Um, also, she put nicest in capital letters. I remember that from when I glanced at it. Yes. Um, I'm th- I'm guessing that in New Zealand, a lolly is a sweet, because these are sort of a bit like sort of foam... Uh, pick and mix style sweets. Oh, here they are. So, Tim, if you could tick off your taste, please. You have to open that packet up. Oh, he's gone straight in there. They're all different colours. Yeah, what colours are you usually your favourite in a sweet? Pink. Well, I'm a red and black guy. Yeah, I'm red and black, and okay. there is a pink, so I'm going to go pink. Okay. Whack it in. Give it a sniff. He's. I'll tell you what, <laughs> the actual, you know, the sweet is, um, the design is an Eskimo. Yeah. And to say he is wrapped up warm barely covers it. <laughs> okay. So he's ticking. Mm-hmm. 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 What are your initial thoughts mm-hmm. and feelings? Mm. It's delicious. Is it? Is it the best sweet you've ever had? No, but it's somehow familiar. Oh. I have tasted this before. I've ticked this off, but not, not in the... Um, not in its current format. No. So I'm going oh, for... I think it might be. Was that a side, however? <laughs> <laughs> do, you want to, do, you, do you want to know what I think it might be? Yeah. I'm not sure yet. Okay. But, I, but I've, 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 if you let me have a little think, I will get this. Well, while you're thinking, I'll be ticking with this lovely fruise ball, which is like a sort of a, one of those protein balls, which are often pretty grim, I have to say. Um, but I'm going to taste it. Oh, it's not as grim as the deliciously, deliciously Ella ones, which are like balls of sort of clotted vacuum cleaner contents. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually very tasty. It's chunky, it's chocolatey, and it's, a, I dare say, a little bit fudgy. Well done. Thank you very much, Rebecca. Um, I've, got, I've worked out what it is. Mm-hmm. It's a mixture of blackcurrant and soap. Oh. <laughs> a match made in heaven. Okay, guys, uh, right now. Oh, 
Oh, it's... Lo- oh, do you like lovely things, Tim? Mm-hmm. What's your favourite lovely thing? Baths. Oh, a lovely bath. Well, if you can imagine a band in that bath, you just imagined Lovely the Band. And appearing tonight on... Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste. Take off a taste. Tick off a taste. It's the feature the whole world is talking about. Uh, John and I are on a two-man mission to try all of the tastes. If there's a taste out there that we haven't tried, send it into the show. Um, the address, Vin, is Radio X. London. Leicester, you can do it. Leicester Square. Yeah. London. Mm-hmm. WC2H7LA. Ooh. He was getting there. John is. I mean, the things he's got in his back pocket. Mm. Addresses and a wallet. <laughs> um, but uh, we we had one taste spoil, unfortunately, in transit. Um, so if you're sending li- liquidinous or glass housed tastes, uh, do be careful. But thank you very much for the thought. Use bubble wrap. Not no. This one was in bubble wrap, just not enough. Okay. Not not to just cast forget a- it. <laughs> Not to not to uh, cast aspersions on couriers or the Royal Mail, but if it won't survive being thrown against a wall, uh, then then probably best leave it at home. Uh, anyway, these tastes come from Russia uh, because um, that's Russia. Uh, Very good. Vinaj Joshsky right. has uh, been to Moscow. Yeah. You Correct. went to Moscow for, for reasons that cannot be revealed on air. Secret reasons, yep. Secret reasons. Not allowed to talk about it. Um, oh, though that's a lovely God. fur coat and mace you've got. <laughs> mm-hmm. Secret mace. Uh, and, um, <laughs> uh, so what, what? tell us about Moscow. What's Moscow like? Moscow's strange. Yeah. Moscow's real strange. I don't want to come on the radio and criticise a place, but I didn't have the best of... T- no, it was fine. It was okay. But I wouldn't be recommending it to anyone. Mm. Okay. It's very different What's and very interesting. Like? I think the thing I think I, the problem that I had so was there's just two men in coats approaching the door with what looks like a syringe. Yeah, yeah, smoking lots of fags. Yeah, our Vin's been taken away. I didn't have a lot of context for it. So a lot of the t- it's a very different culture and I think I wasn't adequately prepared. What were, why in what sense we, we Well, were, what I found out and I didn't think this would, would bother me at all is that people don't people are very stern mm. and they don't smile. And I'm, you know, I'm from London. I'm not I'm not up for uh, Hello. People. Yeah, I don't want that. <laughs> but it's strange to sort of have a transaction with someone. You pay someone for a thing, and then they don't. You like, you know, you, they don't smile at you, or you get out of a cab and you don't. It's a bit well, odd to have well, a sort I guess, of severe. Yeah. Well, I was thinking about this the other day. The smile in sort of passing is quite a good way of saying I'm not a threat. Yes. So if you're used to sort of someone smiling or just going have a nice day or. Oh, excuse me, sorry. Those are all ways of constantly in your head going, no one's going to get me, no one's yeah, going to exactly. no yeah. get me. Now, what does happen is when you do get to know people, you do get to talk to them, they then really open up, met some really friendly, helpful people. But it's just that, yeah, a weird sort of first wave of thinking you're really, really unwelcome here. Really? I read once that in Russian, Russian culture, to smile until you know, um, smiling if you don't know someone properly is like a sort of sign of being a bit thick. I think there's probably a, an element of that. What I got told as well is it's maybe a hang-up of communism, I think, of sort of... Who don't, do you trust? Yeah. I don't know how true that is, of course. Who polices the secret police? Uh, anyway, thanks for the great tastes. Yeah, um, well, so I was in that classic situation of I had uh, uh, 500 rubles left in my pocket at mm-hmm. the airport, needed to spend them on something. So here's some sweets that I don't understand. So these, we've used a, a translation app on my phone, um... So now Vladimir Putin's probably going to uh, make me play chess in prison for the rest of time. Um, but <laughs> You'd these, like that, actually, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Um, these are described as cranberry paste, and they're sort of like um, Jenga-shaped blocks of uh, pink foam. Just pass them to Ellis. Smell. Smells like uh, an old lady's drawer. <laughs> <laughs> like an old lady might have a drawer. If it's like anything else I ate in Russia, it will taste solely of dill. Yeah. I oh, read an article in the it's Guardian got a about that. Horrible texture. Um, <laughs> right, so it's it, I am about to eat an old lady's memory drawer. Oh my god! It's like a how sort of moose. Crum- how is it crumbly and moosey and foamy? The same <laughs> it's like a moose. It's moose with a cr- crispy outside. It tastes like soft play. Oh wow! I don't know if you've ever been go. to a soft play. So we're moving oh to god. the uh, probably safer territory of these. Look like sort of um, fruit pastels. 
Uh, they're described on the box as marmalade fruit cocktail. That was what the you translation. Know what these t- the first one, said. these pastel things, they taste no, like um, again. it tastes like ice cream that's melted and then f- uh, frozen again. And they're like moussey. Mm. <laughs> these it's like the look... sweets you would have if you if you couldn't chew. Uh, <laughs> these look um, like those fruit jellies. Yes. Um, here we go. I just throw mine near the bin. And get it in. <laughs> That's where it goes now. Like when I was a student, I had a bin zone. So it, yeah. if, if, if it didn't go in the bin, but it was in the bin zone, that was somehow acceptable. <laughs> These are just your classic fruit jellies. Okay. More my palatable. God, they're sweet, though. Oh, I can feel my teeth coming off. Um, I um, go to Russia for the history... Don't go for the sweets. Is my is is my hot take. It was minus fourteen there. Good grief. Which is cold. I'd very like cold. I'd like that. But I can't, yeah, it's kind of nice because it snowed. It did look very very Ooh. good. It looks pretty. There you go. Russia oh. is pretty uh, unwelcoming at first <laughs> and has very soft moussey sweets. And appearing tonight on. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste. Take off a taste. Okay, um this sorry, I'm about to read out the uh letter from the person who sent in our tastes, and either they have made a typo spelling their own name, or their surname is so rude I can't say it on the radio. Okay. So, I can't say that, can I, Vin? It's about uh, accent, I think. It's about how you pronounce that. Oh. I don't think that's a surname. I think that's a typo. Let's, okay. Let's be, Let's be safe, please. Yeah. Okay, so um, Claire emails uh, to say, please see enclosed contributions to your take of a taste segment. I was having toast last week, uh, spread with my favourite jam in the world, when it occurred to me that you may never have tasted it. It's hard to find and more expensive than jam has any right to be, but I'd never taste anything like it, so I'll keep on selling my unneeded organs to fund my habit. Is it the Manuka honey of jams? I think it may, may well Which be. Which is about 18 quid. Yeah, I know, but my God, is it good if you lose your voice. Oh, are you a, man- a Manuka apologist? I am one of the leading Manukists. You're joking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you get cold as well, sore throat. What? Yeah, it's absolutely insane. Not, n- it's a placebo, surely. It's absolutely not. Can I just say, John... What is it? For 2019, 14 years I've been in love with you, and yet you're still surprising me. <laughs> um, uh, so uh, next after that, we've got Biscoff. Now, you know those little biscuits you get with coffee that come in individual packets? Sigafredos. They make it into a spread, mate. Oh, my giddy aunt. Um, and Claire says, I will literally stand at the counter eating it with a spoon uh, whilst the greedy part of my brain runs the interface. And finally, yeah, that's De- bleak. Devil's Revenge Mustard, which she has no idea what it is. Okay. Um, so, Claire, surname redacted, thank you so much. Can I have a look? Can I have a look at the letter? Uh, so, Ellis, what I've done... So- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can't go. No um, way. Claire very kindly sent in some crackers for us to place the tastes on. So, Ellis, I'm giving you... A day's meals on crackers, okay? So we start off with breakfast, which is the pink guava jam. Okay. What is guava? It's a type of exotic fruit. Ooh. Mm. Great crunch. It's the perfect halfway house between strawberry and grapefruit, bizarrely. John, I'm on holiday. (laughs) My mouth is on holiday. (laughs) And it's it's gone to a jam resort. Oh, lovely! <laughs> and I, I mean, this is good. good. It's good jam, man. Do you know what? I can't say what it is because it will sound as rude as Claire's surname, but it's good. So this yeah. is mustard. I think it's mustard with chili powder in. Okay, done that. Mm. Oh, now wow. you're a big mustard fan. Yeah, it's got a kick to it. Whoa. Ooh. I have to say. It's got a very odd flavour, that. Do you want it to taste like? Bad mustard. No. Sour mustard. No, it tastes like when you combine English mustard with American mustard that you put on hot dogs. Yes, it does. <laughs> it's when you've gone 50-50 and um, uh, across the pond. Okay. Finally, and I think knowing... I, I don't like American mustard. Too processed. Uh, knowing you as I do, I think you're going to lose your mind when you have this. So, so this, this is, is the this biscoff. Crunchy spread, those little lotus biscuits. Okay. 
I'm a big fan of this. It's oh, like wow! Yeah. <laughs> what the hell is that? It's ba do you know what the ingredients are? Oh, yes! 65% crunched up biscuits. Good grief! Uh, sugar syrup, uh, oil and sugar and more sugar. I love American stuff. It's, they're unapologetic they're in how bad stuff is for you. <laughs> like probably shiver me timbers. That is, do you know what it, it's like um, peanut butter with a load of brown sugar on it. Yes, it's exactly what it is. Well done. Thank you very much. Grease the wheels. That is absolutely <laughs> superb. Thank you very much, Claire. Hope as heaty. Um, <laughs> hope I'm pronouncing that right. Let us know, Claire, if your name has caused you any problems in job interviews, formal situations. Because yeah. it looks like a... Well, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, who knows? Claire uh, Hope Ashiti. Do I want... Uh -huh. Do I want to know <laughs> Arctic Monkeys? It's uh, not like you're barking at a dog track. Barking at a dog it, track? I meant I'm barking because of your voice, and then I said dog track and realised that suddenly what I'd said was confusing. Okay, it's time to <laughs> tickle really the test. You really took the heat off him there, didn't you? Yes. I did, yeah, yeah, by, by being bad. Yeah. It's time. That's why he likes broadcasting with me. <laughs> it's time to take off a taste. And appearing tonight on. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste, take off a taste. Take off a taste. Tick off a taste. This week's tastes come from two taste senders. Uh, the first is Beth, and she says, On a recent trip to Belize, I ate a sizable. Uh, oh, station order Belize. Uh, I ate a sizable amount of rice and beans, but as those wouldn't have travelled so well, I thought I'd bring you back some hot sauce. Uh, so Beth has sent us um, Marie Sharp's Belizean Heat and Marie Sharp's uh, Smoked Habanero Pepper Sauce. Marie Sharp really is sort of the um, the, the, the bigwig of uh, Caribbean slash Belizean hot sauces, I have to say. It's your Microsoft. It's your Microsoft. So, and also some plantain chips to chomp them on. Mm, um, thank you. So let's go for the, um, the the smoky one first. That one? Yep. Oh, oh it's a hard chip. Oh, my, my chip was too thick. Mmm, lovely heat to it. A bit like um, Tabasco, the brown Tabasco. Nice, mm. nice. Mm. Do you know where I'm getting it? I'm getting it in the gaps between my teeth. Oh, nice. Uh-oh. It feels like a... Feels like I'm flossing with hot sauce. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up is Belizean heat. Mm. Mm. That's a more direct heat. I can mm. already feel it improve my daughter's chicken pox from a distance of 10 miles. <laughs> I am going to eat the rest of those plantain chips with those hot sauces later in the show. That is exhilarating. It's nice, isn't it? I feel positive now. A bit of a pep. Um, next oh. one comes from Mike. <laughs> And he says, Dear Ellis, John and producer Vin, my parents recently went on holiday to Myanmar. Inspired by yourselves, I asked them to bring me back something edible and different to give me a new taste to tick off. They brought me back some black sesame brittle and some spicy peanut crisp candy, which I've enclosed for you to try. I can safely say they are much nicer than the fish scratchings that they brought me back from Finland. Oh, yes, fishy oh, versions, pork scratchings. Love peanut butter, so versatile. So I think probably we'll... You can have it on toast straight from the jar. <laughs> So two out of two. <laughs> start with the uh, start with the sesame brittle. You could use a spoon. That one there. You could yeah. use a fork. Finger. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it looks like an oxo cube. With you could use a whisk if you were feeling yeah. Yeah. bizarre. <laughs> Celery. Yeah. Oh, that's that's first class. Oh. Mm. It feels like I buy sesame bread, and it feels like Do all really? of the scrapings from the bag. Oh, nice. Oh, not bad though. Very good. I'm moving on to the peanut brittle. Yeah, real pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> really nice. They're like sort of um, tiny versions of nice energy bars. Yeah. Mm. Oh. I'd like to take 20 of them around a golf course. Yeah, keep them in my mouth all at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you very much, Beth I... and um, Mike. I need more hot sauce. Yeah, we're, we're going to have loads. Give me whilst... one now. Well, we're going to have loads while we listen to Harmony Hall oh. by Vampire Weekend. Ellis James and John Robbins. Radio X. <laughs> 